No. Ask someone. See, I'm not. I'm not visible here. Done. Done, done, done. Thank you. Now I think I'm clearly audible and visible to you all, isn't it? Yes, everyone. Please let me know in the chat section. Am I clearly audible and visible? Yes, now I am. So, hi everyone. How are you? Welcome to Anagadmi Need English. I am your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to discuss this particular unit that is human physiology, one of the most important units of your class 11th biology. So, are you guys excited for it? No, I was not late, right? We started the session on time but because of some glitch, it was uh, not live. But now I think everything is fine. So tell me in the chat section, guys, how's the energy? How's the josh? Are you people excited for this session? Yes, are you people excited for this session? I have read a lot of comments. Ki ma'am, just go for that top 60 topics. Don't do this. Don't do that. But, but, but kids, this unit, this unit is one of the most important units and you really need to understand all the chapters mentioned here. And we are going to do the most important topics only. I am not saying that in depth I am going to teach you each and everything of these seven chapters not possible because we are running out of time. But here we are going to cover the most important topics as per the weightage and we will make sure that we learn each and everything from that topics. Okay. Okay. So tell me, tell me, tell me how is the energy, how is the josh, how are you doing? From last two days, Vazim sir, Shreya sir. Uh, your uh, HSP sir, right? They were taking the marathons. You have revised the physics, the chemistry. Now it's the time for biology. 50% of the need syllabus. 50% of the need syllabus is from biology, isn't it? Isn't it? And let me tell you one more thing, kids. Thank you. Thank you so much for making us, you know, 15k subscriber family. And yes, we want the number should increase. So if you are new to our channel, now just subscribe our channel. Just subscribe our channel. We need that love. We need that support, right? Thank you so much, guys, because we want to guide NEET 2025 aspirants as well. So we really need your love and support. So do subscribe our channel. And I want to see more likes here. I want to see more like more students here. So share the session link, share the session link, invite more students. I want to see 1000 plus students here in my session today, right? NCRT explanation is there. Diagrams are from NCRT. Topics are from NCRT. We are going to do everything. Genetics marathon will be there. Plant physiology marathon will be there. Don't you people worry. Don't you people worry. Anything else, anything else. Anything, the number of students should be 1000 plus everyone and today I want, I want minimum 1000 subscriber, 1000 more subscriber today. So guys, just subscribe our channel and share this video link. Let, let, let your friend know na, there is one wonderful channel that is Anacademy Neat English and there is a team and that team is guiding you. We just started few days back and you can see our sessions, the quality, the quality content, the enthusiasm in our team, right? Yes, so let's go, let's start the session and yes, we are going to start with the very first chapter that is the digestion and absorption. It's a very basic chapter. So let me tell you which points are the most important points here. Let me tell you everything that you need to know from this digestion and absorption. So listen to me very carefully guys, listen to me very, very, very carefully. This is our chapter name that is digestion and absorption from this chapter, from this particular chapter. Glands, their secretion, enzymes in the digestion of a particular substrate, these three topics are important. When it comes to the human physiology, disorders are important always. Disorders are always important. Yes, PYQs are also there in this particular session. PYQs are there in this particular session, so don't you people worry about it, right? So these are the most important topics. These are the most important topics. Do you remember when the Azim sir said the annoying girl will be taking biology math? Nacha, he said so. I'll talk to him later. Now focus here. So let's 
start from the basic uh, definition first. When it comes to the digestion, what is the meaning of digestion, kids? The simple meaning of digestion is we are going to convert the complex food into the simpler one. Right? What will we do here? We are going to convert the complex food into the simpler, simpler form. Right? That can be absorbed by the cells of the body. See, I am going to relate the biomolecules here a bit because it is important for your understanding. You know it very well. When it comes to the food, food is the source of energy. We need food, isn't it? What is food? Food is the source of energy. We need food. Right, we need food for energy. We need food for you know for metabolism as well for, uh, because we need energy, right? So when it comes to the food, we have organic things and organic things. So many things are there. I'm not going to touch that basics, but yes, the thing that you need to keep in your head is that some are micro molecule, micronutrients, and some are macro, isn't it? On the basis of uh, size, right? Micronutrients, macronutrients are there in our diet and they should be there in our diet if we want to have a balanced diet. When we talk about the macronutrients, we discuss carbohydrates, right kids? We even talk about the proteins, we even talk about the fats as well, isn't it? Isn't it? Other than that, when we talk about the micronutrients, we discuss the vitamins. All that things are important for us, isn't it? All that things are important for us. But when you talk about the carbohydrates, just let's take one example. What is the meaning of carbohydrate? Carbohydrate means hydrates of carbon. And you know that, right, you know that from plants, in the case of plants, the stored food is starch. And if we are dependent on the plants for their food, if we are taking the starch, starch is a complex carbohydrate. Starch is a complex polysaccharide, isn't it guys? Isn't it everyone? Starch is what? Starch is a polysaccharide. Starch is a polysaccharide. Starch is a complex carbohydrate. So, if we want our body cells to digest it, to absorb it, right, to absorb it. So, what we have to do? We have to convert it into the simple form. And that simple form is what? We need to convert it into the monomers that is glucose because starch is made up of glucose. So this is what we read in digestion. Are you getting my point? This is what we read in digestion. So when you talk about the digestion, what are we going to discuss? Bache? We will be discussing that how can we convert the complex food into the simplest one. Now in our body, we have different different system. Same way we have the digestive system, a very basic point. So I, I will not... Uh, you know, I will not discuss that in very, very, very much detail. Ki, oh, oh, this is mouth, this is that. No. To the point from where the question is going to come. Are you okay with that? Tell me everyone. Are you people okay with that? Let's, from because this chapter is very easy, right? I told you about the introduction here. Ki ultimately, we just need to convert the complex food into the simplest one, right? So that our body cells can absorb it. So that our body cells can absorb it. This is what I told you. Isn't it? This is what I told you. So from this chapter, from where the question is going to come, we are going to discuss that part only. And when, whenever we will talk about locomotion and movement, neural control and coordination, then I'll touch the basics. I'll touch more basics. So are you people okay with it? Yes, tell me in the chat section quickly. I want to see the energy, guys. And if you're new to our channel, do subscribe our channel, right? And the likes, 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 likes should be more here. By the end of the session, it should be 2000 plus. And yes, do, do share the video link with other students as well. Guys, genetics marathon will be there. Plant physiology marathon will be there. But do you know what actually is the problem? Do you know what actually is the problem? Whenever you attend any of the session, right? You people, you people think of something else, right? If I'm teaching human physiology, you will talk about plant physiology. If I teach plant physiology, you will talk about genetics. If I teach genetics, you'll be like, when are you going to start the biotech? That is the problem. Right now, you know that I'm going to teach you the human physiology. And whenever required, I'll take the another marathon session and I'll teach you genetics as well. So as of now, what you people need to do, you should focus here, right? You should focus here, guys. Done? And being a teacher, I know what is important for my kids. So I'm going to tell you that also. So in in whatever in the sessions that I'm going to take, the topics that I have mentioned in top 60 wala video, I will cover that. Okay, I am going to cover that. So show some energy, right? And please focus here. Got it? Right. So now I'm going to teach you. So this is what digestion is. So we know that when it comes to the digestion, this is the diagram. Okay. We start from mouth. Isn't it mouth? A transverse slit like aperture and in this mouth everything the buccal cavity teeth 
tongue, everything will be covered here. When you use the word mouth, this transverse slit like aperture guarded by the lips inside portion will include everything. The buccal cavity is there, also known as oral cavity. Teeth are there, tongue is also there, right? Tongue is also there. So now kids, there is one word that you people need to remember. There is a, there is a gap in between the gums and the teeth. You know, now there is a gap. Uh, sorry, there is a gap. When you talk about the mouth and the teeth, there is a gap in between. So, we used to call that gap as vestibule. What we used to call it? We used to call it as vestibule. The gap in between, you can say that cheeks and the teeth. Right? Cheeks and the teeth. The gap which is present in between, that is the vestibule. Food will be temporarily stored there. Right? Now, when you talk about the buccal cavity. Okay? So, if you talk about the floor of the buccal cavity. Right? If you talk about the floor of the buccal cavity, this part, this part, you know that the interior portion here is, if you will touch it with your tongue, uh, give it a try, uh, uh, the hard palate, what will you get here? The hard palate and the posterior part here will be soft palate, right? It will be the soft palate and then at the end, you know that there will be something like this, the hanging portion, right? Ah, uh, just check it. There is a hanging portion, isn't it? There is a hanging portion and we used to call that hanging portion as ubula. What is it? Please type it in the chat section, all of you. That hanging portion is what? That is ubula. That hanging portion is what? That is ubula, isn't it? Ubula, right? Ubula, that hanging portion. So, hard palate, soft palate is there. They are making the roof of the buccal cavity. Now, let's talk about the floor. Ah, ah, NCRT. Guys, NCRT. I'm going to teach you everything from NCRT. Each and every line will be from NCRT. So kindly listen to me very, very, very carefully. So now when you talk about the floor of the buccal cavity, you know that there will be the tongue and that tongue is attached to the floor of buccal cavity by a ligament that is known as frenulum. So frenulum word is a previous year question. Please note it down. Okay. Frenulum word is a previous year question. So please note it down. This is ubula. What is this? Ah, this is frenulum. So, with the help of frenulum, tongue will get attached to the floor of the buccal cavity. The first point clear? The first point clear? Yes, bache? everyone. Now, a very important point. You know that we are talking about the digestive system before it. Yes, you know that we are talking about the Right. What are we talking? We are talking about the digestive system, isn't it? So, when it comes to the digestive system, there are two things. One is the alimentary canal and another is the digestive glands. One is the alimentary canal and another is the digestive glands. These are the two things that we have. So, when you talk about the alimentary canal, you know that it's a tube-like structure, right? It's a tube-like structure. It starts from mouth, right? buccal cavity, the pharynx is here, then comes the esophagus, the food pipe, then comes the stomach, right, that J-shaped structure, then comes the small intestine, then comes the large intestine and then comes the anus, right, anus. So, because of the presence of the separate opening, the mouth and the anus, you know that in our case, the digestive system is complete. What do we have? We have the complete digestive system. We have the complete digestive system. Now, alimentary canal plus digestive glands, together, together they make the digestive system. Together they make the digestive system. So, when we talk about the digestive glands, we even consider salivary glands. We even consider gastric glands, we even consider liver, we even consider pancreas, we even consider intestinal glands. Are you getting my point? Intestinal glands. Are you getting my point? So, all these things are going to make your digestive system. All these things are going to make your digestive system. So, firstly, let's talk about this part. Then we will focus on the digestive gland. Is that okay, everyone? Is that clear? All of you, is that clear? So, now you already know about the mouth. You know about the buccal cavity. You know about the tongue region as well. Okay. So, this frenulum is the 
क्वेश्चन इट इज द पॉइंट दैट यू पीपल नीड टू फोकस नाउ बच्चे ओवर योर टंग द पैपिले आर प्रेजेंट पैपिले इन डिटेल नॉट गिवन एन एन सी आर टी वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू फोकस हेयर बिकॉज टूडे इज क्लास इज स्पेशली बेस्ड ऑन एन सी आर टी राइट बिकॉज सो मेनी स्टूडेंट्स दे रिक्वेस्टेड इट मैम वी वॉन्ट एन सी आर टी वी वॉन्ट एन सी आर टी सो टूडे सेशन इज मेनली एन सी आर टी बेस्ड सो यू नो दैट वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द टंग पैपिले आर प्रेजेंट एंड दैट पैपिले विल कंटेन द टेस्ट बर्ड्स राइट सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट टेस्ट बर्ड्स वी आर एबल टू टेस्ट समथिंग वी नो इट वेरी वेल ओके फाइन नाउ वेन इट कम्स टू द यू विल आर दैट हैंगिंग पार्ट सी सी दिस इज द एक्सटर्नल नेरस हेयर दिस इज द माउथ हेयर फ्रॉम दिस एक्सटर्नल नेरस एयर विल कम फ्रॉम दिस माउथ वी आर गोइंग टू ईट समथिंग नाउ यू नो दैट यू नो द फ्लो हेयर द माउथ बकल कैबिटी देन कम्स द फैरिंग्स एंड देन कम्स द ईसो फेगस दिस इज वॉट यू नो Yes or no? This is what you know. So this uvula, when you swallow the food, when you swallow the food, we wants to we want to make sure, right? We wants to make sure that food should not enter here in the nearest part, in the nasal chamber, wala part. So when we swallow the food, that uvula, what is the role of this uvula? It will close the internal nares. It will close the internal nostril. This point clear? This point clear? You might find that this this topic is very easy, but it is important. So uvula, what is the role of uvula? I want to see the answer in the chat section, all of you. I want to see the answer in the chat section, all of you. Uvula, what will uvula do? Uvula, when we swallow the food, uvula is going uh, going to close our internal nares. It is going to close the internal nares, so that food should not enter there. Okay, so the food should not enter there. No, 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 no. Right now we are not talking about epiglottis or glottis. No. i'm talking about the nasal cavity nilofar is right right nilofar is right now what else do we have in the buccal cavity we have the teeth right we have the teeth in the buccal cavity this is the structure okay bachche so you know that here in the teeth crown is there the neck region is there the root is there crown is there neck region is there root is there crown is there neck region is there root is there now in the in our case the arrangement of teeth we need to focus for our neat exam okay the arrangement of teeth so that arrangement of teeth is known as dentition okay so the first thing that you need to know is arrangement of teeth and arrangement of teeth is known as dentition what is it it is known as dentition so when you talk about the humans in our case the dentition is heterodont i'll explain the meaning of each and every word the dentition is thecodont and then comes the diphyodont these are the three words that you need to focus right now are you okay na see i am not totally diving into basics but i am covering each and everything important are you people okay with that na right it is not very basic it is not very basic but yes along with that i am touching all the important points so this is how you just need to understand it and it, this video is very 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 good for your revision trust me trust me okay okay done so in the case of humans as i said three type of, three types of dentition is there the heterodont the thecodont and the diphyodont word is used so what is dentition arrangement of teeth now when you look at the structure of the teeth right first of all just look at the structure of the teeth we have the crown the neck and the root now bachche if you look at this diagram you can figure out that this particular teeth it is actually the section of teeth the teeth is deeply embedded here right the teeth is deeply embedded here right so this part the socket where it is deeply embedded we use the word alveoli for that also this socket is also known as alveoli you can use the word alveolus okay okay so alveoli are not just in the lungs they are here also we call that place as right we call this particular part as alveolus where our teeth is deeply embedded got it got it just look at the structure first now the white part here enamel the hardest substance of our body the hardest substance of our body now this enamel it has covered this dentine it has covered this dentine and this dentine has itself covered the pulp cavity just look at it very carefully okay right so what what do we have here this part is the dentine part here right this this part is the enamel part here this part is the dentine part here and dentine has covered this pulp cavity and if you look at the structure of teeth as i said it is deeply embedded here in the jaw bone right in the alveolus is that clear all of you is that clear right now what we need to remember here 
ओके वॉट वी नीड टू रिमेंबर हियर मैम वाई आर यू टेलिंग दिस टू अस इज देर एनी थिंग इम्पॉर्टेंट येस देयर इज राइट डाउन टू थिंग्स वेन इट कम्स टू दाइन ओके डेंटाइन इज फॉर्म्ड बाय ऑडोंटो ब्लास्ट सेल्स दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू नो एंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द एनिमल द हार्डेस्ट द वाइटेस्ट वाइटेस्ट सब्सटांस इट इज फॉर्म्ड बाय अमाइलो ब्लास्ट इज दैट क्लियर this is the important thing that my students need to remember the question can come from this particular part so if there is any doubt in this portion just let me know let me know kids is that clear is that clear so dentine will be formed by odontoblast and when you talk about the enamel it will be formed by ameloblast basically ameloblast is that clear is that clear no it's not it is in the ncert just uh, write down just write down it is in the ncert just write down is that clear it is ameloblast done so dentine odontoblast enamel ameloblast this is important so i am going to put this word so this is what you need to remember from the structure of the teeth now the next portion see you know that your teeth in the case of humans they are deeply embedded here in the socket bone they are deeply embedded here in the socket bone deeply embedded here in the socket bone now upper jaw lower jaw very important point here upper jaw lower jaw upper jaw lower jaw upper jaw lower jaw when you talk about this upper jaw it is known as maxilla what is the word here maxilla so upper jaw is made up of two bones two bones are together going to form the upper jaw maxilla maxilla so maxilla word should be there in the chat section the lower jaw is what it is mandible it is mandible and do you know that kids that mandible is the only movable bone of skull do you know that it is the only movable bone of skull are you aware of it are you aware of it now our teeth as i said deeply embedded here in the socket bone right as i said deeply embedded here in the socket bone okay so that is why we use the word kids thecodont dentition that is why the word that we use here for this dentition is thecodont because our teeth are deeply embedded in the socket bone deeply embedded in the socket bone so upper jaw two bones maxilla lower jaw mandible a uh, only movable bone of skull and you know no we girls because we want that jaw line or something you know we want jaw line so we keep doing exercises like this like i need it and that chabi chabi na so a uh, a uh, uh, something like that so it is the only movable bone of skull which one the mandible one another question because our teeth are deeply embedded we are using the word thecodont dentition right now bachche what else because we have different type of teeth so that is why we use the word heterodont dentition what is the meaning of what is the literal meaning of word hetero hetero means different hetero means different and in the case of humans yes we have different different teeth we have the incisors denoted by i we have canines denoted by c then we have the premolars denoted by pm and then we have the molars denoted by m so our teeth are different their function is different their shape is different okay so that is why the word here is heterodont dentition i c p m m i c p m m is that clear now how the teeth are arranged see acha anyone here in my class who is targeting for bds who wants to be the dentist anyone in our class who is targeting for bds any student who is like ma'am i want to be a dentist anyone guys for the j e courses we are going to start soon trust me we are going to cover everything possible for our kids secondly as of now we are talking about the need so just focus here and it's a request the number of students 
the number of live viewers should be more than thousand so yes share the video link with other people as well do share the video link with other people as well because we need your support we want to make this family a little 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 big okay done okay mbbs only okay fine but still it is helpful for you you people should know about it so when you talk about this this part na the jaws we how do we check the dental formula there is no need to cram it okay there is no need to cram it just listen to me very carefully how do we check the dental formula just divide it into four parts a ah, upper jaw lower jaw divide it into four parts a ah, a ah. there will be the four quadrants 1 2 3 and 4 hai na I'm going to divide this particular part into four regions, four quadrants. Ah, uh, ah, uh, means divide upper jaw into two parts, divide lower jaw into two parts. Okay. So how to how how do we write this dental formula? We write it like this: incisor, canine, premolar, molar. Incisor, canine, premolar, molar. Repeat it in the chat section, all of you. Incisor, canine, premolar, molar. So incisor two. Canine one, premolar two, molars three. That is how we write the dental formula. So we consider it in this way. We divide upper jaw into two halves. We divide lower jaw into two halves. So in each of the quadrant, the the arrangement of teeth is like this this is what dentition is so incisor canine premolar and molar this is the sequence my dear kids so 2 1 2 3 2 1 2 3 and this is the dental formula in the case of what in the case of adult right this is the dental formula in the case of what in the case of adult so you can write it like this 2 incisor canine premolar and molar right So two, one, two, three here, right? Multiply by two, and it is going to be thirty-two. How is it? So two, one, two, three here. 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 So in totality, it is going to be thirty-two. In totality, it is going to be thirty-two. This part clear? All of you, this part clear? Any doubt here? Any doubt? So because of different type of teeth, heterodont, deeply embedded teeth, the uh, thicodont, but. What about diphyodont? What is the meaning of diphyodont? But your di means two. What is the meaning of di? Di means two, because we have two sets of teeth. That is why we call our dentition is diphyodont, because we have two sets of teeth. Now we have to focus here. Okay. Now we have to focus here. We need to understand it. And here, <coughs> just note down. two sets okay the one set is the set of milk teeth also known as temporary teeth also known as deciduous teeth set isn't it isn't it it's temporary it is temporary set isn't it second is the adult teeth permanent set right permanent set adult teeth permanent set there is right so now what is the difference what is the difference here in the case of adults i already told you it is going to be 2 1 2 3 it is going to be 2 1 2 2 3 right multiply 2 32 32 now i hope you all are able to understand 2 1 2 3 8 teeth here 8 teeth here 16 8 8 right like this okay like this now focus here what about this milk teeth or something but in the case of infants you know that dental formula is different in the case of this permanent teeth in the case of this milk teeth the the things are different from this adult set when you talk about the infants if you remember the dental formula in the case of infants is it is 2 1 either you can write it like this 2 1 2 into 2 is equals to 20 or you can write it like this do you know that either you can write it in this way or in this way now what is the what is the thing that you need to focus here because this is important for your neat examination question can come from this particular part here in the milk teeth set bacche here in the milk teeth set what is going to happen your premolars are absent they are zero your premolars are absent they are zero do you know that exactly monisha premolars are absent that is why i am writing it like this incisor canine molars here in caesar canine premolars and molars are you getting my point are you getting my point so here your premolars are what they are zero 
they are zero right we do not have premolars in milk teeth we, our jaws are not that big premolars are not there molars are present and how many molars are there two yes in the in the milk teeth set molars are present two molars are there but we do not have the premolars right and when we you know after after that you know that the jaw size will grow so at the place of that molars premolars will come and then the molars will grow this is something that you people really need to understand okay you guys need to understand now from this part can i conclude one thing can i conclude one thing that premolars are only there premolars are only there in adult set so can i not say that ki when it comes to the okay can i not say that that when it comes to the premolars they are present just once in our lifetime so can i not say that premolars are monophyodont in our dentition premolars are monophyodont in our dentition very good anika excellent anika excellent anika premolars are monophyodont because they will grow just once and and if you look at this if you look at this molars are three molars are three but but earlier molars were two so can i not say that last molar last molar is again it will grow just once in its lifetime so it is monophyodont yes can we not say that last molar is also monophyodont yes or no yes or no and you even know that that last molar is also known as the wisdom tooth right right and it is vestigial it is vestigial isn't it question can come from this particular part bachche question can definitely come from this particular part is that clear all of you is that clear are you sure are you sure so can you tell me the total number of teeth in our case in our dentition that are monophyodont what is the total number of teeth that are monophyodont right what are the total number of teeth that are monophyodont eight premolars monophyodont four molars they are monophyodont so in totality 12 teeth they are monophyodont if there is any doubt in this part please let me know because this is something very important for the neat this is something very important for the teeth and that's my gut feeling question is going to come from this part this year yes this is just my opinion na huh? gut feeling ki question can come from this part question can come from this part done okay so that's what you should know about the teeth about the dentition so you can see the incisor for cutting even the canines also help in cutting and for crushing and tearing these two teeth are going to help okay these two teeth are going to help and do you know what i have all the molars and do you know why do we call the last molar as the wisdom tooth because bachche it grows in the later ages of our life and you can say that in uh, sometimes in early 20s or in last 20s and you know in my case all the all the molars are present so basically i have 32 teeth yes i do have that okay done so see primary set this is the arrangement right first molar and second molar is there premolars are absent and when you talk about the permanent set all of them are present right so i will share the pdf in the telegram group don't you people worry just focus here as of now done bachche so this is about the dental formula i hope it is clear to you now practice few question and then we'll be talking about the next part okay when then we'll talk about the next part okay quick acha you have 30 32 aha uh -huh. ha you can count your teeth later not right now ha huh? and if you are new to our channel yaar please subscribe our channel the subscribe our channel quick i i want to see that spike in the numbers na by the end of my session our family should be 20000 subscriber family okay subscribe it i i want to see that spike in the number okay 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 yes you are right so here the answer is premolars that human primary dentition it differs from the permanent dentition in that it does not have 
premolars okay it does not have premolars okay hardening of tooth enamel is caused by which element okay you know that enamel it is the hardest substance okay so enamel is formed by ameloblast dentine is formed by odontoblast enamel is formed by ameloblast dentine is formed by odontoblast is that clear so now answer this answer this answer this all of you answer this yes it is hard because of the fluorine hardening fluorine is it so is it so hardening is because of see fluorine is required for the teeth health but yes hardening is mainly because of the calcium it is mainly because of the calcium so yes here the answer should be calcium hardening even fluorine is required for the good teeth health always remember that okay what about the next next is the salivary gland take a next is the salivary gland i want to make one thing very clear to you okay tell me one thing where do salivary glands present where do salivary glands present tell me quickly in the chat section where do salivary glands present tell me tell me tell me where do your salivary glands present where do your salivary glands present quick 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 answer it yes yes okay only few students are giving the correct answer only few students are giving the correct answer if you read ncert carefully then you can answer the question salivary glands are located outside the buccal cavity kids they are located outside the buccal cavity and it is the major blunder that you people make in your neat examination all of you know that in the neat paper statement based questions used to come yes you know that statement based question used to come correct and correct questions used to come so if you want to answer such type of questions you need to read the ncert very carefully i have made one short video which is for less than 1 minute i told you about the tips the tips that you people can follow to score you know 330 plus in your neat examination that how to solve the biology how to study the biology you can check it later but please 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 study your read your ncert carefully you heard me right salivary glands they are not located in the buccal cavity they are located outside the buccal cavity so always remember this line they are located outside the buccal cavity as such this line is from ncert as such this line is from ncert so how many how many salivary glands do we have we have three pairs how many salivary glands do we have we have three pairs right bachche so just look at this the the one which is near to the cheek which is near to the ear this is the parotid gland right then comes the submandibular submandibular is also known as submaxillary we even call it as submaxillary gland but bachche in general if you will check the books we mention the word submandibular right just a minute bachche answer of last question is calcium it is calcium only answer is marked in correct here the answer is calcium only got it now please focus here so i am telling you that we have three pairs of salivary glands one is the parotid and one here is the submandibular we even call it as submaxillary but if you will read the books majorly it is written as submandibular majorly it is written as submandibular why because this gland is located at the angles of the jaw right 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 just listen to me very carefully just listen to me very carefully that submandibular submaxillary it is located at the angle of the jaws but it is more towards the lower jaw that is why we use the word submandibular that is why we use the word submandibular and one is sublingual lingual word is associated with tongue so below the tongue region this gland is present so we use the word sublingual we use the word sublingual here so these are the three pairs of gland now see whether ncert is incorrect or correct just keep one thing in your head paper is going to come from ncert only so we have to follow it okay we have to follow it done bachche done see ncert you people need to follow all the glands they are located outside the buccal cavity whatever the portion is considered as buccal cavity these glands are present outside what is the logic behind just take one example right bachche these glands are exocrine glands actually 
these glands are what they are exocrine glands what is the meaning of exocrine glands the glands having the ducts having these tubes so these glands they will pour their secretion with the help of these tubes in the buccal cavity right in the buccal cavity so that is how it works okay that is how it works are you getting my point that is how it works guys all the glands are present outside the buccal cavity this is what you need to remember you have to follow the ncrt okay you have to follow the ncrt are you getting my point are you getting my point so these glands are what these are exocrine now there is a trick to remember the name of the ducts of these gland all of you just write down this all of you just write down this trick parotid then comes the submandibular then comes the sublingual okay then comes the sublingual so what you have to remember here now you see m is like this m is like this m is like this so m and w relatable relatable yes or no amisha they are relatable so for submandibular gland the name of the duck is wharton's duck the name of the duck is wharton's duck the name of the duck is wharton's duck and if you people go to lab right in the lab what will you do research in the lab what will you do research isn't it so l4 lingual means lab and in the lab we'll go for the research so that is how i remember in the case of sublingual gland the duck is duck of ravenous right the duck of ravenous are you getting my point isn't it isn't it isn't it yes or no yes or no so m and w relatable so when you talk about the submandibular gland wharton's duck it is having when you talk about the sublingual gland duck of ribbonus it is having and when you talk about the parotid parotid may only one is remaining that is your stenson's duck so the name of the duck of parotid gland in stenson mandibular watson lingual duck of ribbonus is that clear is that clear so any doubt here any doubt here so i'm repeating this portion again because these salivary glands they are exocrine in, they are exocrine gland they are having the tubes they are having the ducts and that duct is going to pour the secretion in the buccal cavity that duct is going to pour the secretion in the buccal cavity now what is the name of that duct see ye parotid is having stenson mandibular is having watson's lingual is having the trick is lab research duct of ribbonus so any doubt here any doubt here yes everyone so what is the major thing that will be produced by these salivary glands so you have to answer this question in the chat section quickly quickly what is the major thing that is produced by these salivary glands quickly what will these salivary glands form yes 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 tell me quickly anyone anyone ah uh ah -uh. see we know that all the salivary glands they are going to produce the secretion because they are glands right and that is basically saliva and in that saliva majorly what do we have we have an enzyme which is important for the digestion of a substrate and the name of that enzyme is ptylin the name of that enzyme is ptylin which is also known as alpha salivary amylase alpha salivary amylase what is it it is alpha salivary amylase so this is the enzyme which is present in the saliva this is the enzyme which is important for the digestion this is the enzyme which is important for the digestion of the carbohydrates that is starch is that clear guys is that clear so all the salivary glands they are going to make the saliva right and in that saliva what is present enzymes are there some ions are there so the major enzyme for the digestion is ptylin it is present ptylin is also known as alpha salivary amylase here i would like to add one thing and that thing can be asked as a question that thing can be asked as a question how many of you know that our body cannot digest the cellulose do you people know that our body cannot right do you people know that our body cannot digest the cellulose cellulose right we cannot eat the plant material with, without cooking it we cannot digest it right we cannot digest it why is it so why is it so because we do not have the enzyme to digest the cellulose we cellulose is a beta polysaccharide kids 
it is given in biomolecules cellulose is a beta polysaccharide in the case of cellulose you have the beta linkage beta 1 4 linkage is there beta 1 4 linkage is there but in our case the salivary amylase that is present that are uh, alpha salivary amylase right that are alpha salivary amylase even in the pancreas so that cannot digest the cellulose are you getting it that cannot digest the cellulose this is the reason this is the major reason okay so now in the salivary gland saliva salivary gland will produce the saliva that will form this enzyme tylen it is also a pyq what is the another name of salivary amylase so you need to remember other than that lysozyme is also present right lysozyme is also present in saliva and this lysozyme is antimicrobial other than this bache we have many ions we have chloride ions also and these chloride ions are important for the functioning of salivary amylase another mcq right this chloride ion it is important for the functioning of the salivary amylase so note it down okay thiocyanates are also there okay so these are the things which are present in saliva so when it comes to the digestive enzyme only tylen is present so tylen is going to digest the carbohydrates so can i not say that the carbohydrate digestion will start here in the buccal cavity can i not say that the carbohydrate digestion will start here in buccal cavity so this is the point that you people need to remember and after the class short notes you have to form you have to form some short notes after the class you are going to share that pic with me in my telegram group okay in my telegram group you have to send that pic yes ma'am while attending your session these are the topics these are the points that i jot down and th this is the pic okay this is what you have to do will you do it yes guys will you do it will you people do it yes or no yes or no are yaar send some yes 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 some emo some fire and do subscribe our channel as well okay done so this is it so salivary gland saliva now 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 let's be more specific so here i have a table for all of you right here i have a table for all of you so parotid gland it secretes saliva into the oral cavity you know it very well and parotid gland it secretes maximum salivary amylase it produces maximum salivary amylase majority of although all the three glands are going to produce salivary amylase but majority right majority of that is from the parotid gland right it will form maximum salivary amylase okay okay is that clear is that clear so this is the point that you need to remember so any doubt any doubt so if in the neat exam the question is which salivary gland will form the maximum amount of salivary amylase so what should be your answer what should be your answer what should be your answer it is it is it is salivary amylase it, uh, it is parotid it is the parotid which is going to form the maximum salivary amylase okay done yes ph you need to focus you need to learn now answer this question answer this question quick answer this question all of you answer this quick sure why where are parotid salivary glands present obviously below the ear so don't you think in the neat exam matlab the pyqs the previous year questions are too easy even after attending the sessions don't you feel that these questions are too easy they are too simple and trust me paper is going to be very simple for all of you right it's just that ki we have you know we have to revise the entire chapter we have to revise the entire syllabus we, we have physics chemistry biology so we feel like and we have very limited time so we feel like the paper is difficult but actually the paper is very easy it's uh, it depends that how do you attempt the paper so soon i will post the strategy that how you guys should attempt the paper okay okay so we are going to help you out in every possible way every possible way so what you have to do you just need to revise right rest we are here to guide you what you what you have to do what you what you should avoid what you should do we'll tell you about it okay next next is this part liver but before that obviously hmm. so mouth 
buccal cavity in the buccal cavity we are done with the tongue we are done with the teeth okay then comes the pharynx the esophagus the stomach the small intestine the large intestine and finally the anus isn't it finally the anus isn't it now listen to me very carefully when it comes to the pharynx buccal cavity is going to lead into this pharynx in the pharynx there is a trick the trick is known if you are if you are my old student then you know this trick isn't it the trick here is known what is the trick here the trick here is known type known in the chat section all of you type known in the chat section all of you it is the word is what the word is known what is the meaning of known pharynx is having three parts the one is the nasopharynx o is the oropharynx and then comes the then comes the laryngopharynx then comes the laryngopharynx are you getting my point are you getting my point pharynx is having three parts the nasopharynx oropharynx laryngopharynx right bachche now you know that here these two things are related like see you have external nostrils understand this huh we will use it in the breathing and exchange of gases also then there is nasal chamber or nasal cavity then comes the internal nares isn't it then comes the internal nares isn't it and then you know that what will be there there will be the pharynx right there will be the pharynx just imagine it in this way here you have the external nostrils here you have the external nostril for nostril we also use the word nares here you have the mouth isn't it here you have the mouth can i write it in this way can i write it in this way all of you external nares nasal chamber internal nares then comes the pharynx here you have the mouth and here you know that buccal cavity then again comes the pharynx so basically pharynx is something common right pharynx is something common right basically pharynx is something common from external nares you know that air will come inside from the mouth you know that food will come so pharynx is common which will receive air as well which will receive food as well but when it comes to the pharynx there are three part naso oro and laryngeo naso oro and laryngeo so this upper part near to this nasal cavity and all this comes the naso pharynx what is it it comes the naso pharynx everything is given in ncert guys everything is from ncert remember you station tube in ear guys see i'm not see uh, i think from last 5 years right i'm guiding the neat aspirants so i know what is given in ncert or not trust trust me i have read it more than you okay so i know all the points are from ncert so kindly focus here okay kindly focus here so naso pharynx don't you remember you station tube and all each and every word is given in your book just read it carefully now just look at this when it comes to the ear part when it comes to this external nostril nasal chamber internal nares wala part then also we have the pharynx that is the naso pharynx and when you talk about this food wala part right when you talk about this food wala part then then also pharynx is common yes pharynx is a common passage for the ear as well for the food as well right so here you have the oropharynx exactly you have the oropharynx which is common for food as well as for the ear so naso oro and then comes the laryngeo naso oro and then comes the laryngeo naso oro and then comes the laryngeo is that clear naso oro and then comes the laryngeo pharynx now bachche there is one more point dekho take the example of chintu right you have to take the example of chintu just imagine i am chintu ठीक है जस्ट इमेजिन आई एम चिंटू यू हैव टू टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ चिंटू जस्ट इमेजिन योर चिंटू इज स्टैंडिंग लाइक दिस दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द डॉर्सल साइड दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द वेंट्रल साइड लाइक यू पीपल कैन टेक माई एग्जाम्पल दिस साइड दिस साइड इज द डॉर्सल दिस साइड इज द वेंट्रल दिस साइड इज द लेट्रल दिस साइड इज द डॉर्सल दिस साइड इज द वेंट्रल दिस साइड इज द लेट्रल लिसन टू मी वेरी केयरफुली दिस पर्टिकुलर साइड इज द डॉर्सल साइड this particular side is the ventral and this side is the lateral side okay now just see i am standing like this dorsal ventral lateral 
dorsal ventral lateral is that clear now what is happening this laryngopharynx is coming down towards the ventral side it will divide like this right towards the ventral side it will divide like this see this this is your laryngopharynx okay so towards the ventral side ye dekho it is it will go forward here you have the larynx then you have the trachea and just behind it this laryngopharynx will, will lead towards this side it will lead towards this side this opening here is gullet this is the opening of the food pipe esophagus right esophagus so what am i trying to say here that this laryngopharynx will further divide towards the ventral side it is going to proceed into the larynx towards the just just beneath this trachea this larynx and trachea just beneath it it will further form uh, it will proceed into the esophagus it will proceed into the esophagus are you getting my point into the esophagus so what you have to remember here when you talk about the larynx opening right when you talk about the opening of the larynx the opening is known as glottis the opening is known as glottis right it is glottis glottis opening glottis right right glottis right glottis and then then now if we want to swallow the food you know that the passage is common so bachche we don't want our food to enter here in trachea we want our food to enter here in the esophagus so what are we going to do bachche what will happen here this glottis right whenever we swallow the food this glottis will be covered with then uh, with a cartilaginous flap and that is known as epiglottis okay so if you ever get confused that which one is glottis whether glottis is the opening or it is the cartilaginous flap just remember one thing epi means above what is the meaning of word epi epi means above above so glottis is the opening and then epiglottis is above glottis so epiglottis is going to cover the glottis right so it is the cartilaginous flap which will close this larynx opening whenever we swallow the food so again it's a pyq previous year question okay it's a previous year question so up to this part all clear any doubt here up to this part all clear yes so then this this gullet the opening of esophagus this is the esophagus 25 cm long tube it is what is it it's a 25 cm long tube it is the food pipe it will take the food from pharynx to the stomach it will take the food from pharynx to the stomach and how is it possible with the help of the peristaltic movements we'll come to these movements as well right because of peristalsis because of rhythmic contraction and relaxation because of rhythmic contraction and relaxation of smooth muscles the food will pass from this 25 cm long tube esophagus into the j shaped structure that is known as your stomach that is known as your stomach so any doubt here bachche do you have any doubt here yes do you have any doubt here i hope there is no doubt so this is the esophagus and esophagus will open up into a j shaped right it will open up into a j shaped chamber j shaped area and we used to call it as stomach we used to call it as stomach and stomach is also known as bachche gaster it is also known as gaster right it is also known as gaster now bachche see the stomach is having some parts you know the part where esophagus will open this part is known as cardiac part the part where esophagus is will open it is known as cardiac part now this curved shape area where gases used to present this is known as fundus now this particular portion the major part here is body and here you know that this is the pyloric part right this is the pyloric part are you getting my point this is the pyloric part so bachche it is also a previous year question that esophagus will open up into the stomach in the cardiac part so here you are going to have one aperture the opening and we used to call it as gastro esophageal sphincter or cardiac aperture what we used to call it we used to call it as gastro esophageal sphincter or the cardiac aperture or the cardiac aperture you know babies 
whenever uh, whenever we feed babies they used to puke out hai na they used to puke out if you give them milk they will give you the curd isn't it if you give them milk they will give you the curd they will not even wait they will be like okay uh, oh immediately why is it so because in the case of babies this gastroesophageal sphincter is very weak okay it is very weak the sphincter is very weak in their case so immediately they they regurgitate the food are you getting my point and sometimes when we feel acidity some burning sensation so what happened at that time uh, acid from the stomach region na it regurgitated that is why we feel inflammation so in the case of babies this aperture this sphincter is very weak okay it is very weak so esophagus to stomach then from stomach to small intestine then from stomach to small intestine okay okay so now i'll add one thing here okay when it comes to the small intestine see i have tricks for everything whenever i'll start the classes for 2024 aspirants na they are going to love it because for neat 2023 we started a bit late but that's okay we are covering ev uh, everything so whenever i'll take that regular classes na for neat 2024 aspirants don't worry the quality content the quality content with tricks will be provided to you but support is important okay so the subscriber number should increase you have to support us so you tell me are you guys going to support us and i think you all have seen that our team is amazing and we are going to provide you everything possible for your need examination so don't you think we we deserve that support hai na so are you going to like our uh, this video or are you going to subscribe our channel i think you should so if you are new to our channel just subscribe it just subscribe it right so now let's focus on the small intestine so in the small intestine again there is a trick that is dji right that is dji what is the trick dji what is the trick dji so d for duodenum j for jejunum i for ileum d for duodenum j for jejunum i for ileum so these are the three parts here duodenum jejunum ileum duodenum jejunum ileum of small intestine now your stomach the pyloric part will proceed into the duodenum it will proceed into the duodenum right duodenum are you getting my point here duodenum so at the junction of this pyloric stomach and the duodenum again we have one sphincter that is known as pyloric sphincter that is known as pyloric sphincter is that clear is that clear and why do we call small intestine as small because of its small diameter although it is very long but its diameter is quite small its diameter is quite small okay so then comes the duodenum then comes the jejunum then comes the ileum duodenum jejunum ileum duodenum jejunum ileum type it in the chat section guys duodenum jejunum ileum duodenum so bachche duodenum either it can be remember this ha huh? it can be c shaped or u shaped just remember it although i need to share few you know, other important points here but fine either it can be c shaped or u shaped but in ncrt what is given but in ncrt what is given tell me quickly all of you see i am telling you duodenum can be u shaped it can be c shaped but what is given in ncrt tell me quickly what is given in ncrt all of you tell me quickly what is given in ncrt it is given as c shaped exactly so we have to follow this only it can be u shaped you can even mention u shaped or c shaped but in crt c shaped in, is given so we have to go for that so duodenum is a c shaped structure then comes the jejunum the highly coiled structure and then comes the ileum right even it is highly coiled right so we have these three parts so now come to the diagram this is important then we'll proceed uh yes so here you can see the duodenum then comes the jejunum then comes the ileum so the sequence here is very important okay the sequence here is very important done bachche done 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 okay fine done okay so now what is the point that you people need to remember here let me mention that so duodenum jejunum and ileum it is the ileum which is highly 
कॉइल टू कॉइल इट इज टू कॉइल ओके इट इज मॉडरेटली क्वाइल्ड जय जनम नाउ बच्चे वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन द पॉइंट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर नो डाउट इन द मेमरे इन द लेयर्स ऑफ स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन ऑल्सो वी आर हैविंग द ग्लैंड दैट इंटेस्टाइनल ग्लैंड आर गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस द सिक्रेशन वी रियली नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट बट अलॉन्ग विद दैट द अनादर क्वेश्चन दैट यूज टू कम फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट इज कि इन विच पोर्शन द मैक्सिमम ऑब्जॉर्प्शन एंड डाइजेशन विल बी देयर सी वेन इट कम्स टू द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन वी नो दैट हियर वी आर गोइंग टू हैव ब्रश बॉर्डर्ड एपिथीलियम right the columnar brush bordered epithelium is there don't you remember this the columnar brush bordered epithelium is there don't you remember this tell me don't you remember this in the small intestine because majority of the maximum absorption is there in the small intestine maximum absorption of food is there in the small intestine so in the case of small intestine you have columnar cells matlab tall and cylinder cells and these cells are having microvilli so that absorption can be maximum absorption can be maximum so this is also a pyq that in the small intestine what type of cells do we have in the small intestine we have the brush bordered epithelium we have the brush bordered epithelium brush bordered columnar cells are present in the small intestine so in the small intestine although it it is itself highly coiled right we used to call these finger like projections are as villi they increase surface area and right they increase surface area and 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 if you will magnify this villi portion you will find the cell you will find the cells that are also having small microvilli so that is why we used to say brush bordered epithelium is present in the small intestine so small intestine itself is highly coiled it is forming the finger like projection which increases the surface area we used to call it villi and when you look at the each and every cell the cell here is brush bordered what is the meaning of brush bordered cell brush bordered cells means they are having finger like projections and we used to call it as microvilli is that clear is that clear so these individual cells are also known as enterocytes we even call them as enterocytes so any doubt here any doubt here yes any doubt here and one more thing is there bachche see these finger like projections at the base of these finger like projections at the base of these villi you will find tubular tube like glands some tubular gland and we used to call it as crypts of liber cohen crypts of liber cohen what are they they are crypts of liber cohen what are they they are crypts of liber cohen open at the base of villa they open at the base of villi now bachche here in the case of small intestine we know that maximum absorption is going to be there now as i said ileum ileum is highly coiled plus ileum is highly vascularized ileum is highly coiled plus ileum is highly vascularized what i did just what i mention here that ileum is highly coiled plus it is highly vascularized highly vascularized means highly vascularized means it is having abundant blood supply it is having abundant blood supply isn't it isn't it so if it is having abundant blood supply don't you think don't you think that it is the ileum where maximum absorption will be there because it is having the abundant blood supply so don't you think that it is the one where the maximum absorption will be there where the maximum absorption will be there yes or no yes or no obviously right obviously plus here in the small intestine in the ileum you have some white colored patches do you know that some white patches are also there and that white patches are known as pears patches and these pear patches are the lymphoid tissue what are they they are the lymphoid tissue the wbcs will be formed by them so they are going to provide the immunity they are going to provide the immunity i'll come i'll tell you about the glands i'll tell you about the histology as well but as of now just mark it okay so pear patches present in small intestine especially in the helium uh, especially in the ileum region right especially in the ileum region right they will provide the immunity and one more thing one is ileum another is ileum can you tell me the difference one is ileum another is also the ileum can you tell me the difference yes bachche 
can you tell me the difference anyone in the class can you tell me the difference here yes ha ah, i'll come to that tonsils part also can you tell me the difference here very good vedant here ileum is the part of small intestine it is the part of small intestine and when you talk about this ileum it is present in the pelvic girdle it is the bone of pelvic girdle in the pelvic girdle ileum ischium pubis they will fuse they will form the coxal bone so it is the part of pelvic girdle is that clear is that clear remember it and one more highlights here ha one more highlighted point here bachche and that point is ki in the case of your buccal cavity you have the tonsils right so tonsils are the lymphoid tissues there tonsils are the lymphoid tissue there we have a ring of tonsil okay we have the ring of tonsil i'm not going to mention the name here right not required but that ring of tonsil is known as waldeer's ring what is it it is the waldeer's ring what do we have we have the ring of tonsil okay so that ring of tonsil is known as waldeer ring again the lymphoid tissue second lymphoid tissue that we have discussed in the case of ileum and in that case that is the pear patches right pears patches and moreover do you know that the vestigial vermiform appendix is also considered as the lymphoid tissue do you know that vermiform appendix that worm like structure that is the vestigial organ that is the vestigial organ even this organ is considered as lymphoid it is having some lymphoid tissue part so even it is considered as the lymphoid it is having that part do you know that if you don't know that then it's okay you can take the screenshot guys even i'll share the pdf in my telegram group so you can note it down from there okay okay so this is what you need to remember so any doubt any doubt as of now i'm telling you the general thing and the important things of course so now you know that the dji now you know that that small intestine it is having three parts the d the j the i the ileum now you know that it will further proceeds into the large intestine isn't it it will further proceed into the large intestine and when it comes to the large intestine then what do we have bachche in the large intestine we have the cecum the colon and the rectum right and the rectum so large intestine is large because of its diameter so can i not say that that it is the ileum which will further leads into the large intestine can i not say that that it is the ileum which will further proceeds into the large intestine so here we have ileo cecal junction or aperture here ileo cecal junction so any doubt any doubt exactly ileo cecal valve ileo cecal junction will be there so any doubt here yes no done so when it comes to the cecum when it comes to the cecum it's a blind blind means closed from one side blind pouch or sac like structure having microorganisms living in symbiotic association are you aware of it that in the cecum there are microorganisms living in symbiotic association which are living in symbiotic association are you aware of it yes kids are you aware of it are you aware of it and from the cecum itself you know that this worm like structure will further lead right cecum cecum done then comes the colon the ascending one the transverse one the descending one the sigmoid colon rectum and finally the anus finally the anus remember this yes remember this so this is important okay this is important and when you talk about the anus na bachche see here again two sphincters are there one is external which is voluntary we can open it up with our own will but there is internal sphincter also in the case of this anus part 
which is involuntary. So if it is involuntary, it is having smooth muscles. If it is voluntary, it is having cardiac muscles. Oh, sorry, skeletal, uh, skeletal muscles. And here you have the anal canal. That's all. That's can. I know. And I think do you know? I think you all know about the piles, hemorrhoids, hemorrhoids. So sometimes you know that anal blood vessel it gets that swelling here in the anal canal. It results in piles. I'll not go in depth, but I think you you are aware of it, isn't it? Okay. So, non bache. So this is about the this is about all that part that what is there in the small intestine, what is there in the large intestine. Now we will talk about the histology first. We will discuss the histology, and then from that histology. Uh, we then we'll proceed to the liver to the pancreas part then the chapter will be over because I'm going to target the most important things ma'am where is ileocecal valve but it is so simple ileum is proceeding into the cecum so obviously at their junction you will be having the ileocecal valve now you'll be having the ileocecal valve isn't it isn't it isn't it okay done so first of all let's talk about the histology Intest right the histology and then we will discuss about the liver the pancreas and everything so here you can see the esophagus the cardiac part all this region okay and the next here is histology this is important question used to come from this particular part so listen to me very carefully what is the meaning of histology first of all tell me what is the meaning of histology what is the meaning of histology Anyone in the class, histology, the study of tissue, right, the study of tissue. Now, for the histology, there is one trick that we have. See, when you talk about the alimentary canal, it's a tube-like structure. What is it? It's a tube-like structure. This tube-like structure is lined with many layers, right. So, for the entire, for the entire alimentary canal, we have uh, that layers, right. Uh, and that layers, like in the case of stomach, they can be modified in a different way. In the case of small intestine, they can be modified in a different way. But overall, the same four layers are covering our entire alimentary canal, right? Maybe in some region, one part is modified. Maybe in another region, another part is modified. But overall, overall, there are four layers, okay? So, even in, when I was practicing the question, I gave you this trick. The trick here is, the trick here is S, M, S, M. What is the trick here? S, M, S. S M. If you are my old student, you know it very well, right? SMS. SMS is short messaging services, isn't it? These days we use it for receiving the OTPs. Earlier we use it for the chatting as well. Now we have WhatsApp and we have other apps. So SMS, short messaging services. These days we are just using for the OTP, for receiving our order details and all, right? So we have to use the same trick. Instead of SMS, you have to keep it SMSM. Instead of SMS, you have to keep it SMSM. Instead of SMS, you have to keep it SMSM. Now, you need to remember this, bache. This S is outermost layer. This S is what? It is the outermost layer. And when you talk about this M, it is the innermost layer. Right. When you talk about this M, it is the innermost layer. Are you getting my point? So, this S stands for serosa. This S stands for serosa. This S stands for serosa. Along with the serosa, we even call it as visceral peritoneum. Along with serosa, this is also known as visceral peritoneum. Visceral peritoneum, right? Then, then what do we have? M. M stands for muscles. Muscularis. It is muscularis. Muscularis muscles. So, we know that in the alimentary canal, there are right in the alimentary canal we know that right peristalsis is there rhythmic contraction and relaxation is there so it is only possible because of these muscles that are smooth muscles right that are smooth muscles and let me tell you it's a pyq in the chats uh, uh, it was a pyq in meet 2021 yes 
there was a PYQ in NEET 2021. The hollow organs of your body are lined with which muscles? In the in the in the uh, layers of the hollow organs of your body, which muscles are present? The smooth muscles, because they will undergo peristalsis. They will undergo rhythmic contraction and relaxation. Remember, in the reproduction unit, I told you about the uterus. Even in the uterus layer, myometrium is also having the smooth muscles. So these smooth muscles, what will they do? These smooth muscles will undergo rhythmic contraction and relaxation. We used to call it as peristalsis now what is the sequence of layers here again one more trick is present here it is icol what is the trick here icol the sequence is important bache it is icol what is the meaning of icol inner circular outer longitudinal it is inner circular outer longitudinal what is it it is inner circular outer longitudinal okay okay so one extra point I am telling you here that only in the stomach region, only in the stomach region, you will find the oblique muscles as well, right? That is a kind of modification. In the stomach, you will even find the oblique muscles. Otherwise, in the case of humans, it is ICOL. In the case of earthworm, the sequence is different. Their outer becomes circular and inner become longitudinal. But here it is ICOL, inner circular, outer longitudinal, inner circular, outer longitudinal. That done, bache. Then comes the submucosa right then comes the submucosa although in the submucosa you will not find any glands glands are usually in uh, mucosa but there is one exception Brunner's gland okay there is one exception that is Brunner's gland Brunner's gland is present in submucosa in duodenum right Brunner's gland is the one which is present in submucosa in duodenum this is something very important Okay, this is something very important. Done, bache. And the innermost layer, as I said, that is mucosa. So, this layer is going to produce mucus because this layer is having the glands, right? It is having the glands and that are modified in the different, different region. Like in the stomach, you have the, in the esophagus, you have goblet cell, mucus forming cell. Same in the stomach. In the stomach, along with mucus forming gland, along with that goblet cells, G glands are there. Other cells are also there. In the intestine, different cells are there like Paneth, Argentifin. So, these are the type of, you know, modifications. These are the type of modifications which are present. But ultimately, the sequence of layer is same. The sequence of layer is same. So, up to this part, all clear, bache. Up to this part, all clear because question used to come from this part. So, here you can see serosa, inner circular, outer longitudinal muscle, submucosa, mucosa and finally the lumen. Okay, finally the lumen. And let me tell you in the esophagus, the interior part. The, the upper part in the esophagus, it is not having the smooth muscle. It is having a part of skeletal muscle. Even in the esophagus, initially, you will not be able to differentiate in between the serosa and the surrounding. Okay. But that is extra again. Need 2024 aspirants. Wait for that. You will get that things in depth. Okay. As of now, though, we have to complete the syllabus. That is the important thing for us. So, remember that. Done, Mache. So, here, I will mention two more things here. Now, when you talk about the muscles, muscularis, you know that ultimately in the digestive system, we are having, we are having the nervous system also, enteric nervous system, right? Enteric nervous system, digestive system. In digestive system, smooth muscles are there. And that smooth muscles, they need signal from the brain also. Nervous system should be there. Nervous system should be there. Are you getting my point? Nervous system should be there. So, digestive system is also having its own nervous system, the enteric nervous system, right? So, when you talk about the muscles, muscularis layer, even it is having the network of nerve fibers, network of parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve fibers, right? Network of parasympathetic and sympathetic nerve fibers and that is known as ore back plexus, also known as, because muscle is the word, it is also known as myoentric plexus. Plexus means network. So, it is the network of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers. It is the network of sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fibers. Then comes the submucosa. It is also having the network of nerve fibers. So, whenever the word is network, always remember plexus. Plexus means network. So, in submucosa, we are having Mijner's plexus, that network of sympathetic and, uh, uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve fiber is known as Mijner's plexus. Okay. Okay. So, I, I'll tell you one point here. This muscles, this muscle, muscularis means muscles, means smooth muscles. We are having the network of nerve, nerve, uh, nerve fibers there. 
so obviously it will help in the contraction and relaxation of muscles yes or no it will help in the contraction and relaxation of muscles yes or no tell me quickly in the chat section yes or no of course yes it's a big yes isn't it isn't it so can i not say that that, that this nerve uh, this nerve fiber network is helping in the peristalsis it is helping in the peristalsis it is helping in the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the smooth muscles of course yes and when you talk about this mesenar plexus it helps in the release of digestive juices because it is present just below the mucosa so it helps in the release of digestive juices so that is how you have to remember it okay that is how you have to remember it right so in the case of stomach you know that your mucosa is bit modified it has formed rugae right rugae and in the case of your small intestine this mucosa layer it has formed the it has formed the villi so that type of modifications are there that type of modifications are there is that clear is that clear yes or no yes or no is that clear guys what about your energy we just started it's a long marathon we have to be together for 9 to 10 hours that is my motivation let's finish your human physiology now let's read it in this way that this is the last time you are revising human physiology for your neat exam isn't it isn't it let's discuss it in this way let's read it in this way ki we are for the last time we are revising it right right just just take it in this way ki tomorrow you are having the neat exam and today you are studying the human physiology for that neat exam your energy your motivation should be like that right in between you will get the breaks in between we'll we'll chit chat i'll answer your doubts but but motivation should be like this see in the morning i was not feeling well i was like ki i'll cancel the session but then i checked my telegram i checked your excitement i checked the likes here so i was like no no it's okay it's fine today i'll give my time right let's study this particular unit because i have to take genetics biotech plant physiology as well so we do not have time let's not waste students time because i was convinced that my students are going to be very energetic today they are going to revise the human physiology they love human physiology because this is the topic that they will study in their mbbs so i was i was convinced ki nahi today i have to take the session so same thing i'm expecting from you people the energy should be high the energy should be high the number of likes should be high our number of subscriber also right i know many students are new to this channel right so you have to subscribe our channel okay and why are we asking it see we the only reason is ki we'll get the support and we'll we'll be able to guide the need 2024 aspirants we have a lot of things in our head ki this is what we are going to do for our uh, next year aspirants right they should get everything here on this platform okay so that is why yes motivation should be high motivation should be very 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 high okay now come to this point so this is about the uh, this is about the modifications that i need to tell you now here you can see the villi just have a look here bachche have a look of this diagram so these tube like structures present at the base of villi crypts of leberkuchen and here abundant blood supply is there and along with that lacteal lymph vessel is also present in small intestine this lacteal lymph vessel is also there in small intestine okay bachche lacteal lymph vessel is also there in small intestine and it helps in the fat absorption okay it helps in the fat absorption okay so the diagrams are important we are not allowed to skip the diagrams we are literally not allowed to skip the diagrams okay bachche done now come to the glands let's discuss the liver first then we'll come to the let's discuss the liver and the pancreas then we'll come to the intestinal and the gastric glands okay 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 done so here when you talk about the liver it is the largest gland of your body but if the question is largest endocrine gland then the answer will be thyroid but here they are asking largest largest gland right largest gland of our body it is what it is liver and the second largest gland is pancreas second largest gland is pancreas okay okay so here you can see the position of liver so you know that liver is present just below the diaphragm 
liver is present just below the diaphragm because we know that in our body there are uh, cavities the thoracic cavity is there the abdominal cavity is there the pelvic cavity is there now when you talk about the thoracic and the abdominal cavity both of them are divided by a muscular flap like structure right and that flap like structure is known as diaphragm diaphragm is you know that this is something unique which is present in the case of mammals only diaphragm it's a muscular structure it even helps in the it even helps in that mechanism of breathing that we are going to discuss in few minutes so here you can see just below the diaphragm the liver is present here we have the right lobe here we have the left lobe okay okay in general we used to say that liver is having right in general we used to say that liver is having two lobes isn't it two lobes although there are four lobes do you know that do you know that in general we used to say ki liver is having two lobes right liver is having two lobes the right lobe and the left lobe but but it is having four lobes just behind the right lobe bache two more small small lobes are present that is caudate and quadrate that is caudate and quadrate what is it that is caudate and quadrate okay so right lobe but in ncrt only right and left is given so we will discuss it in this way so you know that right is larger right then the left is comparatively smaller and both the uh, both the lobes they are separated by a ligament that is known as falciform ligament do you remember falciform ligament right what is it falciform ligament okay bachche falciform ligament and this liver is having the ducts as well i'll make the duct tree then i'll tell you but firstly let's focus on the liver right let's focus on the liver we know that liver is going to produce with something which is known as bile right we know that liver will produce some secretions which is bile basically so this bile will be stored in a pouch like structure in a pear shaped pyriform pouch like structure gall bladder so main role of liver see the function of liver is very important so keep it in your head when you talk about the liver liver is involved in the detoxification as well okay it will detoxify our body liver cells are having the smooth endoplasmic reticulum so if you know uh, if someone is taking drugs or whatever medicine even medicine even other drugs so liver is going to detoxify it you know that when there is excess of alcohol uh, consumption in that case liver can become fatty if we are taking a lot of you know uh, the outside food the junk food even liver can get fatty why why because liver always try to detoxify the thing so if there is excess of fat it will get deposited over the liver only okay okay it can get deposited over the liver only so liver is going to help in the detoxification you know that glycogen formation is also there in the liver even it is going to produce the bile and that bile is very important for the emulsification of fat okay okay so where will that bile be stored it will be stored and concentrated in the gall bladder but now discussing that let's talk about the internal structure of the liver let's discuss that part first but this is the internal structure of the liver right this is the internal structure of the liver when you talk about the liver the very important question is which one is the basic structural and functional unit of liver can you answer it in the chat section just have a look whenever you talk about the basic structural and functional unit of liver it is the hepatic lobule this is something very important you people will get a question in the paper from this particular part definitely you will get it is the hepatic lobule what is it it is the hepatic lobule which is the structural and functional unit of liver which is the structural and functional unit of liver this is important bachche and when you talk about this hepatic lobule it is covered right it is covered with a layer of connective tissue it is covered with a layer of connective tissue and that is known as bachche glissens capsule again unique to unique to us right glissens capsule so it is the uh, glissens capsule which is the connective tissue which is going to cover this liver which is going to cover this liver glissens capsule now when you talk about the hepatic lobule as i said structural and functional unit of liver so this hepatic lobule is made up of hepatic cells and that hepatic cells are known as the hepatocytes 
Are you getting it? That hepatic cells are known as hepatocytes. Just look at this diagram. Can you see these cells? So, when you talk about the he hepatic lobules, these are that polygonal, these are these hexagonal structure having the blood vessels, having the blood supply. Like here you can see the central vein. Right here you can see some spaces in between. But we used to call these spaces as sinusoids. Right? We used to call these spaces as sinusoids. Just look at this diagram. Right? Right? So, if you take the cross section here, if you see this hepatic lobule, it is the basic structural and functional unit. It is having the central vein. The central vein will carry all that blood vessels important. Okay, see this. In between this, this portion here, these are the hepatocytes also known as hepatic cells. The cells where the, you know, glycogen formation and all will occur. See, just have a look. Here the hepatic venule is the given. Here these spaces are known as liver sinusoids. Here even the bile duct is present. So, whenever liver cells, they will form bile. Bile will pass to this bile duct and bachche, here the concentration and the storage of bile will be done. Are you getting my point? So, this thing is important. Hepatic lobule is important. Glisten capsule is important. Clear? Glisten capsule is important. So, any doubt? Any doubt here? Any doubt here, tell me. So, here you can see it from NCRT as I said. Ki we are even going to, you know, do the NCRT marking as well. So, here you can see the largest gland of the body, liver. Right, its weight is 1.2 to 1.5 kg. It is present in abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm. Right, bache? So, it is the hepatic lobule which is the structural and functional unit of liver. Bache? So, it is something important. It is an important question. It is an important question. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So, what is what is there in the hepatic lobule? They will contain hepatic cells, also known as hepatocytes, which are arranged in the form of cord. Cord means like they are arranged like this, na? It looks like a kind of stick, kind of thick structure. So, they are arranged like a cord. They are arranged like a cord. Done? Done? Okay. So, each lobule is covered by a thin connective tissue, as I said. Glissens capsule, another M important MCQ. So, hepatic cells are going to form the bile here, which will be stored there in the gallbladder. Right? Gallbladder. Is that clear? Is that clear? Now, the next important point that we need to understand is the duct tree. Okay, bachche? So, this is my advice. You should draw it. Okay? Will you draw it? The duct tree. The duct tree is something important. You should draw it. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? That is a very quick way to revise all the ducts. And question used to come from this. Ah, keep 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 responding here. It motivates me, obviously. It is good. It will motivate me. It should even. So, are you ready for that duck tree? Duck tree, duck tree. Tell me, are you guys ready for that duck tree? Okay. So, this is how you have to. Uh, draw it. You know that. Okay. Draw it like this. Right? Draw it like this. See, bache. You know that we have the right hepatic lobe. We have the left hepatic. Uh, le uh, we have the right lobe of liver. We have the left uh, lobe of liver. So, here we have right hepatic duct. We have left hepatic duct. Now, these ducts obviously they will carry all that bile and all, right? They will join, they will form a common, right? It will form a common hepatic duct. Tell me, the first point is clear? The first point is clear, yes or no? First point is clear, yes or no? Quickly in the chat section, all of you guys, energy should be high. So, here you can see we have a pouch like structure we used to call this pouch like structure as gall bladder gall bladder so now gall bladder is also having a duct bache and we used to call it as cystic duct what is it it is the cystic duct what is it it is the cystic duct so name it note down so in the paper they can ask you the duct of the gall bladder is known as cystic duct this is the duct tree basically the name of the gallbladder duct is cystic duct. What is it, bache? It is cystic duct. Let me name it properly. Here, I am naming it. So, it is what? It is the cystic duct. Now, when your cystic duct and common hepatic duct, they will join, they will form 
one more duck see just have a look when your cystic duck and your common hepatic duck they will join they are going to form one more duck and we used to call it as common bile duck and you can simply call it as the bile duck okay okay this is how you have to draw it this is basically the duck tree this is basically the duck tree so what is the story liver is having two ducks right and left they will join like this ah right left they will join so they will form common hepatic duct so common hepatic duct will carry the liver obviously so there is one more duct here cystic duct which is the duct of gall bladder which is the duct of gall bladder now when the cystic duct and common hepatic duct they will join they will form common bile duct so the next here na pancreas is also present pancreas is like here i am on the way also please receive my secretions see you know na pancreas the second largest gland the second largest gland having exocrine part as well having endocrine part as well remember this it is having exocrine part as well it is having endocrine part as well so endo endocrine part contain islets of langerhans having alpha and beta cells other cells are also there we'll talk about it so this endocrine part is going to form insulin glucagon somatocystin pancreatic polypeptide and we have the exocrine part as well having sni and it is going to form the digestive juices remember bachche it is going to form the digestive juices okay so what is going to happen here in duct tree this pancreas is also having this duct we used to call it as pancreatic duct okay we used to call it as pancreatic duct now pancreatic duct will be like here please take me right pancreatic duct will tell this to common bile duct ki please 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 carry my secretions as well even i am lonely i don't want to go alone so please carry my secretions so they are going to join again right they are going to join again and now when the two two of them when they will join together we are going to call it as hepato hepato word is from liver pancreatic which is from pancreas so it is going to be hepato pancreatic duct it is going to be hepato pancreatic duct isn't it it is going to be hepato pancreatic duct and here it will be swollen and this is the ampulla swollen part here is ampulla so this is the hepato pancreatic ampulla so ultimately where will it open bachche it is going to open here in duodenum it is going to open here in duodenum in the small intestine is that clear is that clear yes duodenum here okay okay so what are the other points that we need to remember from this duct tree here just opening ha uh -huh, just uh, here you know that this hepatopancreatic ampulla which is also known as waters ampulla which is also known as waters ampulla it will open up in duodenum but here it is guarded by a sphincter that sphincter is known as bachche type it in the chat section that sphincter is known as yes all of you that sphincter is known as it is known as sphincter of or d it is known as sphincter of or d are you getting my points sphincter of or d are you getting my points sphincter of or d okay and here bachche this common bile duct before joining this pancreatic duct here also it is guarded by a sphincter that sphincter is known as sphincter of boyden sphincter of boyden are you getting him it's sphincter of boyden so sphincter of body is important sphincter of boyden is important please mark it note down take a screenshot of it yes take a screenshot of it quickly just take a screenshot of it it is important done sure sure okay done so it is the sphincter of boyden so this pancreas is also having one accessory pancreatic duct that will open up directly in the duodenum okay duct of centaurini that will directly open up here in the duodenum okay okay so this is something important question will come from this particular part and yes obviously you need to remember that 
okay you need to remember that so see in ncrt the diagram is like this you can see the pancreas having head body and tail part so see the pancreatic duct will join with this common hepatic uh, with this common bile duct and they are going to form the they are going to form the hepatopancreatic duct which will open up here in the duodenum and pancreas as i said it is having one more duct bache that is the accessory duct of pancreas duct of centaurini that will directly open up here in the small intestine okay okay done so here you can see now as i told you that pancreas is what pancreas is bache what is this pancreas right it is the it is the second largest gland bache it is a heterocrine gland are you getting my point it is a heterocrine gland we also call it as composite gland it is the heterocrine gland we also call it as composite gland because as i said it is having exocrine part as well it is having endocrine part as well so when you talk about the exocrine part 99% is the exocrine part so near about 1% or less than 1% is your endocrine part right less than 1% is your endocrine part so this is the exocrine part which will form the digestive juices which will form the pancreatic juices and when you talk about this endocrine part the alpha cell the beta cell the delta cell pancreatic polypeptide cells are there okay so you can note it down because it is also there in ncrt okay so alpha cell is going to form glucagon beta cell is also going to form insulin delta cell will form somatostatin yes delta cell will form somatostatin which is growth inhibitory right which is growth inhibitory and one is uh yes right one is f cells also known as pancreatic polypeptide cells they inhibit inhibit secretions of they inhibit secretion of they inhibit the secretion of the pancreatic juices okay it is going to inhibit the secretion of pancreatic juices is that clear right is that clear got it so alpha cell glucagon beta cell insulin delta cell somatostatin and we have f cells also known as pancreatic polypeptide cells so they are going to inhibit the secretion of they are going to inhibit the secretion of pancreatic juices so yes this question can come in your exam that in the case of pancreas which part is going to form the pancreatic juices the exocrine part it is the exocrine part it is and that is your homework i want to see it in the comment section i want to see that uh, whether you like the session or not and i want to see the ph of all the juices that is your homework okay that is your homework that you need to know okay that you have to do now bache here i'll add one point ha ah, as i said exocrine part now here i'll add one point whenever you talk about the pancreatic juices it's a direct pyq do you know these pancreatic juices are also known as complete digestive juices do you know that pancreatic juices are also known as complete digestive juices ha ah? because pancreatic juices are having the enzymes which can digest all the substrates pancreatic juices are known as the complete digestive juices because they are having the enzymes which are which are which can digest all the uh, substrate but you priya priya i know what i have to teach so kindly do not spam here okay okay if you think that i am wasting your time please leave the session bye okay bye bye see but the endocrine part is having glucagon insulin you know the insulin when when in the blood the excess of sugar is there that sugar will be converted to the glycogen insulin will help in that when in the blood the glucose level is less glucagon will be released it will break the glycogen it will do glycogenolysis it will break that glycogen into glucose it will break that glycogen into glucose are you getting my point somatostatin again inhibitory will stop the secretions okay and then here you have the f cells which will stop the secretions of the digestive juices so this is what you need to remember bachche this is what you need to remember right so here uh, let me mention the things here because this is important so when you talk about the pancreatic juices can you tell me the name of the enzymes which are present in the pancreatic juices the very first is pancreatic amylase very important very first is pancreatic amylase it is also known as amylopsin so remaining 70% of the starch will be hydrolyzed here 
with the help of this enzyme. This is important. Remaining 70% of the starch will be hydrolyzed with the help of this amyl lopsid. 30% will be there by salivary amylase which is present in saliva. Remaining 70% percent by the pancreatic amylase also known as amylopsin. Right, bache, even in the pancreatic juices, we will be having the steapsin. What is this steapsin? It is pancreatic lipase. Right, it is pancreatic lipase. It will help in the digestion of fat. Right, it will help in the digestion of fat. The pancreatic lipase, steapsin. Other than that, proteases, you know that. I will take their name. I will discuss it. I will tell you about this. Pancreatic lipase, even the nucleo nucleases are also there the nucleases are also there so pancreatic juices are the complete digestive juices because they have the enzymes which can digest all the possible substrate already future doctor i told you the role of endocrine part in the pancreas kindly uh, kindly check that okay kindly check that done bache now the another important thing bus we are about to finish this part then after that from the ncrt we'll talk about the digestion of substrate so now you just focus here okay <clears throat> now, as I said, to the point we are going to discuss the thing. First of all, let's talk about the gastric glands. Liver, I told you, pancreas, I told you. Now come to the digestive glands. Yes, come here. Come here. I have the table for that. So I'll not write it, just focus here. Okay. See, when you talk about the gastric glands, whenever you talk about the gastric glands means stomach the glands are present in the the glands are present in the mucosa layer so the very first point is mucus cells are there in the gas gaster in the stomach we even call it as goblet cell and you know that they will release the mucus which will lubricate the food right which will lubricate the food isn't it isn't it you know it other than that, when you talk about the gastric glands, we even have G cells in the stomach, which is known as gastri uh, G cells in the stomach. That will release the hormone gastrin, right? That will release the hormone gastrin. And this hormone gastrin is responsible for release of gastric juices. Are you getting my point? It is responsible for release of gastric juices. Are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? This is important, but please note down. Now, what is the next point here? Just listen to me. G cells done, hormones, gastrin, release of gastric juices. Mucus cell, goblet cell, it will release mucus. Very important for the lubrication of food. It is very important for protecting the stomach lining. Done, but other than that, which cells are present here in the stomach? Write down. We have parietal cell. Parietal cell is also known as auxentic cell. Very important, but this parietal cell auxentic cell it is the one which produces it is the one which produces which releases hcl hydrochloric acid it is the one which releases hcl hydrochloric acid what will it release bache huh what will it release hcl hydrochloric acid which cell parietal cell also known as auxentic cell so along with hcl it will also release you know, castle intrinsic gastric factor, right? It will also release castle intrinsic gastric factor, right? Which helps in the absorption of vitamin B12. It is a repeated question, okay? It's a repeated question. It helps in the absorption of vitamin B12. It's a repeated question. Are you getting my point? Right? It's, it's a repeated question. And because of this HCl, the pH of gastric juice is acidic. Because of this HCl. Done, bache. Now, the another important cell in the gastric gland is your peptic cell, also known as chief cell. Bache, they release zymosins. Right? They release zymosins. Now, you must be thinking that, ma'am, what is the meaning of zymosin? Can you tell me in the class? Can you tell me in the chat section? What is the meaning of zymosin? What is the meaning of zymosin? Yes? What is the meaning of zymosin? Tell me. See, what type of students we have? Students, ma'am, speed up. Right? Listen to me. Huh? Listen to me. A little bit of entertainment is also required. Students are like, ma'am, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up. These are the students which 
विच आई डोंट थिंक दे हैव स्टार्टेड एनी थिंग बिफोर बट दे जस्ट वॉन्ट दैट सेटिस्फेक्शन कि मैम वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड द इंटायर सिलेबस इवन इफ दैट टीचर इज टीचिंग नथिंग इवन इफ दैट टीचर इज नॉट इवन टेलिंग द इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स दे आर ओके सो नाउ वेन एवर अ स्टूडेंट इज टेलिंग मी ना कि मैम 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 स्पीड अप देन आई स्टार्ट सेंग लाइक आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस आर यू एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस इफ आई स्टार्ट डूइंग दिस एंड दिस ऑफ कोर्स नॉट this is the basic speed that i'm using and if i'll increase the speed na you will start crying i have to do the something so chill chill today is the day of human physiology 70 plus questions uh 70 plus marks so chill exactly hai na so i i should do like this are you able to understand now anything no come on chill chill and do subscribe our channel ah huh? for such roasting as well do subscribe our channel for such roasting as well no friends i'm just kidding okay chill so let's continue Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, let's continue. Ah, so zymogens. What are we talking? We are talking about the zymogens. So zymogen means inactive form of an enzyme. What is it? It is the inactive form of an enzyme, right? So here, the chief cells and the peptic cells they form proteases. They form the enzymes which are going to digest the protein. But that enzymes are always released in an inactive form. Why is it so? Because if they will be active, they can even digest the protein which is present in extracellular matrix. So this is not good for the body. That is why they are in inactive form. So these zymogens they will be active only when there is the acidic pH whenever it is required. Now the another question that comes in paper is which proteases are present in gastric gland? So the name here is pepsinogen and pro renin and bachche here the renin is having the double n remember this so it is pepsinogen also known as pro pepsin and pro renin renin r e double n i n r e double n i n in kidney it is going to be r e n i n r e n i n here it is r e n n i n double n double n is here so these two proteases are present so such questions used to come in your exam neat exam right okay <coughs> and one more thing in the gastric gland some amount of some amount of gastric lipase is also present although it is negligible although it is negligible uh, negligible but it is still present always remember this thing now answer one question answer one question now see you know a lot so where will the digestion of carbohydrate start now you know the secretions present in saliva where will the digestion of uh, carbohydrate start krutika quick hari kishor answer it hari kishor answer it guys quick 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 in the mouth the digestion of carbohydrate will start but in the mouth we do not have any enzyme for the secretion for the digestion of proteins for the digestion of lipids so obviously in the mouth only the digestion of carbohydrates will be there 30% of the digestion so the food when it gets mixed with the saliva we used to call it as bolus we used to call it as bolus so now bolus will pass down in the stomach now in the stomach the churning will be there right the chemical and mechanical digestion is there the proper churning of food will be there the secretions will get mixed with the food but now in the stomach secretion you have seen we do not have any carbohydrate digestive enzyme digesting enzyme we do not have any carbohydrate digesting enzyme so in the stomach there will be no digestion of carbohydrate there will be no digestion of carbohydrate but there will be the digestion of protein so the protein digestion will viram will start here in the stomach it will start here in the stomach are you getting my point and yes this pro renin is on, only present in the case of infants in the adult pro renin is not there so renin is basically taken from the calf stomach and even from one of the food fruit extracts also right this is it okay this is it this is the important thing done bachche now in the stomach will there be the digestion of carbohydrate no but the protein digestion will start there and one student is asking a question ki how how the stomach secretions are helping in the formation of rbc just remember this thing 
कैसल इंट्रेंसिक गैस्ट्रिक फैक्टर इट हेल्प्स इन द ऑब्जॉर्प्शन ऑफ वाइटमिन बी ट्वेल्व कैसल इंट्रेंसिक गैस्ट्रिक फैक्टर इट हेल्प्स इन द ऑब्जॉर्प्शन ऑफ वाइटमिन बी ट्वेल्व दैट दैट वाइटमिन बी ट्वेल्व इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आरबीसी फॉर्मेशन दैट वाइटमिन बी ट्वेल्व इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर आरबीसी फॉर्मेशन इफ देर इज नो वाइटमिन बी ट्वेल्व आरबीसी शेप विल नॉट बी देर दे विल यू नो दे विल फॉर्म बट देर साइज विल बी टू लार्ज right and that that rbc will rupture immediately so if there is no vitamin b12 pernicious anemia can be there so in this way it is helping in this way it is helping okay 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 bachche then now you know about the pancreatic secretions also and now when it comes to the intestine you know that uh, let me discuss it here then we'll come to the digestion part directly so intestinal juices you know that they are also known as succus entericus succus entericus so they are also alkaline now in the intestine normal goblet cells are there but along with that some other cells are also there like in the intestine you will be discussing paneth cells you will be discussing argentifen cells right i told you already about the bruner's gland which are present in the uh, submucosa right so in the intestinal juices you will see the lysozyme also you will see the enzymes that are going to act on like disaccharides like malt malt maltase sucrase lactase right even nucleotidases nucleosidases such enzymes are present right we'll discuss it we'll discuss it but 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 one more important point that you need to focus is ki which proteases are present in the pancreatic juices now i'm telling you the direct questions line by line direct questions i'm telling you now in the pancreatic juices what will you have you will have chymotrypsinogen again in inactive form chymotrypsinogen trypsinogen and then comes the pro carboxy peptidases right pro carboxy peptidases so these three proteases are in pancreatic juices so in the paper they can ask you which proteases are there in stomach secretion which proteases are there in pancreatic juices now tell me their active forms as well quickly tell me their active forms as well quick 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 just tell me their active forms as well be quick quick everyone in the chat section i want to see your response i want to see your response in the chat section all of you done very good very good so if you know about the secretion the next part is going to be very easy and then uh with the help of that you know uh, and then after that we'll uh, discuss the questions okay okay so focus here yes let's focus here from the ncert only so bachche as i said when it comes to the polysaccharides when it comes to the carbohydrates let's revise it from ncert but majorly let's focus on the carbohydrate you know that right carbohydrates where is that first okay you know that the digestion of carbohydrate will start in stomach and only 30% of the carbohydrate will be digested then it will pass to the stomach no digestion salivary amylase will not work there because of acidic condition then chyme because when food get mixed with acid we used to call it chyme chyme will pass to the small intestine now in the chyme right in the chyme we have the carbohydrate now this carbohydrate will further be hydrolyzed with the help of amylase and it is basically the pancreatic amylase are you getting my point it is basically the pancreatic amylase it is basically the amylopsin what is it it is amylopsin so remaining 70% of the starch will be hydrolyzed here in the small intestine picture is not clear please please manage please open up the ncert if the picture is not clear although i'll write everything here but still open up your ncert okay just open up your ncert done bachche this is now after that 
come to the proteins part so protein proteoses and peptones you know that they are partially hydrolyzed proteins right so you know that it will it, their digestion will start in the stomach where will their digestion start their digestion will start in the stomach so stomach may you know that because of hcl what is going to happen first of all let's say you have the proteins there in the stomach in the stomach let's say you have the protein there so what is going to happen first of all because of hcl your pro renin in the case of infants pro renin will become renin and then the pepsinogen will become pepsin pepsinogen will become pepsin right pepsinogen will become pepsin okay so first of all let's talk about the renin how the renin is going to help firstly let's discuss that but the renin will help in the digestion of milk okay you know that milk protein is casein renin will act on its casein it will coagulate it right it will coagulate it how the renin is going to help renin is present in the infants in the adult renin is not there in our case the milk digestion will be done by the chymotrypsin okay the milk digestion will be done by the chymotrypsin so first of all i am telling you about the protein digestion and protein digestion in the case of stomach so stomach may we have these two proteases because of hcl they will get activated right because of hcl they will get activated now when you talk about the renin it helps in the coagulation it helps in the digestion of milk milk is having the milk protein casein so renin will act on casein it will coagulate it right it will coagulate that milk protein now when that milk protein will this 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 coagulated part when it will join with the calcium it will form calcium para caseinate right initially this coagulated part is para casein so when it will join with the calcium it will form the para caseinate it will form the para caseinate the curd the curd and further further the pepsin is going to act on it further the pepsin is going to act on it and then it will form that proteins and all right it is re double nin it is not re nin it's re double nin re single nin is there in kidney okay so this is how the protein digestion the milk protein digestion will be there in the stomach okay so this cara calcium para casein it is nothing it is the curd what is it it is the curd that is how it helps now you know that then it will pass to the small intestine right small intestine is having everything it is having pancreatic juices it is having the succus entericus it is even having the bile so further that hydrolyzed protein will further be digested there okay they will further be digested here here we have the pancreatic lipases now i think you all can relate it with the screenshots from this ncrt that your proteins peptones or proteases with the help of the trypsin chymotrypsin and carboxypeptides they will get activated they they will they, uh, they will hydrolyze into dipeptide so if there is any doubt here in this reaction just ask me just ask me right just tell me and bache one more important point here right in the small intestine the juice is known as succus entericus here in this juice one very important enzyme is present that is known as enterokinase that is known as enterokinase this enterokinase is a non digestive enzyme what is it it's a non digestive enzyme what is it bache it's a non digestive enzyme this enterokinase is very important if we do not have enterokinase in the intestinal juice then the pancreatic proteases will not get activated are you getting my point pancreatic proteases will not get activated are you getting my point so now this enterokinase it will act on trypsinogen this trypsinogen will be converted to trypsin now this trypsin will show auto catalysis right this trypsin will further activate another trypsinogens are you getting my point this this reaction is important bachche it will further activate another trypsinogens this trypsin will further convert another protease into their active form so yes question can come from these reactions as well okay question can come from these reactions as well you can write down so with the help of this trypsin chymotrypsinogen will again form chymotrypsin this 
pro carboxy peptide is will become carboxy peptide so that is how these enzymes will get activated so here the key enzyme is enterokinase present in succus entericus any doubt yes any doubt any doubt tell me quickly any doubt oh my god my students are running out of energy after two marathons it is very difficult to attend biology marathon even if it is for the human physiology okay got it so this point is important this point is important fine this point is important right so this question can be asked in paper fine so rest you can see these enzymes will digest the proteins dipeptide uh, di dipeptides will form further succus entericus will help help and when it comes to the fats bachche so fats may you know that lipases will help but how before that what is going to happen emulsification okay emulsification will be done you know that large fat droplets large fat droplets they will be converted into small fat droplets and then your pancreatic lipases and intestinal lipases will act so bile salts which bile which contain uh, which contains no enzymes but it is only having the salts it is only having the salts okay so large fat droplets they will be emulsified small fat droplets then firstly your pancreatic lipase that is steapsin will act on it it will break it into the simpler form obviously then the intestinal lipase so this this reaction is the key word here key reaction here so bile contain no enzyme it is just having the salt sodium torocolate sodium glycocolate sodium bicarbonate like this okay like this just just a minute let me finish this then we'll go for the lunch together it's okay 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 so you can see the reactions here further in small intestine fats lipases diglycerides then comes the monoglycerides clear bachche nucleic acid nucleases will form nucleotides then nucleosides so do you have any doubt here do you have any doubt here ha huh, i i i like this i like this appro approach right i like this approach ma'am even our digestive enzymes are very active and the, now they need the food even i am hungry it's okay let's finish it let's finish it and then then we'll go for the lunch together is is that okay just give me 10 more minutes let's finish this chapter let's practice the questions and then only the important from uh, breathing and exchange let's talk about the mechanism of breathing let's talk about the transport of gases and let's talk about the capacities then from next chapter let's talk about the nodal tissue let's talk about the ecg like this we'll move ahead okay done so so can we start this part so here you can see for the dipeptidases dipeptides dipeptidases from small intestine will act amino acid will form maltose maltase will be there yes but this is the thing that i would like to mention here listen to me very carefully whenever students they revise bio molecules they always used to say ki why uh, why do such questions come in exam ki lactose is what lactose is made up of what see these reactions are given here in the digestion and absorption maltase maltose is also known as malt sugar germinating sugar made up of two glucose lactose the milk sugar it is right the milk sugar it is so lactose lactase will act on it present in small intestine glucose and galactose will form glucose and galactose will form then comes the sucrose which is also known as invert sugar which is also known as fruit sugar are you getting my point so sucrase there will be sucrase the glucose and fructose will be formed so these are the reactions that you need to remember okay okay then see nucleotides nucleotidases nucleosides nucleosidases sugar plus base will be there di and monoglyceride lipase then comes the fatty acids plus glycerol okay so reactions are important and yes there is one more table for all of you and this is the table this is the table which will simplify the fat absorption see you know that in the case of fats because we cannot directly absorb the fats in the case of fat the 
digestion and the absorption is little different. First of all, there will be emulsification. We are going to break the large fat droplets into the simpler one. But how? You can just check it out. In the small intestine, when these fats, they will be emulsified into small droplets, bile salts are going to cover that small droplets. Do you know that? Right? Bile salts are going to cover that small droplets. Just have a look. This is the emulsified. This diagram is literally, literally very good. Okay, just, just focus here. This diagram is literally very good. Just see this. Emulsified fat droplets. See, the triglycerides are present here and the bile salts are covering it. Right, bile salts are covering it and here you can see how the fats are arranging itself. This is a measle formation. It is the measle formation. What is it? It is the measle formation. All the things are taking place in the lumen of the small intestine. So, see, bile salts are covering these triglycerides, right? The, the triglycerides are arranged in such a way they are forming this spherical structure. We are calling it as measle. We are calling it as measle. Then, bache, what is going to happen over it? Lipase will act. Your pancreatic lipase will act. When pancreatic lipase will act, again it will break it. Small, small lipids will directly diffuse here, will directly enter in the small intestine cell. And what about other? You can see. You can see. The triglycerides are broken down by lipase into fatty acid and monoglyceride. These small lipids along with cholesterol, they form the measles. Right? So, first of all, we have the emulsified small droplets. Bile salts are going to cover it. Then lipases are going to act on it. When the word is measles, always remember measles are water soluble. Always remember measles are water soluble. This is what you need to remember. Measles are water soluble. Fats are not. But measles are water soluble. This is important. Measles are water soluble. Okay. So, these measles, right, when these measles will form, they are capable of entering into the, right, they are capable of entering into these cells here, these intestinal cells here. Again, they will break, right, again they will get some protein coating, they will form chylomicrons. Do you remember this word? Chylomicrons. They are also the fat soluble, sorry, they are also the water soluble. Right. So, here you can see, right, when these small lipids along with cholesterol vitamins, they form the measles, right, they are greatly enlarged. Small lipids, they will leave the measles and diffuse into the epithelial cell. This is the way of absorption. This is the way of absorption. Okay. So, epithelial cells, in the epithelial cells of the small intestine, you can have a look. When these cells, right, when these cells, they will enter, na? when these cells, they will enter here in these cell, uh, in these intestinal cells these when these fat when this fat will enter here in the intestinal cell again it will reform again it will reform are you getting my point so you can see it there so basically for the uh, fat absorption lacteals are going to help the lymph vessel okay the lymph vessels are going to help directly we cannot say that ki fat will be uh, absorbed by the intestinal cells no the lipids uh, the lymph vessels the lacteals are going to help you can see it okay you can see it here done bache so when these fatty acids and monoglycerides when they will enter these intestinal cells they will again reform golgi apparatus will help in that right again they will be covered with some proteins we are calling them as chylomicrons and that chylomicrons will further leave the intestinal cells they will enter here in lacteals and then to the blood they will pass. So, if there is any doubt here in, uh, in this particular fat absorption part, do let me know. So, what you have to remember, even mice, uh, the, even these measles are water soluble, even these chylomicrons are water soluble, right? So, measles will enter here in the intestinal cells, here they will reform, right? Right, here they will reform, basically with the help of that measle like structure, now fats will enter here in the intestinal cell, they will reform some proteins are going to coat these fats again, right? We are calling it as chylomicron. Chylomicron will leave intestinal cell. It will enter in the lacteals. That's how it will. Okay? Okay? So, see here. Again, we have the same diagram. The emulsification, the measles will enter here in intestinal cell, reform chylomicron here. So, this, this slide is going to help. Fine? This slide is going to help. Done, bache. Bache, measles will form in the divyansh intestinal lumen when that emulsified fat is covered with the bile salts and they are arranged them in a such a circular sort of way, in a water resistant way. Uh, they will arrange themselves in such a way like this. 
these are measles so measles will enter here in intestinal cell when these mes with the help of that small fat small lipids will enter here in intestinal cell when they will covered with the proteins then you are calling it as chylomicron and chylomicron will further enter in lacticles so chylomicron will form here in intestinal cell this is how you you can differentiate them okay okay so anything done done so it will help in revising the entire topic that's all so now answer few question and then the chapter will be over so which of the following takes up fatty acid and glycerol okay which of the following takes up fatty acid and glycerol first from the elementary canal answer it bache shweta just read it once you will get it Ah, protein coated fat globules are your chylomicrons but when lipids they are arranging themselves in a spherical form plus bile salt is also there these are the measles exactly so lymph vessels next which of the following is not a proteolytic enzyme which of the following is not a proteolytic enzyme not a proteolytic enzyme tell me not a proteolytic enzyme Yes, what should be the correct answer here? Here the answer is steapsin. Steapsin is what? Steapsin is what? It's a lipase. It's a lipase. Next, the end product of carbohydrate digestion are the end product of carbohydrate digestion are the end product of carbohydrate digestion are end product. So it is going to be. glucose galactose fructose because all of them are monomers here bachche in this option sucrose is a disaccharide right maltose is a disaccharide so that is why a is the correct option here okay a is the correct option here so one more question okay answer answer one more question answer this question what does gastric juice not contain what does gastric juice not contain what does gastric juice not contain bache in the mouth nothing ji it's not lyso see lysozyme is antimicrobial antibacterial it is an enzyme it is an enzyme and when you use the word lysosome it is an organelle fully loaded with the hydrolytic enzymes so these are two different things gastric juices they do not contain amylase they have some amount of lipase renin is also there proteases are there but amylase is not there okay now ha digestion of nucleic acid you know that rna dna they are made up of nucleotide so pancreatic nucleases deoxyribonucleases ribonucleases will act they will break it into nucleotides so nucleotide nucleosidase right from the small intestine they will act on it nitrogenous base sugar and phosphates will be separated and this is how they will be absorbed so the pdf will be provided for the quick revision okay bachche PDF will definitely be provided for the quick revision, and here you can see the summary of absorption from NCERT, bache. So when it comes to the maximum water absorption, large intestine, and here you can see in mouth certain drugs, right, which will come with the uh, mucosa, in contact with the mucosa, they will be digested, and some drugs they are kept, you know, below the tongue. they get digested because below the tongue also abundant water uh, abundant blood supply is there right in the stomach the absorption of water simple sugar and alcohol takes place so it is also a pyq alcohol absorption is going to take place in the alcohol in the stomach small intestine principal organ for absorption of nutrients you know it very well complete digestion will occur here and even the maximum absorption will occur here so whether it is the glucose it is the fructose it is the fatty acid glycerol amino acid they all will be absorbed here one more thing bachche it's a pyq do you know glut4 transporter 
there is one GLUT4 transporter which is present over the cell. It helps in the transport of glucose within the cell, right? There are GLUT4 transporters also which are present on the cells, right? These are the carrier proteins basically. They also help in the movement of glucose. I will not go in the depth. It's a PYQ, just mark it like this. And in large intestine, the water absorption, some minerals and drugs take place. Okay? 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 Achha, do you know what is it? Do you know what is it? Huh? One fun question. One most ignorant question. I'm going to tell you now. I know you are hungry when I'm hungry. Huh? It is the most ignored question. Do you know? Do you know it? Do you know anything about the calorific value? Most of the time now we ignore this part and question used to come from this part. Okay. Calorific value of protein, carbohydrate and fat. For this you just need to read this particular paragraph. It will just take one minute. See, the energy requirement of animals and the un energy content of food, you know that we measure it in the form of heat energy. Right. We measure it in the form of heat energy. You know, na, heat is the ultimate form of all energies. So, we used to say ki whatever food we are taking, ultimately heat energy will be produced. Right. Heat energy will be produced. So, we can even measure it as the calorie or joule, right, which is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. We, 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 we have no need to focus here. Here simply they are mentioning ki whatever energy will be liberated by food, it is in the form of heat energy because heat is the ultimate form of energy and how are we defining it? We are saying that the amount of heat energy which is required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius, we are calling it as calorie or joule, right? This is mentioned here. Now, what is the point that you need to focus? See. Here it is clearly mentioned that this value is the very less amount of energy. Physiologists commonly use kilocalorie or kilojoule. Means whenever they will ask you the energy which is really, really, uh, released from the food, you have to focus on this unit, kilojoule or kilocalories. Kilocalories or kilojoule. Okay. So, 1 kilocalorie is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature. Again, we have nothing to do with it. With it. What we need to focus here? This part this part this is the part where we need to focus we have two words one is the calorific value another is the physiological value one is the calorific value another is the physiological value out of this box this is something important for your question for your mcq first word is gross calorific value which is calorific value and another is physiological value there are two scenarios basically just let's say you have decided that you people are going to study for 10 hours right you have decided that you people are going to study for 10 hours just imagine you have decided that you are going to study for 10 hours right but actually you are studying for just 7 hours are you getting my point you are just studying for 7 hours same as the case here right here in this particular paragraph what you need to focus this part there are two things. One is the calorific value, another is the physiological value. When it is the calorific value, the expected value of heat energy that, that will be released from the food, like the timetable that you people have made, the timetable that you people have made, right? So, gross calorific value of carbohydrate, protein and fat. This is what you need to remember. When it is carbohydrate, 4.1 kilocalorie per gram. When it is protein, 5.1. 65 kilocalorie and when it is the fat 9.45 kilocalorie right but when it comes to the physiological value the actual energy that will be produced by these respiratory uh, these digestive substrates in our body is the physiological value what is calorific value the value which is expected to come out the physiological value the actual value the actual value are you getting my point so physiological value is for carbohydrate 4 kilocalorie per gram for proteins it is 4 kilocalorie and again so, uh, for fats it is 9 kilocalorie this is what you need to remember so now what type of question can come in the neat exam they can ask you what will be the calorific value of the see in the question let's say they are asking calorific value so what will be the calorific value of 10 gram of carbohydrate what should be your answer anyone in the class i'm asking the calorific value of 10 gram of carbohydrate 
calorific value of 10 gram of carbohydrate. Quickly answer the question in the chat section guys. Bache, I will ask Vaseem sir and HSP sir for the PDF. Okay. See how to find it. Calorific value is 4.1. So, here 4.1, 4.1 into 10, right? 4.1 into 10. So, what should be the answer here? You have to find out the calorific value of what? You have to find, uh, huh. you have to find out the calorific value of 10 gram of carbohydrate. You know it about for the 1 gram. So, what should be the answer exactly? Exactly. 41, right. So, 4.1 into 10 we have to do. So, obviously 41 will be the answer, right. 41 kilojoule will be the answer, isn't it? Isn't it? Now, let's say I am asking for the physiological value. Now, let's say I am asking for the physiological value of 10 gram of carbohydrate. So, what should be your answer? Physiological value is 4, right. So, 4 into 10, so it is going to be 40 kg, kg, done, done. So, this is what you need to find out the calorific value and the physiological value. The calorific value and physiological value, this is what you need to remember, that is all. So, the next chapter, Baki, yes, while revising something from the NCRT, do check the summary. I have added it today, right, you should check it. Like, if you will read the summary, na, if you people will read the summary, you will be able to revise the entire chapter. So, this is the quick way to revise something, okay. So, just go for it. Done. Then, Baki disorders are also mentioned here, but uh, disorder for disorders, either I will keep one separate session or you have to revise it by your own because disorders are important. So, here you can see jaundice, it is when the liver is not functioning properly, right, liver is affected, skin and eyes, they turn yellow, vomiting, you know that, ejection of stomach content, diarrhea, the watery stools will be there. In the diarrhea, na, abnormal frequency of oval movement is there and when it is constipation again but in constipation that peristaltic movements will be slow will be less in diarrhea they will increase they will be too much okay okay so next chapter is breathing and exchange of gases so here the mechanism of breathing the capacities and the transport these are the three topics that we are going to cater okay okay so we'll do it after a break so as of now it's 1.45 to 2 p.m. There will be a break. Okay. We will start at 2. We will start at 2. Fine. The class is going to... See, this marathon will, will be for 10 hours. Okay. And in 10 hours, we have to complete all the important topics from this particular chapter, especially from neural control and coordination, especially from locomotion and movement. So, you have to be patient. Okay. You will get breaks in between. Don't worry. Ha, Kwashiorkar and Marasmus, you are going to revise. Very easy. It is directly from NCRT. Any other doubts you people are having, just ask me. And if you are new to our channel here, please subscribe. Even if you are not, do share this channel with others. Only 15 minutes. Are it's 15 minutes. It's not only 15 minutes. Thanks, Krisma. Oh my God. Wow. After after the session, just comment all that things in the comment section. Na? Till 2. Okay. So, I'll come later. Till then, you guys can enjoy your break. Bye-bye. At least till 2 5. Okay. The break will be till 2 5. Okay. Happy? Call Vaseem sir. Vaseem sir is not here. Otherwise, he would have disturbed me. Thank God he's not here. Thank God. Thank you, Viram. He'll come and he'll start disturbing me. So I'm happy he's not here. Please complete genetics. Surely I will. Anything else? Chalo. Enjoy your break.
Hi. Am I audible? Audible? Am I audible? Good afternoon. Hello. Am I audible now? Hi everyone. Welcome back after the break. I hope you all are done with your lunch. Hana. Now we will have one more break for tea only. Okay. Okay. So can we start the next chapter? Can we start the next chapter? We started the session with 900 plus students and now just 300 plus students are there. What about, what about other students? Huh? What about other students? What is the issue? You don't want to study biology? Huh? You people don't want to study biology? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Extra break, huh? Now you people are not going to ask for break. We will have one tea break only. Okay. Let's finish this chapter one tea break. Then one more chapter one tea break. Okay. So today we have to finish it. We have to finish it. We should. So if you are attending, see, you should have only one agenda that today I am going to revise human physiology in this way that uh, there that neat exam is there on, on Sunday. Okay. That will be better. Okay, so just just share the link with other students also and tell them that join the session ma'am has started it and now we are going to target the most important topics of this particular chapter. So all of you all of you just share the link call your friends call your friends quickly. Basics in locomotion and neural Akash I will I will don't worry about that. Okay, so can we start now? So do share the link with others guys. Let them know that I have started the class and now the next chapter that we have to start it breathing and exchange of gases. You know that for that we have the lungs. Okay, what do we have? We have the lungs. Lungs are the main, the primary, the respiratory, lungs are the respiratory organs in our case. See, there is one. Hmm. Remember one thing, there is one thing that that is known as direct respiration one thing is indirect respiration I'll start from the basic just a minute one word is direct respiration and the another word is indirect respiration now what is the meaning of that see whenever there is the exchange of gases in between the like say there is a direct exchange see this is the blood just take one example this is the blood this is the surrounding Whenever there is direct exchange like this, whenever there is direct exchange, direct respiration, whenever there is no involvement of any special respiratory organ, then it is the direct respiration. Even in the case of orthropods, do you remember the example of cockroach? Yes, but do, do you remember the example of cockroach? In the case of cockroach, if you remember, we have hemolymph. What do we have in the case of cockroach? We have hemolymph hemolymph but in the case of cockroach this hemolymph is playing no role no role in the exchange of gases in the case of cockroach directly air will enter from the spiracles with the help of that tracheal tubes it will get exchanged with the tissue with the diffusion isn't it isn't it so in the direct respiration there is no involvement of special respiratory structure there is no involvement of blood like this but when it is indirect obviously there is involvement so if i talk about the humans what type of respiration do we have direct or indirect of course it is indirect of course it is indirect isn't it bache isn't it so this is something important that you people should know Maggie, you know that we have the pair of lungs, lungs are placed in thoracic cavity and here when you talk about the lungs, the right lung is shorter and broader. When you talk about the long left lung, it is narrower and longer and whenever you talk about the space which is present in between these two lungs, it is known as mediastinum. What is it? It is mediastinum and your heart is placed here. Your heart is placed here. Okay, what is placed here? Your heart is placed here. Okay, so you know the pathway here also. First of all, we start. First of all, we start from external nostril. From where do we start? We start from external nostril. Then comes the nasal cavity, nasal chamber. 
right then comes the internal nares and then you know that we have the pharynx we just discussed it isn't it we have the pharynx and here we have nole nasopharynx oropharynx laryngopharynx nasopharynx oropharynx laryngopharynx and laryngopharynx will leads into the larynx which so opening of larynx is known as opening of larynx is known as yes bachche anuradha saira study with fun himanshi mohana opening of larynx is known as opening of larynx is known as yes opening of larynx is known as anyone in the class what do you understand by that opening of larynx that is the glottis that is the glottis and whenever we swallow the food epiglottis is going to cover that so always revise this right always revise it done bachche done bachche okay okay so larynx then you know that it will leads into the trachea and then primary bronchi secondary tertiary bronchioles are there alveolar duct and alveoli the basic it is it is very basic we are going to target the most important topics here in this particular topic so this is just an overview for the basic terms okay this is just an overview for the basic term see i have added few diagrams for you this is the respiratory tree just look at this hyoid bone hyoid bone it is also known as tongue bone it is the u shaped bone right it is not articulating with any other bone now you look at this larynx part larynx is the cartilaginous box right remember larynx it is the cartilaginous box we even call it as voice box it is having some folds true folds false folds are there okay which produces the sound when we expire so see the thyroid gland here then comes the trachea primary bronchi secondary tertiary right tertiary bronchi then comes the terminal bronchi then comes the bronchioles bachche bronchioles okay then comes what then comes the bronchiole acha capto is here see i was waiting for you guys ah huh? i always disturb you people in your classes and you people are not here with me श्रेयसर कट्टी श्रेयसर कट्टी हाँ नो ना बट श्रेयसर कट्टी आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर यू पीपल हियर सो दैट्स वॉट आई कैन डू नाउ हाँ फोकस हियर एवरी वन वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू डॉक्ट टू एम नाउ फोकस हियर if you are my student and no need to talk to them focus here chalo so th this is the arrangement basically so you know that when when it comes to the primary site for the exchange of gases primary site for the exchange of gases these balloon like structure alveoli are present right these balloon like structure alveoli are present and you know that these alveoli are going to have the abundant blood supply right this is the primary site where exchange of gases is going to occur where exchange of gases is going to occur so always remember bachche when it is breathing it is the first step of respiration where there is only the exchange of gases when it comes to the exchange of gases obviously diffusion is the key here we'll see the we'll see the <coughs> pressure differences basically now we are going to talk about that when it comes to the respiration respiration is the entire process in the respiration there is the oxidation of food basically there is the oxidation of food basically are you getting it are you getting it so this is what we need to understand now what do you want to do you want to start from the basics or you want to start the most important topics now you tell me in this chapter what do you people want to do what do you people want to do what do you guys want tell me quickly in the chat section has expected most predicted topics right are if i'm going to teach you the most predicted topics now again i'll touch the basics don't worry about that so if you want that then show some energy here now just focus here just focus here okay just focus here so now let's start from the let's start from the very 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 important topic of this chapter so i want you guys to focus here share the video link with others bachche tell your friends that attend the session ma'am is going to take important topics only 
important topics only so now for just focus here so we are talking about the respiration in which there is basically the breakdown of carbohydrate that will release the energy so it's a you know multi step process it's not a one step process plus enzymes are involved there as of now we are talking about the breathing we will learn how that exchange of gases will occur even we will learn all the phenomena that will take place in this particular process so the very first step you know that it is breathing also known as pulmonary uh, ventilation then diffusion of gases in between alveoli and blood capillaries then the gases needs to be transported then the exchange will be there in the blood and tissue and finally oxygen will be used by the cells right right it is known as the cellular respiration oxygen will be utilized by the cell they will break down the glucose the energy will be released this is going to happen so the very first topic that we should understand here is the mechanism of breathing okay the very first and the important topic that we need to understand here is the mechanism of breathing what we need to understand first here we need to understand the mechanism of breathing and if you want to understand this particular topic you should know about the boyle's law what do you people should know you people should know about the boyle's law can you tell me in the chat section what do you understand by the boyle's law yes but show guys energy energy can you tell me something about the boyle's law yes can you tell me something about the boyle's law do you know anything about the boyle's law alia this is basics as well please listen to me carefully ha huh? boyle's law see very first thing that you people need to understand is that volume and pressure they are inversely proportional to each other what you need to understand here that volume and pressure they are inversely proportional to are inversely proportional to each other what is it it is inversely proportional to each other are you getting my point are you getting my point this is the very first thing that you need to understand now the second point that you need to understand see our lungs are present in the thoracic cage i am teaching you point by point our lungs are present in the thoracic cage now in that thoracic cage if you will look dorsally dorsally you have vertebral column isn't it dorsally you have vertebral column now when you talk about the ventral side ventrally sternum is there sternum is there and ribs are there ventrally and laterally you know that sternum and ribs are there isn't it ribs are there and bachche posteriorly diaphragm is present here isn't it posteriorly diaphragm is present here yes or no bachche yes or no posteriorly what is present diaphragm is present so our lungs are present in an air tight chamber but you are lungs are present in such a way our lungs are present in such a way that if there is any change in the thoracic volume of thoracic chamber guys this is something very important it is from ncrt after the class you can even check ncrt whatever lines i am using right now everything is written in your book right everything is written in your book so please listen to me very carefully so what am i saying i am telling you about the thoracic cage i am mentioning you here all the points that how your thoracic cage is covered now the point here is just look at this diagram just look at this diagram your lungs are present somewhere here and your lungs are present in such a way that if there is any change in overall thoracic cavity it is going to change it is going to change the volume of lungs as well if there is any change in the volume of thoracic cavity there will be a change in the volume of lungs as well you know that bachche when it comes to the lungs right when it comes to the lungs right lungs are bilobed spongy organs you know that in the case of lungs we are having the membranes you know that we are having the membrane in the case of lung we are having the outer pleural membrane we are having the inner pleural membrane in between we are having the fluid as well which will avoid the lubrication you know that now next to it here you are having the lungs right next to it here you are having the lungs so all that setup is present within this thoracic cage all that setup is present within this thoracic cage the first point is clear the first point is clear now here <coughs> here uh, what we need to focus now now we know the boyle's law 
which is saying ki volume and pressure is inversely proportional to each other now we want to breathe in we want to breathe in you know that when it comes to breathing there will be the inhalation also known as uh, also known as inspiration there will be the exhalation also known as expiration but how to achieve that right this is what we need to learn so now after this the third topic that you need to form uh, focus is inspiration inspiration what you need to focus you need to focus on this inspiration now understand this thing first of all you know that ribs are present like you know that ribs are present let's say these are the ribs let's say these are the ribs understand this thing bachche question will definitely come from this part right rajni please focus here right if you people will attend my session if you will revise everything properly then you just need to solve the questions okay okay you will be able to solve questions in the final neat paper as well but as of now please focus here and whatever question i'm asking please answer it in the chat section right please answer it in the chat section now what are we talking we are talking about the mechanism of breathing these are the basics that we know already now we are talking about the inspiration so before understanding the inspiration bachcho before understanding the inspiration focus on this part see these are the ribs i told you our lungs are present in this thoracic cage so we have the ribs here so now see in between these ribs in between these ribs you are having some muscles and we used to call them as intercostal muscles what we used to call it we used to call it as intercostal muscles what we used to call it we used to call it as intercostal muscles is that clear is that clear which muscles do we have intercostal muscles where do we have these muscles we have these muscles in between these ribs right in between these ribs we are we are having the muscles and we are calling it as intercostal muscle what is the name of the muscle what is the name of the muscles intercostal muscles right intercostal muscle now imagine one thing just look at this i have the uh, i have these two arms right i have these two arms now in between these two arms just have a look in between these two arms this black this black colored pen take it as a take it as the example of muscle let's say this is one rib this is another rib now here what do you have you have the muscles you have the muscles right you have the muscles what do you have here you have the muscles now bachche if you if you will look from the external side then it will be the external intercostal muscle if you will look from the internal side it will be the internal costal muscle so many times students they get confused here the muscles present in between ribs that muscles are intercostal muscles right when you talk about the external side then it will be the external intercostal muscle and when you talk about the muscles which are present in towards inner side they are internal intercostal muscle so tell me any doubt from this part yes any doubt from this part are you getting uh, the meaning of external and internal and intercostal muscle are you clear with it yes yes so muscles present in between ribs intercostal if they are present on external side external intercostal if they are present on internal side internal intercostal this is the first point now another important muscle that you need to discuss is diaphragm diaphragm bachche diaphragm also contain peripheral muscles right in the case of diaphragm diaphragm is also having the peripheral muscles right diaphragm is also having what diaphragm is having the peripheral muscle the worst question the very first question the very first question the very first question here is in the case of inspiration they used to ask you which muscles are the inspiratory muscles but before that obviously you need to understand this portion so what am i saying i am saying in between ribs yes we have the muscle one is the diaphragm now how these things are helping in inspiration how these things are helping in inspiration that is what you need to understand see bachche if volume will go up pressure will be low if pressure will go up volume will be low right you always come obviously they know you obviously they know you they don't want to study inspiration and expiration they just want some masala right now what what 
No, you come here. What's up? Hello. Good afternoon. See, there is one student. He is saying that we are playing with <coughs> people's emotion. You tell me how? How are we playing? I don't know. है ना? See, we were teaching on another platform. We are teaching on this platform. We are teaching free of course. Then how are we playing? You tell me please. <laughs> Psychology. <laughs> Physiology. Oh, physiology. <laughs> so, what's up? How's everything going, guys? All well? Ma'am, you are teaching something on increasing the pressure, volume, decreases. Ah, ah, I just ah, want to see it. Chalo, I'll tell you. Ah. See, what is happening basically? Okay. You know that we want to inhale. Hmm. Achha, you tell me if we want to inhale something, what will we take? You Which teach. gas? <laughs> you teach. You teach. See, when it comes to the inspiration, just listen to me. Ah, huh? inspiration is also inspiration. known as in inhalation. We want to take the oxygen in, right? We want the oxygen to be inside now we want to take it in our lungs just imagine this triangular structure is our lungs just imagine that so how can we take it it depends upon the boyle's law what we have to do it depends out, on the boyle's law yeah oh yes it's my part now wait <laughs> see 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 listen to me listen to me see outside outside if the pressure is high outside means in environment if the pressure of air is high so Only gases will only enter within the lungs if the pressure here will be low. So what we have to do here, we need to increase the volume of lungs okay. so that pressure will come down. Okay. Right, outside pressure is more than high pressure to low pressure. You know that along with the concentration gradient, yeah. it is going to come. So this is how it, this is going to work. So but the point here is how can we reduce the pressure when we want to inhale mm -hmm. oxygen? This is the question. Okay. And how can we do that with the help of muscles? Now, shoot, listen to me. We have inspiratory muscles here. What do we have here? Tell me. Inspiratory muscles. <coughs> muscles which are which are going to contract in inspiration. And do you know the name of that muscles? No. External intercostal muscle. I'll teach you one dance step also. Mm -hmm. External intercostal muscle and the diaphragm muscles. Okay, these are the two muscles which are considered as inspiratory muscles, and this is a PYQ of course. And why are we calling it as inspiratory muscle? Because these muscles will undergo contraction. During inspiration, and the contraction of this muscle will result in reducing the pressure and increasing the volume. Basically, volume will be increased because of the movement of this muscle. See how? I'll teach you. Now come, all of you, just listen to me very carefully. This is how diaphragm is present. Do it. I'll teach you. You have to keep your phone. See, <laughs> everyone, listen to me. Diaphragm. Jesus. Yes. I mean, when <coughs> normally diaphragm is placed like this, mm -hmm. it is dome shaped. Okay, it is dome shaped. Do it. When diaphragm muscles will contract, diaphragm will become flat. One dance step. So do it together. Oh, nice. <laughs> so whenever the diaphragm muscles will contract, initially the diaphragm is dome shaped. It will become flat. So can I not say that? See, because this muscle initially it was like this, right? Mm -hmm. Now if it will get contracted, the shape will be. Yes, correct. So don't you think that towards this anterior posterior axis the volume will increase? Mm -hmm. Right now the another point, external intercostal muscles they are present in between ribs, so they will contract, they will move our rib cage like this outward oh. upward. Okay, so now what oh, we have right. to do? Come. You can. <laughs> it's a it's a good time. I cannot do it, yar. Just give it a try. Just give it a try. Wait, I cannot do it. What? See. Okay. One dance step and then outward upward. Wait, this this out do like keep it. Diaphragm muscle is like that. Mm -hmm. It will contract. Mm -hmm. It will become flat. Okay. Done. Done. External intercostal muscle is like that. Okay. When it will contract, it mm -hmm. will move rib cage upward outside. Okay. Upward outside. Got it. Upward outside. <laughs> do it. Do it. Give it a try. <laughs> Give it a try. Ah, so wait. This is flat now. Huh. Right now. This. Huh. Now this. So obviously, if it will go like that, so that. Uh, Dorsal and ventral axis volume will also increase. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, there will be increase in volume. Yes, so the pressure correct. will come down. So the air from outside will come in. Can I con can I confuse st confuse the students a bit? <laughs> can I confuse students a bit? Yeah. Korean drama scene. You guys are going to let me know its answer in the comments. Okay, afterwards. See, ma'am is like or see pressure. We know as for Boyle's law is inversely proportional to volume, right? But we know Boyle's law is valid only under certain conditions. That is, moles and temperatures should be constant. It should not change yes. moles of the gas. Hmm. So you are basically inhaling the air, right? 
correct so amount of gas is changing basically hmm. amount of gas is increasing but boyle's law is only valid when the number of moles of the gas are kept fixed here we this are going is, this is, no 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 you huh? are not going to tell this this is their homework they are going to let me know okay. afterwards in my chemistry session acha by the way tomorrow we have got one more marathon class 11th chemistry complete you, class 11th you chemistry you came here to promote your yes. marathon <laughs> you came here to promote your that's why acha theek hai uh just order one cup of tea or filter coffee for me okay i'll do that kahan se order karna i don't know ask your agent send it here okay guys catch up tomorrow or maybe afterwards let her teach let her teach okay this speak <laughs> psychology girl <laughs> bye take it okay chalo bye <coughs> done done so that is how you have to remember it jokes apart listen to me very carefully This is exactly how the inspiration is going to occur. You know it very well, bache. Outside, if the pressure is high, and within the lungs, if the pressure will be low, then only air will come in. So, if we have to, if we have to lower, ha, pressure is low, then obviously volume is going to high because this is as per the Boyle's law. So, what you re- need to remember here, that when it comes to the inspiration, we have external intercostal muscle, peripheral muscles. Both the muscles will contract, bache. Both the muscles will contract. When your peripheral muscle contract, your diaphragm will become flat. Your diaphragm will become flat. So obviously there will be an increase in the volume towards anterior posterior axis, isn't it? Towards anterior posterior axis, isn't it? And when your external intercostal muscles will contract, then what is going to happen? Dorsal just a minute ah uh-huh. it will increase the volume towards dorso ventral axis isn't it towards dorso ventral axis isn't it so overall there is an increase in volume so the pressure will come down and the air will come in so isn't it like this dance step die from earlier dome shaped inspiration flat inspiration flat inspiration flat and when it is the external intercostal muscle earlier your rib cage was like this when external intercostal muscle will contract it will go out upward out upward out upward isn't it easy it it looks like a dance step so this is what you have to do in neat exam when the question will come okay this is what you need to do in neat exam when the question will come okay so one more point that you need to mention here is inspiration is an active process inspiration is an active process energy will be taken energy will be there okay energy will be used done so up to this part all clear and one more thing that we discuss here in the case of uh, breathing we always used to mention that there will be the partial pressure what will be here bache partial pressure like we are going to inhale the oxygen so we will say partial pressure of oxygen why is it so because air is a air is a mixture of gases and out of that mixture we are going to take only one gas right we are going to inhale the oxygen we are considering the pressure of only one gas we are considering the pressure of only that particular gas so it will be the partial pressure right bache it will be the partial pressure clear 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 so you like this dance wala trick do you like this dance wala trick in the studio na ac it is not functional ha huh? do you like this so obviously then 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 one like and one subscribe should be there one like one subscribe should be there okay okay so just focus here fine just focus here bache akshansh why are you distracting other students here bache why are you distracting other students here why what is the need are you getting money for doing that ha huh? i'm teaching here i was teaching on another platform also right so that is my personal choice where i want to teach who are you to comment here jaan na pehchan main tera mehman hai na matlab unnecessarily are we just want attention what will we do for attention we'll spam in the chat section seriously seriously stop spamming let them let them study let them study so any doubt here any doubt here 
is that clear so inspiratory muscle inspiration is active process it is important so if outside pressure is more within the lungs the pressure is going to be less so there will be the negative intrapulmonary pressure right there will be the negative intrapulmonary pressure negative intrapulmonary pressure isn't it isn't it bache done okay so this is all about the inspiration now let's focus here on the expiration right the next is what next is expiration so when you people talk about expiration the very first point that you need to remember is it is the passive process the another point that is going to take place in expiration is volume is going to be this time volume is going to be low and the pressure will increase so lungs may what will be the pressure the pressure will be more right intrapulmonary pressure will be positive or you can say that intrapulmonary pressure will be more are you getting my point are you getting my point and what is the third point that you need to remember here here your external intercostal muscle external intercostal muscle and your diaphragm muscle and your diaphragm muscle what will it do it will undergo relaxation right it will undergo relaxation okay so again the volume will come down again the volume will come down isn't it isn't it isn't it now i have one more spammer here in my chat वसीम भट्ट है ना चलो सो दिस इज वॉट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर एंड वन मोर थिंग बच्चे वेन एवर देयर इज ना फोर्सफुल एक्सपीरेशन वेन एवर देयर इज फोर्सफुल एक्सपीरेशन फोर्सफुल एक्सपीरेशन एट दैट टाइम फोर्सफुल एक्सपीरेशन इज एक्टिव एट दैट टाइम योर एबडोमिनल मसल्स आर ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व राइट एट दैट टाइम योर एबडोमिनल मसल्स आर गोइंग टू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट राइट योर एबडोमिनल मसल्स आर गोइंग टू contract and even the external internal intercostal muscles also done bachche so any doubt from this particular topic the another thing that you people need to remember is the diagram okay this is the diagram you people need to remember so just look at the position of the arrows diaphragm contracted it will come down it will become flat this is how the air. ribs and sternum will be raised so this dance step is going to help you out this dance step is going to help you out and here just look at the expiration opposite thing will occur so if there is any doubt from this particular topic just ask me g prathmakesh thank you so much bachche now please focus here whenever there is forceful forceful at that time abdominal muscle will contract forceful expiration is bachche it is active okay done done sure okay now the next topic is about the capacities but before that just answer this question next topic is about the capacities and i will give you one trick for the capacities okay i'll give you one trick for the capacities now answer this question all of you just answer this question go for it बच्चे इन द जया प्रकाश इन द बी डायग्राम ऑपोजिट थिंग विल आकर ना सी इफ यू नो अबाउट द इंस्पिरेशन ऑपोजिट विल बी देयर इन एक्सपिरेशन विच मसल्स आर इंस्पिरेटरी विच विल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ड्यूरिंग इंस्पिरेशन दैट्स ऑल ओके यस सो द पार्शियल प्रेशर ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन द एलवीलाई ऑफ लंग्स of course it is going to be more than than in the blood i'll explain how it will be more than than in the blood i'll explain how next is respiratory capacities and the volume first of all the thing that we need to understand is respiratory volumes but if we have two things one is the respiratory volume another is the respiratory capacity the very first thing is respiratory volume i think you all have checked it somewhere do you know about the spirometer do you know about the spirometer जैसे वेन एवर यू नो देर इज एनी सर्जरी और समथिंग ना समटाइम्स डॉक्टर्स दे चेक दे चेक द द कैपेसिटी ऑफ द वॉल्यूम ऑफ आर लंग्स एज वेल द वॉल्यूम आर लंग्स कैन होल्ड और समथिंग सो देर इज वन डिवाइस दैट इज इंस्ट्रूमेंट दैट इज नोन एज स्पायरोमीटर डू यू नो अबाउट द स्पायरोमीटर सो विद द हेल्प ऑफ स्पायरोमीटर वी कैन चेक आर वॉल्यूम्स राइट लंग वॉल्यूम्स एज वेल सी इन दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द नीट एग्जामिनेशन एंड वी आर गोइंग टू केटर मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स फ्रॉम ब्रीदिंग एंड एक्सचेंज ऑफ गैसेज ओनली बिकॉज ब्रीदिंग ऑफ एंड गैसेज एक्सचेंज चैप्टर इज क्वाइट यू नो बेसिक 
so we'll cater most important topics and the question is going to come from this part only okay so first of all uh, what we need to understand we need to understand the respiratory volume what we need to understand we need to understand the respiratory volume so i was telling you about the spirometer you can write it down spirometer is the one with the help of that we can check that volumes actually there are you know some balls you have to blow in that right and you'll be able to check it is not sphygmomanometer i'm talking about the spy, uh, spirometer yes you have to blow there okay now focus here see just have a look when it comes to the respiratory volume you have tidal volume you have inspiratory reserve volume you have expiratory reserve volume and you have residual uh, volume but a question used to come from this particular part question used to come from this particular part literally question used to come from this particular part so listen to me very carefully as of now you know in this particular room even the ac is not working so it becomes very difficult for us to take session here in this particular studio because we cannot even open up the door okay and it's suffocating you can understand everything is closed lights are there and this screen is also radiating the heat are you getting my point right but the only motivation behind is ki there are some students that you know really rely ki ma'am you please teach us we are dependent on you and we want to learn from you i know there are a lot of teachers right if i i'll not teach they'll go somewhere else but yes i have started teaching them and they are dependent on me they they want me to teach so that motivation is there and that motivation drives me and if same same should be there in your case if you are actually the neat aspirant if you really want to qualify the exam which is there on 7th of may you really need to be patient you really need to be focused okay i know sometimes it is very irritating that all the time we are attending the classes we are just you know writing down the points right uh, we we don't have time to play others are doing party and all they are going out something 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 and we are not able to it's okay you have different vision right and whenever you people feel like quitting na just keep one thing in your head just keep one thing in your head ki you have already wasted your time you just have few days left and in few days for your dream i think you all can get out of your comfort zone isn't it i really think that you all can get out of your comfort zone isn't it isn't it and if you have that motivation i want to see that motivation in the chat section i really want to see that motivation in the chat section literally literally i want to see that motivation in the chat section show some energy show some motivation and let's discuss this topic respiratory volume and capacities i'll make it very easy for you trust me i'll make it very easy for you so i want to see that energy in the chat section guys i want to see that energy in the chat section ki yes we want to qualify the neat exam we will attend this marathon we will practice questions after that we are not going to quit we are not going to quit yes more 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 chat rate should be high at that time exactly that's what i want so now take a deep breath let's start talking about these volumes how can we check with the help of spirometer so which volumes do we have tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume the residual volume i'm mentioning it here tidal volume inspiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume residual volume now what exactly is the tidal volume normally i'm talking to you people and obviously i'm breathing in and breathing out i'm breathing in and breathing out i'm breathing in and breathing out tidal volume see volume of air inspired or expired volume of air inspired or expired during a normal respiration normally the volume of air that we are taking in taking out taking in taking out and bachche one more thing you know in one minute on an average right in one minute on an average a healthy individual breathe in around 12 to 16 times around 12 to 16 times right right 12 to 16 times on an average any healthy individual we breathe in or out 12 to 16 times in a minute 12 to 16 breaths in a minute okay 12 to 16 breaths in a minute okay so when you talk about the tidal volume see per breath it is approximately 500 ml so if in a minute we are right we are inspiring for the 12 to 16 times so obviously the tidal volume will be 
6000 to 8000 ml of air per minute any doubt here tell me any doubt here now revise it with me what i'm uh, what am i saying i am telling you that normally on an average right we take the air in we pass it out okay so on an average in one minute this activity we are going to do for 12 to 16 times right and with per breath 500 ml of air will be inspired 500 ml of air inspired or expired so obviously tidal volume is going to be 6000 to 8000 how you can check it 12 into 500 or 16 into 500 you got your answer so it will be 6000 to 8000 any doubt here any doubt here right any doubt here so can i write here tidal volume 6000 to 8000 per minute 6000 to 8000 per minute and per breath it is 500 ml any doubt sure any doubt and do you know out out of that 500 ml 150 ml is that dead air which is not at all used for exchange right which is not at all used for exchange do you know that only 350 ml is available for the exchange only 350 ml is available for the exchange now comes the inspiratory reserve volume next is what inspiratory reserve volume but now the word here is inspiration to take air in so additional volume of air that we can inspire after a forcible inspiration normally you were taking in something you were exhaling inhale exhale now it is inspiratory reserve volume forceful inspiration will be considered forceful inspiration will be considered so the average here is going to be 2500 to 3000 ml 2500 to 3000 ml are you getting it 2500 to 3000 ml okay okay now expiratory obviously if it is expiratory reserve volume forcible expiration we are going to consider isn't it additional volume of air a person can expire forcible Bull expiration, forcible expiration where your uh, abdominal muscles will be in, involved. Getting my point? So it is going to be 1000 to 1100 ml. It is going to be 1000 to 1100 ml. Do you know how I keep it in my head? See, if you are getting an option to take money from someone, you will be like, nah, I, I want to, I want more money, more money, more money, isn't it? Like let's say I'm giving you option that today I am in mood. I want to, you know, I want to donate my money. So you'll be like, ma'am, give more to me. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. I'll buy this. I'll buy that. Obviously, obviously same as the case here. Lungs are like, here, forcibly we have to inhale, right? We want forcibly we have to take the air in. So they will take more. They will take more. 2,500 to 3,000. 2500 to 3000 now when it comes to the expiratory reserve volume the the amount is 1000 to 1100 it's just like if someone is asking for the uh, someone is asking yeah please give me some money to lend money okay okay they're asking for the money here i don't have money i want to take this and that person out i want to take my girlfriend my boyfriend out so i want money so you'll be like okay i don't have much you please take that only same is the case here same as the case here, 1000 to 1100 ml, 1000 to 1100 ml. Now the residual volume. Now let's say, let's say your friend is asking you the money. Yeah, just give me money, yaar. I'm, I'm in need. I don't have anything to eat. Please give me some money. Obviously, you are going to give that person money. But still, you will save something for yourself, isn't it? You will save something for yourself, isn't it? You will be like, no, 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 no. I cannot give my entire savings. No. What happened if... What if I'll get someone to date? Hai na? I have to take them out, take her or him out. So even I want some money. Same as the case here, residual volume. Right? The secret money that we all have. The secret money that we all have. Residual volume. The secret volume of air that lungs are going to have. Right? That lungs are going to have. So it is going to be 1100 to the 1200 ml. Are you getting my point? It is going to be 1100 to the 1200 ml although although we are saying that we have given all our money to our friend that is expiratory reserve volume but still we are going to save something for ourselves and that is going to be 11 to 100 to 1200 ml right mothers used to do so isn't it mothers used to do so my mother used to behave like that i don't have money but she still she still has isn't it isn't it so done done with it done with it so now just don't look at it and type 
टाइप द टाइप द एक्सपीरेटर रिजर्व वॉल्यूम जस्ट टाइप द एक्सपीरेटर रिजर्व वॉल्यूम क्विक ऑल ऑफ यू जस्ट टाइप द एक्सपीरेटर रिजर्व वॉल्यूम यूल गेट नोट इन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप बच्चे Expiratory reserve volume, quick. Soumya is getting one rupee from her mother. Why are Soumya? Okay, done. Okay, fine. Now the next topic is what? Respiratory capacities. Next is what? Next is respiratory capacity. ओके बच्चे कैपेसिटीज आर द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ वॉल्यूम्स कैपेसिटीज आर व्हाट दे आर द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ वॉल्यूम व्हाट आर कैपेसिटीज दे आर कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ वॉल्यूम सो द वेरी फर्स्ट पॉइंट दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इट विद मी ओनली सी वी हैव इंस्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी राइट वॉट डू वी हैव वी हैव इंस्पिरेटरी कैपेसिटी वी हैव expiratory capacity we have vital capacity we have total lung capacity and we have functional residual capacity then what do we have we have functional residual capacity are you getting my point functional residual capacity now how to remember that how to remember that just look at it see inspiratory expiratory vital total lung capacity functional residual capacity we can write it like this ec uh, oh, sorry ic ec vital capacity total lung capacity then comes the functional residual capacity that is how we are going to write it isn't it that is how we are going to write it isn't it now bachche what you have to do see keep the tidal volume constant tidal volume tidal volume tidal volume tidal volume for first four capacities just keep the just keep the tidal volume constant for first four capacities just keep the tidal volume constant are you getting my point tidal volume constant now if it is the inspiratory capacity in tidal volume kyunki tidal volume is that normal normally when we breathe in we breathe out normal volume of air that is inspired or expired that is 500 ml in general we are not talking about any forceful inspiration here we are not talking about any forceful expiration here in general tidal volume so we are going to keep it constant here till total total lung capacity so keep it tv 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 then for inspiratory capacity add inspiratory reserve volume for expiratory capacity add expiratory reserve volume for vital capacity you have to add both right you have to add both and when it comes to the total lung capacity bachche when it comes to the total lung capacity now it is the total total whatever money we have so even the residual volume will be considered here even the residual volume will be considered here okay residual volume will be considered here so this is how you have to remember it it is literally easy right it is literally easy are you getting my point and when it comes to the functional residual capacity then it is going to be residual volume plus expiratory reserve volume only this one is different in rest all you have to add that tidal volume for inspiratory capacity inspiratory reserve volume expiratory expiratory vital capacity mein both in total even the residual volume this is how you have to write this is how you have to write take a look and see it is basically we see na so that is why i am writing it like this now tell me what is the problem here in this topic i don't know why student find it difficult it is literally easy sure ridha i will do that but first of all you have to subscribe our wonderful channel isn't it isn't it done bachche done so now you know about the let's say now you tidal volume is 500 expiratory reserve volume is 1100 right you will be able to calculate the expiratory capacity simple you will be able to calculate expiratory capacity simple right so capacities are what combination of volume inspiratory capacity tv plus irv expiratory tv plus erv simple it is as simple as that okay done so you can see here 
see so tidal volume we have to mention here so tidal volume see this is the tidal volume plus inspiratory volume total inspiratory capacity tidal volume plus expiratory reserve volume ha this portion will be expiratory capacity are you getting my point so that is how you have to calculate it bas it is as simple as that now answer few question then we'll be talking about the exchange of gases then we'll be talking about the exchange of gases aha seriously somya are in his class so many students used to be there bachche chalo now answer this question functional residual capacity frc is equals to frc is equals to thank you bachche focus but you have to focus bachche functional residual capacity is equals to very easy erv plus rv the next question a normal man at rest inspires and expires about 500 milliliters of air what is this amount known as i think you all know the answer you all know the answer my dear smartest kids you all know the answer exactly it is the tidal volume of air it is the tidal volume of air the next question what does 6000 to 8000 ml of air refers to i think you know it yes you know it well What does six thousand to eight thousand mL of air refers to? Yes. It is the volume of normal expiration, or you can even say volume of normal inspiration per minute. Right. The next question is the exchange of gases. So up to this part, if there is any doubt, do let me know. right do let me know if there is any doubt do let me know i'll cater your doubt tell me if there is any doubt do let me know guys do let me know quickly tell me any doubt yes i'm waiting i'll answer your doubts and then we'll proceed sure are you sure okay fine now bachche you know that it is it is all about the pressure gradient right it is all about the pressure gradient whenever you use the word gradient we are talking about a difference here right whenever you use the word gradient we are talking about a difference here like outside in the environment if the partial pressure of oxygen is high inside that is within lungs right that is within lungs if that pressure is low then only there will be the movement air from outside will come in air from outside will come in isn't it air from outside it will come in isn't it isn't it isn't it you know about the gradient you know this is the simple diffusion this is the simple diffusion either there should be a concentration gradient or there should be a pressure gradient we know it very well now what is the point here ma'am why are you telling this to us i already told you about the mechanism of breathing i already told you how are we going to inhale so you know that when we want to inhale something the volume inside should be high so basically we need to focus on the thoracic volume we need to increase the thoracic volume because if there will be high thoracic volume obviously thoracic volume and pulmonary volume are related even the pulmonary volume will be high this is what you people no already isn't it this is what you people know already now when you talk about that complete pathway the complete passage so you know that we have a structure we have balloon like structure known as alveoli the primary site for exchange of gases isn't it the primary site for exchange of gases isn't it isn't it these alveoli right highly vascularized they are they are they are they are having abundant blood supply they are having abundant blood supply isn't it isn't it when you people talk about the alveoli you know that they are having the abundant blood supply right now see we are talking about the alveoli so you should know that in the alveoli you will be getting two type of cells can you tell me about that cells 
in the alveoli you people are going to get two type of cells can you tell me about that cells can you tell me about that cells anyone in the class alveoli is having two type of cells can you tell me yes tell me highly vascularized is the word i am saying that in the alveoli you have type two type of cells yes you have type 1 pneumo nematocytes is it the nematocytes and you have type 2 can you tell me about their role or something one is of having one is having larger size another is having the smaller size anyone in the class ha pneumocytes ah my bad nematocytes i am writing it's pneumocytes tell me tell me tell me anything about these cells this is important this is important a squamous what squamous what type 1 cells are pneumocyte what else what else tell me quickly quickly all of you just tell me quickly one is the exchange of gas and what about other ha huh? what about other nope it is not right and it is important as well see bachche you are right that we have type 1 and type 2 right do you know that in the case of alveoli we are having one phospholipid present which is going to reduce the surface tension isn't it isn't it isn't it do you know that like when you talk about the type 1 pneumocytes they are going to cover the alveolar surface right they are going to cover the alveoli right they are going to cover the alveolar surface they are going to cover the alveoli and when you talk about type 2 pneumocyte they are the one that will secrete the phospholipid lecithin in the alveoli also we are having the phospholipid lecithin bachche and this lecithin it acts like a surfactant right it it acts like a surfactant okay bachche it is going to reduce the surface area it is going to reduce the surface area right it is going to reduce the surface area so when you talk about the alveoli yes there are two type of pneumocytes one is going to cover the surface only the another one is going to release this phospholipid lecithin which will act as a surfactant basically because which it is going to do what it is acting like a surfactant it is going to do what bachche what will it do quickly tell me that what will it do the surfactant it is going to reduce the surface tension it is going to reduce the surface tension what is it it is the surfactant to reduce surface tension so that exchange should be good na that is why so what will it do it will reduce the surface tension the word is surface tension do not mention the surface area here right do not mention the surface area here this is the first point now now you know that this alveoli right now let's talk about the cells which are covering these alveolar surface now you know that this alveoli is having the abundant blood supply a lot of blood supply is there right a lot of blood supply is there now bachche these are the blood capillaries and you know it very well that in the case of blood capillaries because they are highly thin walled what are they they are highly thin walled so they are having the endothelial cells what type of cells do they have they are having the endothelial cells and when you talk about the alveoli because here diffusion is going to take place so we have simple squamous epithelium here what do we have here we have simple squamous epithelium here what do we have here we have simple squamous epithelium here wherever you people talk about the exchange you will find simple squamous epithelium it is single layered so it, there is the endothelial there is the endothelial cells of blood capillary simple squamous epithelium of alveoli and both of them are lying over the basement membrane both these cells are lying over the basement membrane okay okay this is this is from a uh, structural organization in animals you know that this single cell layer is going to lie over the basement membrane okay okay so this is the site this is the actual site where exchange will occur 
This is the actual site where exchange will occur. So in the alveoli, the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be high because it is all about the pressure difference. In the blood capillary, the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be low. In the alveoli, the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be high. In the blood capillary, the partial pressure of oxygen is going to be low. So what is going to happen? Air from alveoli will come here to the blood. Air from alveoli will come here to the blood. Yes or no? Yes or no? It is known as external respiration. This part is known as bache thikshu, external respiration. Right? This part is known as bache furkana, external respiration. So here, one more thing that you can cover here is, ki here we are talking about the respiratory membrane. So what do we have in the respiratory membrane? In the respiratory membrane, we know that we'll be having the simple squamous we'll be having the simple squamous epithelium of alveoli we'll be having the endothelium of blood capillary and the basement membrane present in between two right basement membrane present in between two Okay, okay, so the thickness, overall thickness here should be less than 1 mm, always remember that. The thickness here should be less than 1 mm, it should be less than 1 mm, okay. So here the exchange will occur, so alveoli should have more partial pressure of oxygen, blood capillary should have less, so partial pressure will come from high concentration to the low, this is how the exchange will occur. Now this blood, right bache, this blood capillary, It will take the blood to the tissue. Now, in the tissue, what is going to happen? In the tissue, the metabolism is going on. Metabolism is going on. So, here in the tissue, partial pressure of CO2 will be high. Partial pressure of oxygen will be low. And here in the blood capillary, partial pressure of CO2 will be less. Partial pressure of oxygen will be more. So, obviously, you know that again the exchange will occur. Again the exchange will occur. So, this is known as internal respiration. This is known as internal respiration are you getting my point are you getting my point and when cell will use the oxygen to break down the glucose then it is known as the cellular respiration so up to this point all clear bache up to this point all clear pavitra it is all same it is just the difference of you know layer which is forming if you remember pavitra epithelial tissue can be made up of any of the germ layer right any of the germ layer can form the epithelial tissue you know it very well okay so endothelium inside it is made up of endotherm Okay, done. So up to this part, any doubt? No. Okay. So you need to remember this table, but many times question used to come from this part. You really need to remember the, uh, you really need to remember the partial pressure value. Like in the case of oxygen in the atmospheric air, partial pressure is 159 mm Hg, but in the alveoli it is going to be 104 mm Hg. In the deoxygenated blood, it is 40. In oxygenated blood, it is 95. In the tissue, it is 40. This table is important. So, can I expect you people to remember this by tomorrow? By tomorrow, will you be able to remember it? I think it's a yes. I think it's a yes. Okay. Done. So, here you can see, just, just see this alveoli, partial pressure here in alveoli is 104 mmHg, partial pressure of CO2 is 40 mmHg, right? Here the, deox uh, here the oxygenated blood is there. Okay, so here the exchange will occur. Isn't it? Isn't it? You can have a look. Right? Now here in the tissue. So partial pressure you need to remember. So in the systemic vein, having deoxygenated blood. So in deoxygenated blood, partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45. In oxygenated, it is 40. So do it. Do it ASAP. Right? It's a PYQ, you are right, bache. It's a PYQ, okay? And we have already discussed this. The cavity, the squamous epithelium, basement, endothelium. Done, bache. Done. Now, we will be talking about the transport of gases. But before that, if there is any doubt, do let me know. Before that, if there is any doubt, do let me know. Because the next part is also important. Any doubt, 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 doubt. After this, we will be starting with the next chapter, of course. 
Ma'am, say any trick to remember the partial pressure. I don't have any trick to remember the partial pressure because it's quite easy. It's quite easy. You just need to look at it again and again and you just need to revise it. Simple. Now, we'll come to that effect. See, transport of gases, transport of CO2 and O2. When you talk about the transport of oxygen, you know that we are having a respiratory pigment and that pigment is known as hemoglobin, isn't it? Isn't it? Hemoglobin. Firstly, let's talk about hemoglobin. Let's let's discuss the oxygen part and then we'll come to the CO2. Hemoglobin, you know what exactly is the hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is the respiratory pigment. It's the quaternary protein. Right, bache? It is the quaternary protein. It is the quaternary protein. Just listen to me very carefully, please. It is important. You know that hemoglobin is present in our RBC, right, in the red blood cells of the human. It is present, the respiratory pigment. When you talk about the hemoglobin, in the hemoglobin, we are having four polypeptide chains. How many chains do we have here in hemoglobin? We are having four polypeptide chain. Actually, but chain hemoglobin, heme is the pigment part, globin is the protein part, right? Heme is the pigment part, globin is the protein part. Heme is the pigment part and globin is the protein part. Do you remember this? Do you know this or not? I think students are tired now, isn't it? Students are tired now, isn't it? Huh? Isn't it? Just a minute. Isn't it? Just imagine one scenario that you are giving your NEET exam and the same question is there in your paper and you are just like this, oh, 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 Amika ma'am was teaching me this. But at that time we were not loving, uh, at that time we were not attentive, we were not listening to her carefully. Hannah, we were not listening to her carefully. Just imagine. You want that? No, now. Nah. So just focus here. Just focus here. Okay. So, energy should be high, energy should be high, high means high, okay. Ha, just listen to me, I will provide you the PDF, okay. So, we are talking about the hemoglobin, I am telling you the central part is the iron part, it is Fe2 positive here, it is Fe2 positive here, it is Fe2 positive here, so can... Ha, so, this is basically the hemoglobin, right? Two alpha chains, two beta chains, central metal is iron, it is Fe2 positive. Okay, what is it? It is Fe2 positive. So, this Fe2 positive is going to pick up the oxygen. It is going to pick up the oxygen, right? Right, it is going to pick up the oxygen. It is important to understand. Please listen to me. Okay, so can I not say that, that when this hemoglobin, when this hemoglobin is picking up the oxygen, let's say that ki this hemoglobin has taken all the oxygen possible. So, one hemoglobin can pick up four oxygen molecules. Can I say that one hemoglobin can pick up four oxygen molecules? Can I say that one hemoglobin can pick up four oxygen molecules? Yes. And this is the respiratory pigment. It is the one which is going to bind with the oxygen. It will pick up the oxygen. It will help in the transport of oxygen. Right? Right? So, how? How the transport will occur? What is going to happen basically? Now, you know that from alveoli, the oxygen will pass to the blood capillary. The hemoglobin is going to carry that, of course. The hemoglobin is going to carry that, of course, for sure. But how is it possible? It is possible only because of the partial pressure. Partial pressure is responsible for that. What is responsible for that? Partial pressure is responsible for that. Right. So, when your hemoglobin will bind with the oxygen, when the partial pressure of oxygen is high. So, if the partial pressure of oxygen is high, the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin will bind with the oxygen. 
हीमोग्लोबिन विल बाइंड विद द ऑक्सीजन एंड बच्चे वी यूज टू कॉल इट एज ऑक्सीजिनेशन इट इज नॉट ऑक्सीडेशन द वर्ड इज ऑक्सीजिनेशन हेयर द वर्ड इज ऑक्सीजिनेशन हेयर राइट राइट द वर्ड इज ऑक्सीजिनेशन हेयर दैट इज एडिशन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन एडिशन ऑफ ऑक्सीजन राइट बट दिस ऑक्सीजिनेशन इज टेम्परेरी प्लस इट इज रिवर्सिबल प्लस इट इज रिवर्सिबल आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट इट इज टेम्परेरी इट इज रिवर्सिबल इट इज टेम्परेरी इट इज रिवर्सिबल इट इज टेम्परेरी इट इज रिवर्सिबल नाउ यू लास्ट मी वाई मैम जस्ट टेक वन एग्जाम्पल जस्ट इमेजिन टूडे आई बॉट अ फोन राइट आई गेव दैट फोन टू पूनम राइट आई गेव दैट फोन टू पूनम कि पूनम यू हैव टू गिव दिस फोन टू सौम्या ओके ओके आई वॉन्ट टू गिफ्ट दिस फोन टू सौम्या जैसे लेट से यू ऑर्डर समथिंग राइट यू ऑर्डर समथिंग लेट से यू ऑर्डर यू आर ऑर्डरिंग फॉर मैनी ऑफ द साइट ओके सो वट वट डू वी एक्सपेक्ट वी एक्सपेक्ट दैट डिलीवरी पर्सन विल गिव आर ऑर्डर टू आर सेल्स आर ऑर्डर इज प्री पेड आर ऑर्डर इज प्री पेड सो वी विल बी लाइक ना कि दिस इज वॉट बी एज्यूम दिस इज वॉट बी बिलीव दैट डिलीवरी पर्सन इज गोइंग टू गिव माई ऑर्डर टू मी इज इंट इट इज इंट इट दैट इज वॉट वी वॉन्ट बट इफ जस्ट इमेजिन इफ दैट डिलीवरी पर्सन विल बी लाइक नो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गिव दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑर्डर टू दैट पर्सन टू दैट एक्स वाई जी पर्सन आई कीप इट आई कीप इट I'll keep it. I'm not going to give it to anyone else. Obviously, this is this cannot be the scenario because that person is a delivery person. It's his or her job. It's his or her job. Same is the case here, right? You have to consider hemoglobin as a delivery person, and it is a delivery person which is going to deliver the oxygen, which is going to deliver the oxygen. This hemoglobin. Are you getting my point? This hemoglobin is going to uh, give the oxygen. Are you getting my point? Now here, when oxygen will be added to the hemoglobin, this this relationship should be temporary, right? Because the role of hemoglobin is to give that oxygen to the cell, to the tissue which is in need. Okay, so that is why we say that oxygenation is temporary or reversible. So whenever you talk about the transport of oxygen, what do you have to remember? Right, that three percent, only three percent will be dis, uh, will be transported in the dissolved form, but ninety percent will be transported in the form of oxyhemoglobin. So whenever your hemoglobin and oxygen they binds, we use the word oxyhemoglobin. We use the word oxyhemoglobin. So this oxygenation is temporary. This oxygenation is reversible. It depends upon the partial pressure. It depends upon the partial pressure of the oxygen. For that we need high partial pressure. we need high partial pressure okay okay bachche so any doubt any doubt here so if you want to understand this now you have to understand oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so today i'll make this curve very easy for you right so what do you have to understand you have to understand oxygen dissociation curve if you want to understand the transport of oxygen oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so bachche this dissociation curve is basically a s shaped curve it's a sigmoid relationship are you getting it it's a s shaped curve it is basically a sigmoid shaped curve so on x axis we have the partial pressure of oxygen in on y axis we have the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen now what is the meaning here see when you talk about the x axis you are talking about the partial pressure only and always remember if we want oxygen to get bind to the hemoglobin right which is basically a temporary binding the partial pressure of oxygen should be high the partial pressure of oxygen should be high right tanuja the partial pressure of oxygen should be high and here what do we have we have the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen basically what is happening here right what is the meaning of percentage saturation that how much hemoglobin has how how much hemo how how much hemoglobin has formed the bond with the oxygen how much hemoglobin has taken the oxygen towards this y axis this is what we are checking like i'll quote one example like let's say if the temperature is 25 mm of hg so we consider that 50% of the hemoglobin is saturated with oxygen so being saturated with oxygen means hemoglobin has picked up the oxygen hemoglobin has picked up the oxygen i'll quote one another example let's say 400 molecules of hemoglobin are there in my blood 400 molecules of hemoglobin are there in my blood 
right what do i have in my blood 400 molecules of hemoglobin molecules are there in my blood and i am saying that one when uh, when pressure is 25 mm hg 50% of the hemoglobin has bonded with the oxygen so what what will you say you will say na ki 200 200 hemoglobins are bonded with the oxygen that is what you people are going to say right that is what you people are going to right that is what you people are going to say so this is the case here so now in the oxygen dissociation curve we talk about the two shifts the shift is left shift and the right shift this is what we need to discuss na left shift and the right shift left shift and the right shift bache when this curve moves to this side we consider it as a left shift when we the curve move to that side we consider it as the right shift this is the key point here this is the point that we need to remember here and here the trick is bache lard right instead of lord keep it lard this is the trick here instead of lord keep it lard instead of lord keep it lard right right so l stands for left a stands for association r stands for right d stands for dissociation isn't it l stands for left a stands for association r stands for right d stands for dissociation first of all tell me the meaning of trick is clear or not quickly tell me the meaning of trick is clear or not the meaning of trick is clear or not tell me it is lard lard type it in the chat section all of you just type it in the chat section all of you i want to see the energy in the chat section quickly just do it quickly all of you be quick lord quick 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 all of you all of you all of you guys energy level should be here 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 go done so left is association right is dissociation left is association right is dissociation you know what is the meaning of this see left association to associate means to bind to associate means to bind means to bind so here if we are talking about the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve so somewhere obviously we will be discussing the joining of the association of oxygen and hemoglobin isn't it we'll be talking about the joining of association of hemoglobin and oxygen isn't it isn't it of course so if curve is moving towards the left side and if there is the association so can i not say that ki here we are talking about the formation of oxy hemoglobin can i not say that ki here we are talking about the formation of oxy hemoglobin because the word is association to associate to join to join and if it is the right shift dissociation so right shift matlab dissociation means break up break up we are breaking up something we are breaking the oxygen and hemoglobin we are breaking up something we are breaking the hemoglobin and oxygen we are breaking the hemoglobin and oxygen so what can we conclude from this part that if my curve is moving towards the left side oxy hemoglobin form form right and, and there is no need to cram ha huh? i'll give you another trick here if my curve is moving to the right side there is the dissociation means there will be the breakup of there will be the breakup of oxygen and hemoglobin isn't it isn't it acha now tell me one more thing now tell me one more thing if there will be the breakup देखो दिस ब्रेकअप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सर्वाइवल ऑफ द सेल्स यू टेल मी वन थिंग इफ देर विल बी अ ब्रेकअप देन देर इज अ चांस ना दैट अ न्यू पर्सन विल कम लेट से टू पीपल आर इन अ रिलेशनशिप इफ दे आर हैविंग अ ब्रेकअप देन ओनली देर इज अ चांस ना दैट लेट से कि बॉय डेस्ट गर्ल या गर्ल डेस्ट बॉय वॉट एवर इज द केस द अदर पर्सन विल गो टू अन अदर पर्सन इजेंट इट इजेंट इट डोंट यू थिंक don't you think so if curve is moving towards the right side if there is a dissociation of hemoglobin if there is a breakup of oxygen and hemoglobin then only my oxygen will go to someone else na and that someone else is gone that some who is that someone else that is our cell our tissue our tissue so this breakup is important this breakup is very important if our oxygen will stay attached to the hemoglobin only ki oh my god i want hemoglobin so all the cells of the body will be like when will oxygen come 
oxygen should come otherwise we'll die otherwise we'll die are you getting my point are you getting my point this is the scenario na so if there will be no dissociation if there will be no right shift oxygen will not go to someone else oxygen will not go to our cell our cell will not get oxygen so can i not say that that this right shift is very important for our cells then only they'll get oxygen like sometimes breakup is important then only you focus on your studies then only you people focus on your studies right same is the case here and when ever there is the left shift there is a joining obviously at that time oxygen is totally into the hemoglobin the cells are not getting it right so this is what you need to remember the another thing now how a breakup can occur how can how can a breakup take place first right side means a dissociation right sides means dissociation means breakup so b for breakup b for bohr's shift b for breakup b for bohr shift so can i say that when oxygen hemoglobin curve is moving towards the right side there is the it is because of bohr's effect it is because of bohr's effect can i say so can i say so yes or no ki if my curve is moving towards the if there is a right shift in oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve right so what is happening at that time at that time there is a breakup breakup means b for breakup b for bohr's effect b for breakup b for bohr's effect b for breakup b for bohr's effect isn't it isn't it so bohr's effect is responsible for the right shift which means dissociation is it relatable or not guys answer it in the chat section answer it in the chat section isn't it isn't it yes or no of course yes so in the paper the question used to come which effect is responsible for the right shift which effect is responsible for the left shift so for the right shift it is the bohr's effect for the right shift it is the bohr's effect and how can that break up occur when partial pressure of oxygen is low so if partial pressure of oxygen is low partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high and at that time the temperature is going to be high as well the ph is going to be low means acidic means h positive concentration will be high so these are the factors which are responsible for the right shift these are the factors which are responsible for the right shift and the opposite of it will occur in the left shift and left shift we will see in the case of alveoli we will see the haldane's effect there we will see the haldane's effect there so you got it you got it now there is no need to cram this topic now there is no need to cram this topic b for breakup b for bohr and when will oxygen and hemoglobin will have breakup when carbon dioxide partial pressure will increase so if carbon dioxide partial pressure will increase the co2 pressure will be ha huh? if uh, carbon dioxide pressure will increase oxygen pressure partial pressure will be low temperature will be high the ph is going to be the ph is going to be low the h positive concentration will be high so this is about the dissociation this is about this transport that is what you need to remember that is what you need to remember right right even everything is relatable so see factors like partial pressure this and that they will affect this binding and i told you that isn't it so now another important question guys so every 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver around 5 ml of oxygen to the tissue under normal physiological condition can you tell me how is it possible why why do we say that every 100 ml of oxygenated blood can deliver around 4 ml of oxygen right that's your homework i'm not going to tell you it is related to the amount of hemoglobin in 100 ml 12 to 15 gram hemoglobin remember something like that each hemoglobin is going to pick up a certain amount of oxygen so it is related to that that is your homework so will you do it will you do it will you do it yes that is your homework i'm not going to tell you i will tell you just one point here that 5 ml of oxygen will be transported by 100 ml of blood and 4 ml of co2 will be transported by 100 ml of blood this is what you need to remember rest you have to revise it you have to revise it now come to the transport of co2 and here before that see i have added this for you the left shift and right shift so all the points are uh, mentioned here right we'll share the pdf you guys can revise it from there so next is the transport of carbon dioxide see bachche many questions used to come from this part co2 transport बच्चे CO2 ट्रांसपोर्ट इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग 
CO2 is having more solubility in comparison to the oxygen. Yes, CO2 is having more solubility in comparison to the oxygen, right? So, when you talk about the CO2, see whenever even CO2 even combines with hemoglobin, obviously hemoglobin is just like a hemoglobin, hemoglobin is not going to appreciate permanent relationship, hemoglobin always appreciate temporary relationship, hemoglobin always appreciate temporary relationship, whether it is CO2 or oxygen. If partial pressure of oxygen is high, then hemoglobin will be like oxygen, you are my buddy. If partial pressure of CO2 is high, then oxygen, hemoglobin will be like CO2, you are my buddy. So, hemoglobin is like that. Hemoglobin is just like the siblings, right? Just like the younger siblings. If you are having something for them, if you are having any toffee, any chocolate, anything for them, then, then they will be like, oh, bhaiya, didi, right, you are my uh, big sister, you are this and that. If you do not have anything, then they are not going to ask you. They will not even give you a glass of water. Do you agree? Do you agree? Is it so? Is it so? Siblings are like that, na? Siblings are like that, na? Tell me, if you agree na, tell me in the chat section, yes, siblings are like that. So, hemoglobin is just like our siblings. High partial pressure of oxygen, then hemoglobin will move towards oxygen. High pressure of CO2, hemoglobin will move towards the CO2. Done? Okay. So, guys, are you understanding it? Are you liking it? Are you understanding it? Are you liking it? So, tell me in the chat section. Achha. So, Santa is the younger one. Ha, ha. Younger brothers and sisters are always like that. Okay, 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 okay. So, if you are new to our channel, you know what you have to do. You have to subscribe our channel, right? Right, you have to subscribe our channel. Then I can brag in front of Asim sir. Ki, see, 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 my students are loving my classes too. I have to brag in front of him. Okay. Now, let us not waste time. Let us focus here, guys. So, we are talking about the carbon dioxide and hemoglobin. I told you about the hemoglobin relationship with all the gases. So, whenever carbon dioxide and hemoglobin, they join, kiddos, they are going to form carbamino hemoglobin. Are you getting my point? What will they do? They will form carbamino hemoglobin. What will they do? They are going to form even the oxygen, when that carbon monoxide it binds with hemoglobin, then it is the carboxy hemoglobin. Otherwise, it is carbamino. Many times you people make mistake here, right? Many times you people make mistake here. So, when carbon dioxide is going to form the, when carbon dioxide is going to join with the hemoglobin, it is carbamino hemoglobin. Carbamino hemoglobin. So, 20 to 25 percent of the CO2 will be transported in this way. And you know that majority of carbon dioxide will be transported in the form of HCO3 negative, in the form of HCO3 negative, in the form of HCO3 negative. Is that clear? That is bicarbonate ions. Okay, okay, okay. So, whenever the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is going to be high, the hemoglobin will bind with the carbon dioxide and will leave the oxygen right will leave the oxygen right bache so just focus here ha huh. dun 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 okay so now one other point that you all need to understand this is my blood vessel this is my blood vessel yes blood vessel looks like that this is my blood vessel now in the blood vessel we have RBC, we have red blood cells, we have RBC, we have red blood cell. Guys, is it lagging? I think no. Is it lagging? No lag is there, no? Tell me.
done I think it is not lagging at all No, no, it is not. Okay, okay. Now it's fine. So we have the RBC here, red blood cell. Now when it comes to the CO2 transport, the maximum transport is because of your bicarbonate ions, right? Because of your bicarbonate ions. Got, getting my point? Now, but here in the RBCs, there is the fastest enzyme which is known as carbonic anhydrase. For we will use the short form that is CA carbonic anhydrase. Do you know what Himanshi? It is the fastest enzyme. Do you know what? It is the fastest enzyme. What is it? It is the fastest enzyme. Okay. RBC in the RBC also you are having the carbonic anhydrase even in the plasma. Remember this point. Even in the plasma you guys are having carbonic anhydrase. But in the plasma its concentration is negligible. Its concentration is negligible. Right? Right? Your, its concentration is negligible. But in RBC, its concentration is very high. Now, you must be thinking, ma'am, why are you telling this to us? Whenever there is a high partial pressure of CO2, CO2 is going to combine with the water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase, which is the fastest enzyme. Now, it will form bache, by carbonic acid, which will again dissociate in the presence of same enzyme and it will result in the formation of H positive and HCO3 negative that is your bicarbonate ions. Are you getting my point now? Are you getting my point now? But the same reaction is taking place in plasma, but the concentration of CA is too less that we consider it as negligible. We consider it as negligible. Now, just look at this. Because of this condition, don't you think H positive is increasing? Don't you think H positive is increasing because of this condition? Yes, H positive is increasing. And if there is high H positive concentration, means acidic conditions, means low pH, means low pH. High H positive concentration means acidic conditions, means low pH. Now you got it. Now you got it. Why in the right shift? Why when there is the Bohr's effect? We used to say H positive concentration high get right right now are you able to understand how can we say that that whenever there is a right shift the h positive concentration it spikes right that is how and whenever this h positive concentration increasing it even tells hemoglobin okay see brother now it's the time to leave the oxygen leave oxygen let the oxygen be free you combine with me we both will form hemoglobinic acid so in this way Hemoglobin also acts like a buffer. It also acts like a buffer. It also acts like a buffer. And moreover, now, HCO3 is crying. HCO3 is like, I want to go out in the plasma. I want to go out in the plasma. I want to go out in the plasma. My concentration is more here in RBC. I want to go out in plasma. I want to go out in plasma. It is crying. But we have to balance that, right? We have to balance that. Because if we will throw out so much of negative charge here outside in the plasma, obviously it is going to disturb that ionic balance. So, HCO3 will go out, chloride will enter. HCO3 will go out, chloride will enter. And when this chloride enter, we used to call it as chloride shift. This chloride shift is not given in NCRT, but it is important. It is also known as hamburger phenomena. Hamburger phenomena. What is it? It is also known as hamburger phenomena. Hamburger phenomena. So, from this part, the question used to come that chloride ion, they move from, from plasma to RBC. Plasma to RBC. What is the movement of this? In which direction this chloride ion is moving? It is moving from plasma to RBC. Plasma to RBC. Plasma to RBC. Right? And bicarbonate is coming out. Bicarbonate is coming out. This is the chloride shift. Okay. So, up to this part, any doubt? So, this is how, you know, it will occur. The H positive will combine with hemoglobin. Hemoglobinic acid will be there. And even some amount of CO2 will also combine with hemoglobin. This is about the transport. So, but a question from gases part can come. Question from this chloride shift can come. Right. So, it is all the, it is the game of this partial pressure only. And remember, every 100 ml of deoxygenated blood delivered approximately 4 ml of CO2. I told you that already. Now, answer this question. Answer this question, bache. 
one more wonderful diagram and then we will switch to the next chapter which next chapter you want to start you want to start locomotion and movement you want to start excretion you want to start body fluid and circulation which chapter you people want to start quick yes it is from plasma rbc movement uh, sorry chloride movement is from plasma to rbc yes when you hold your breath which of the following gas changes in blood would first lead to the urge to breath very good question it is see always remember when are you going to do the inspiration when in oxygenated blood the word is oxygenated blood or you can say that in arterial blood artery is used to carry the oxygenated blood na when in arterial blood p co2 of co2 increase partial pressure of carbon dioxide increases it sends a signal to your medulla oblongata to do inspiration to do inspiration are you getting my point to do inspiration right to do inspiration thank you so much Just a minute, bache. Done, done. So this is something very important. Okay, now this question, answer it. Just answer it to me. right shift right shift now you know that you know the trick isn't it the trick is lard the trick is lard right shift means dissociation means breakup will be there so for breakup what do we need we need high partial pressure of carbon dioxide right and h positive concentration should be more the ph should be low so of course the correct answer here is a the correct answer here is a what is the correct answer here the correct answer here is a right answer of previous question ha huh? i explained it na bache here it is the co2 concentration which is going to initiate the inspiration not oxygen concentration is not at all related here okay next i told you about this gas yes 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 but see this is the diagram now that i always explain to my students uh i'll tell you why this diagram i always explain see like in the some quick points that you need to sh you should remember it is the bohr's effect which is responsible for transport of o2 because if there will be no break up of oxygen and hemoglobin oxygen will not pass to the oxygen will not pass to the oxygen will not pass to the other body cells and tissue first point second point is that that in tissue bohr's effect is occurring but in the lungs haldane effect occurs haldane effect occurs okay okay like see here metabolism excess of co2 means excess of partial pressure of co2 co2 will enter here co2 with water in carbonic anhydrase will form bicarbonic acid the break up and all i told you right now see look at it in alveoli what is going to happen opposite thing because in alveoli the partial pressure of oxygen is more but the co2 pressure is low so here what will happen the reaction will occur but in a reverse order right here because in the pulmonary cavity you know that even po2 is low basically what is going to happen here in alveoli the opposite thing 
right here the partial pressure of oxygen is more and the co2 partial pressure is low in the alveoli so obviously again carbonic acid will form again carbonic acid will form again this carbonic acid will break again the co2 will be released co2 will pass to the alveoli alveoli will throw it out so in alveoli it is the haldane effect it is the haldane effect right right very good bachche very good okay so that's all so rest you know that emphysema cigarette smoking chain smokers used to have that occupational disorders disorders you need to revise by your own next is the body fluid and circulation that we are going to start but before that before that before that haldane effect devil bache haldane h a l d a n e haldane's effect no after you will have break will have break but later not right now we'll have it but later okay okay ha huh, we'll have break let's finish it then we will have break okay okay so you know that body fluid and circulation circulation right blood is there in our case for the transport so that is very basic thing that blood is made up of formed element blood is made up of plasma can you tell me about that regulation of respiration you want to know bachche see when it comes to the regulation of respiration priyo bachche whenever in your arterial blood the partial pressure of concentration it increases it sends a signal to the osmoreceptors that receptors are there in hypothalamus they will get a signal right they will get that signal and obviously they will tell the Th that osmoreceptors are going to uh, take the signal the, now there is a respiratory rhythm center in your medulla oblongata they will send a signal to that ki now it's the time for inspiration so medulla oblongata is going to start that inspiration now we have pons veroli as well which is there in the hind brain that is going to regulate the rate of inspiration pons vero veroli p for papa papa medulla oblongata m for mama mama is like very lenient mama is like ki baby is asking for a money mama is like okay you take this you take that okay so medulla oblongata will start the inspiration it will carry forward that but pons veroli is going to control the rate of inspiration as well ki it should not be more so that is how it works as of now you just need to remember that yeah pneumotaxic apneustic center all are all of them are there but mainly the osmoreceptors are going to play the role here okay anything else बच्चे तनुजा दिस चैप्टर इज नॉट सो लेंदी बिकॉज इन दिस चैप्टर आई हैव टारगेटेड द मेन मेन टॉपिक्स ओनली सो दैट इज वाई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग यू टू फिनिश दिस चैप्टर फर्स्ट देन आई गो फॉर द लोकोमोशन एंड मूवमेंट एंड बिफोर दैट आई गिव यू वन ब्रेक बिकॉज अदरवाइज यू गाइज विल नॉट बी एबल टू रिमेंबर ना ऑल दट स्कैलेटन एंड ऑल द मकैनिज्म ऑफ मसल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ओके सो एनीथिंग एल्स एनीथिंग एल्स But the M N S now for M N S, you know, they consider the need score. Anything else? Break? No. After this chapter break. After this chapter, we are going to have break. Sure. Okay. So blood. In the case of blood, you people know one thing that there will be the plasma. and there will be the formed elements so can you tell me the concentration of plasma can you tell me the concentration of plasma plasma is that straw colored liquid that pale yellow colored liquid rich with proteins rich with nutrients used to carry the waste used to carry the excretory products plasma what is the concentration of plasma what is the concentration of plasma very good bachche it is going to be 55% and when it comes to the formed element it is going to be the 45% so it is just like the combination of bonvita 
right like in the milk you are going to put the bon vita so milk is the plasma bon vita means that formed elements this is the example here so when you talk about the formed element you are talking about the cells which are present in the blood so here we have the rbcs the erythrocytes here we have the wbcs the leukocytes and we have the platelets known as thrombocytes playing role in the blood clotting right they are playing role in the blood clotting so this is what we need to know now you can just look at this this is basically the diagrammatic representation of the formed elements here i'll start with one trick only that's all see to the point we are discussing this particular chapter leukocytes the word is what leukocytes we have two types right bachche one is a e granulocytes another is granulocyte one is a e granulocytes another is granulocyte when you talk about a e granulocyte without granules without granules in the cytoplasm of the wbcs here bachche we have trick the trick is mla and the trick is benji you know na mla member of legislative assembly and benji the trick here is mla and benji the trick here is mla and benji so when it is mla a means a granulocytes so we have two examples here in a granulocyte one is monocytes another example is lymphocytes one is monocytes another example is lymphocytes one is monocytes another example is lymphocyte right from benten we are going to make it ben g g stands for granulocytes b stands for basophil e stands for eosinophil g stands for uh, sorry n stands for neutrophil so these are the different different types of wbcs that is your leukocytes right that is your leukocytes right that is your leukocytes so bachche here the points that you need to remember monocytes and neutrophils monocytes are also phagocytotic they can engulf the foreign particle even along with that these neutrophils are phagocytotic so in the paper they can ask you the question that which leukocytes are phagocytotic so answer is monocyte and neutrophil monocyte and neutrophil and when it comes to the lymphocyte they are going to provide the immunity right bachche basophil b for base basic they will release histamines heparin like that eosinophil allergy whenever there is any allergic reaction eosinophils will be out okay so neutrophil is also phagocytotic so in neutrophils when you talk about the nucleus it is pmnl polymorphonuclear leukocyte its nucleus is many lobed its nucleus is many lobed when you talk about the basophil s shaped nucleus is there eosinophil tri lobed nucleus is there not bi lobed tri lobed okay like this so that is what we need to remember right that is what we need to remember so question can come from this part so see monocyte the largest lymphocyte the bean shaped nucleus it is having right when it comes to the b see round nucleus is there okay neutrophil multi lobed then basophil eosinophil is a s shape ha eosinophil is having to uh, yes bi lobed nucleus is there done bachche this part is important answer this question then we'll go ahead answer this question we'll go ahead eosinophils allergy at the time of allergy eosinophils will be too much kidney shaped bean shaped is all same kidney shaped bean shaped is all same name the blood cell whose reduction in number can cause the clotting disorder because this is the thrombocyte uh oh oh that is thrombocyte platelets and vitamin k is very important for clotting if no blood vitamin k no blood clotting okay see next question that we are going to discuss is the blood groups okay so i told you know that in this particular chapter will be very specific we will talk about the important important topics only so are you happy happy Are you happy happy? Are you happy happy? N eleven biology simplified Tamil Parunga. I don't I don't understand. 
ஆ டீச் மீ தமிழ் பட் குட் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஆ குட் வேர்ட்ஸ் டீ டீச் மீ தமிழ் ஐ பி வெரி ஹாப்பி டு லேர்ன் அ நியூ லாங்குவேஜ் ஹா ஐல் டீச் யூ பயாலஜி யூ பீப்புள் கேன் டீச் மீ எனி ஆஃப் த லாங்குவேஜ் பட் ஹா குட் வேர்ட்ஸ் ஓன்லி வெரி 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 வனக்கம் தட் ஐ நோ வனக்கம் ஹியூமன் வாட் இஸ் த மீனிங் ஆஃப் இட் Thank you means Nandri. Monisha, thank you means Nandri and Nandri. Nandri. Ah, you can teach anything. Yes, I know Punjabi as well. Vanakkam means Namaste. Kannada. You can teach me anything. Achha, you know five languages. Oh, wow. Everyone study properly. Elaram Olunga Padinga. Okay, that I will learn. And alunum, if they are, I mean, don't mind pronunciation, huh? Okay. Marathi, I don't know. Um, for Marathi, I'll ask Shreya, sir. Haan, Kashmiri, I'll ask Vazim, sir. Nandri means thank you. Okay. I hope you all are teaching correct words to me. here i am naiv how are you ipadi irukinga okay ipadi irukinga okay ipadi irukinga aage chalo now and let's not waste time let's focus again so let's start the session and now let's continue irukinga i learn this word irukinga okay okay so now we will talk about the blood group can i add a bit genetics here <laughs> if you don't mind can i add a can i add genetics here can i add genetics here guys energy in the chat section energy in the chat section can i add genetics here because even this topic was there in that top 60 marathon while well, uh, our top 60 topics of biology can i add it okay i will add it so when you talk about the blood group you know that the gene i is going to control that and that i gene is having so many alleles it is the example of multiple allelism remember so many alleles are there matlab more than two alleles are there when you talk about the blood group and gene i is going to control that gene i is going to control that okay bachche gene i is going to control that when we talk about the blood groups right blood group a b and o that was given by carl landsteiner carl landsteiner and when it comes to the blood group ab which is showing co dominance remember it is showing co dominance ab blood group co dominance so it was given by about the blood group ab d castello and sterly right they discovered this they decoded it ki a and b can exist together and d castello and sterly they were the students of carl landsteiner okay so now when you talk about the blood group obviously we know that gene i is responsible for that we know that actually what is happening bachche you know that in the you know that when you talk about the rbc that is red blood cells right in our case we we have biconcave and enucleated rbc at maturity we have biconcave and enucleated rbc at maturity this is what we know in the case of mammals mostly the rbcs they are biconcave and even they are enucleated even they are enucleated okay bachche okay but exception is there if you remember camel camel is an exception camel is having oval and nucleated rbc right camel is having oval and nucleated rbc right bachche now when you talk about this rbc on this rbc we are having the antigens antigens are present on the surface of the rbc antigens are present on the surface of the rbc what is present on the surface of the rbc antigen see let's say if this antigen is the a antigen if this antigen is the a antigen it means that the person will have the person will have a blood group right actually see this is very simple 
initially H antigen used to be there, a very basic antigen, a kind of chemical used to be present there on the RBC surface, H antigen. If there is the gene for allele for the synthesis of that particular sugar then obviously to that H antigen one sugar get added it make it A blood group. So, this is very you know deep. So, let us not discuss that. Let us focus on whatever required for NCIT ok. Ok. So, when you talk about the RBC on the RBC surface the antigen is present. So, whatever antigen is present on RBC surface that is going to decide the blood group. If, if it is the A antigen blood group will be A. If it is the B antigen blood group will be B. If both the antigens are there, A B blood group will be there. If no antigen is there, O blood group. If no antigen is there, O blood group. Right, bache? Right. So, on the basis of that, will you be able to remember this particular table, right? That if blood group is A, antigen on RBC is going to be A. So, in plasma, antibody against B blood group will be there. You might have heard that whenever a person is having the A blood group, that person should take A blood group only. If there is a requirement of blood transfusion, that person should take A blood group only. That person should take A blood group only. Otherwise, what will happen? Otherwise, A glutination reaction will occur. What will happen otherwise? A glutination reaction will occur. A glutination, clumping can occur. Right, clumping can occur. What will happen, bache? Clumping can occur, okay. Clumping can occur. You can ask your doubt, bache. Done? Done? What can happen? Clumping can occur. Are you getting my point? Clumping can occur. So, if antigen on RBC is A, A blood group. So, in the plasma, antibody against B blood group will be there. If RBC, if on uh, RBC antigen is B, that person will have antibody against a blood group and if the person is having R, both the antigen on RBC surface, no antibody is present. So, such blood group is universal recipient A, B blood group. What is it? Universal recipient it is. Universal recipient it is and when it is O, so when it is O, then nil. Antigen on RBC, no antigen is present and the blood will have uh, in plasma both the, both the antibodies are there. Right, both the antibodies are there. Are you getting my point? So, AB is universal recipient, O is the universal donor. O is the universal donor. But one more, uh, one more antigen is there that is your rhesus antigen. Do you know about that? The rhesus antigen. Like most of the time, we used to say na AB plus blood group or A plus blood group or A minus blood group or AB minus blood group like this. This is what we used to discuss. This is what we used to discuss, isn't it? So, we have one more antigen that is known as rhesus antigen. Why do we call it as rhesus antigen? Because it was, uh, scientists found it in the uh, rhesus monkey, right? They found it in the rhesus monkey. Now, what is the meaning of being rhesus positive? Or you can say that RH positive. RH positive means rhesus antigen present. It means rhesus antigen is present. What is the meaning of RH negative? Rhesus antigen absent. Like let us say, if I am saying that my blood group is AB positive, AB positive. So, what will you say? How many antigens do I have? How many antigens do I have? If I am saying that my blood group is AB positive, so how many antigens do we have? How many antigens do I have? Furkana, it is AB positive. Positive means rhesus antigen is also present. Na? So, three antigens will be there A, B and rhesus. A, B and rhesus. Okay. Okay. So, if it is O positive, one antigen is there. That is rhesus antigen is present. If it is O negative, no antigen is present, no antigen is present, right? So, let us say ki there is a, any accident and that person is taken to the hospital. So, doctors can give that person, if they do not know the blood group, they can directly give O negative. O negative means no antigen at all. So, no clumping, no agglutination reaction will occur. No clumping, no agglutination reaction will occur. Are you getting my point? Okay. 
okay so this is the thing that you need to understand so now you know that there is a very famous case erythro blastosis fetalis when we talk about this na rh incompatibility so we have uh, a very famous example of erythroblastosis fetalis it includes rh incompatibility rh incompatibility are you getting it rh incompatibility issue the very famous example is erythroblastosis fetalis now let's say bachcha understand this thing let's say uh there is a person having blood group a negative or you can say that there is a person having blood group o negative o negative means no antigen at all i'm just quoting one example then i'll teach you what exactly is the erythroblastosis fetalis right i'm quoting one example then i'll tell you what exactly is the erythroblastosis fetalis so if i am mentioning that o negative is the word o negative means no antigen at all o negative means no antigen at all no antigen is there right now let's say if i'll give that person o positive blood what is the meaning of o positive o positive means o positive means ki plus antigen rhesus antigen is present isn't it o positive means rhesus antigen is present what is the meaning of the positive sign here that rhesus antigen is present rhesus antigen is present now if i'll give this person o positive blood group then obviously his body his or her body is not aware of this positive antigen they will take it as a as something intruder as an intruder right they are going to take it as an intruder they are going to take it as an intruder are you getting my point right are you getting my point so body will start making antibodies against it body will start making antibodies against it which is not good which is not good so in erythroblastosis we have some uh, we have such case which is related to the rh incompatibility let's say there is a mother right let's say there is a mother mother is having rh negative blood group matlab she doesn't know anything about the her body doesn't know uh, anything about the her body is not aware of what exactly is that rhesus antigen means right let's not take any particular example but let's take one example in your head that mother is mother is negative mother is negative now in her womb right in her womb let's say there is a baby baby is having the rh positive blood group rh positive blood group means that baby is having the because father is rh positive so baby is also having the plus right baby is also having the rh antigen in the blood baby is also having the rh antigen in the blood isn't it so but in first pregnancy there will be no issue you know that placenta you know that by a placenta some cells of the baby can can comes in the uh, circulation of mother as well but in the, right by a plus basically not by a placenta exactly but let's take one example in first pregnancy whenever there will be the parturition whenever mother is going to give birth to that baby at that time blood will get mixed so mother's blood in mother's blood that baby's blood can enter right the mother in mother's blood the baby's blood will enter so what is going to happen mother's blood will be like what is this rh positive this is something new this is something new this is something new right this is something new this thing can occur obviously this thing can occur so initially so in first pregnancy the issue will not be there the issue is not severe at that the issue will not be there in first pregnancy right why because at the time of child birth only both the blood will get mixed mother mother's body will get to know about the rh positive antigen so at that time body will start making the antibodies against it body will start making the antibodies against it now in if whenever there will be the second pregnancy now if in second pregnancy same scenario is there if in second pregnancy same scenario is there now mother's body is aware of already mother's body is aware of that rh antigen in mother's plasma already anti rh antibodies are present in mother's pl uh, plasma already antibodies against rh antigen is present so in that case that antibodies can destroy the cells destroy the rbcs of the baby right that baby can have severe anemia that baby can die so in such cases 
right gynecologist always suggest mother that they should take some injections that can you know destroy these antibodies in their blood so this is the perfect example perfect case of erythroblastosis fetalis the rh incompatibility so you can understand it from this diagram like there is a couple father is positive mother is negative so the baby is also having positive blood group positive blood group means rh positive blood antigen is present so in first pregnancy at the time of delivery some cells can go there mother body can form antibodies against it right now in the next pregnancy right if mother will take injections to suppress these antibodies then it is good but if she will not take it so obviously next pregnancy issue can occur that baby can get anemia right so this is the erythroblastosis fetalis so if there is any doubt related to this just let me know guys just let me know because the next topic is the blood platelets coagulation then we'll be talking about the nodal tissue nodal tissue if nodal tissue is clear to you you know the cardiac cycle then then ecg so you can say that if you will show some energy till 5 we can finish this particular chapter and then we can take a break for half an hour and then in next 5 hours we'll we can finish the entire human physiology not in next 5 hour less than 5 hour i'm just telling you this so if there is any doubt do let me know do let me know bachche and please be sincere be sincere done okay sure okay so when you talk about the blood coagulation that is blood clotting we know that platelets are going to play the role here and it is a very important mechanism see whenever we get an injury the blood clotting is important if blood will not clot then because of minor injuries also we can die you know the one example hemophilia the bleeders disease hemophilia the bleeders disease now here what is happening let's say there is an injury the broken blood vessel is there whenever that blood vessel is broken the collagen fiber will be exposed the collagen fiber will be exposed blood cells will start moving here right so that collagen exposed collagen fibers will also release means that injured tissue will also release some protein even the platelets will also come here so how to how to remember this see from platelets even from the injured tissue prothromboplastin will be released what will be released prothromboplastin when calcium ions will be present this prothromboplastin will be converted to thromboplastin right this is the protein this is the enzyme here prothromboplastin it will be converted to that and then they are going to act on another protein see actually all of them are all of them are the proteins which are present in the plasma like in the plasma we talk about different different proteins na like uh, im, uh, your immunoglobulins are there immunoglobulins are there right and we even talk about the fibrinogens in the blood plasma right we even talk about one more albumins in the blood plasma remember this remember this so fibrinogen you know that they are related to the blood clotting wala part so whenever there is a blood clotting right even the injured tissue and the platelets they are going to release this prothromboplastin in the presence of calcium ion it will be converted to thromboplastin then prothrombin one more protein present there it under the because of the thromboplastin right or it is also known as prothrombokinase it will be converted to thrombin so this thrombin this reaction is the most important reaction right this reaction is the most important reaction here so this is the fibrinogen which is this is the fibrinogen right which is inactive protein so actually in blood clotting there is a cascade bachche cascade means one after another a process is going on one reaction is triggering next one reaction is triggering next next one reaction is triggering next right so there is a cascade there is a signal cascade there is a reaction cascade so when you talk about the blood clotting so what is going to happen even the injured tissue even the plat platelets they will release prothromboplastin in the presence of calcium ion it will be converted to thromboplastin right but if so for, then another next protein prothrombin will be converted to thrombin and this thrombin is going to act on this fibrinogen it will make fibrin which are insoluble they will form a mash work they will trap some cells also so fibrin monomer will form polymers the blood clot will form so ultimately in a clot rbcs wbcs platelets are present it is just like a mash work of the fibrin right it is just like a mash work of the fibrin so if there is any doubt related to this particular part do let me know bachche 
do let me know if there is any doubt related to this particular part quick 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 all of you be quick please done just a minute done I am receiving your messages lately. I don't know. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, this is what you need to remember. So, ultimately, it is the thromboplastin. This enzyme will help in the activation of this thrombin. And thrombin is very important for the fibrinogen. So, yes, you can get a diagram in the paper. You can get this flow chart. And vitamin K is very important. It will help. Uh, the vitamin K is very important for the blood clotting. No vitamin K. Uh, if no vitamin K is there, then of, obviously, it can affect uh, the blood clotting and even these factors they are synthesized in the liver as uh, right they are synthesized in the liver and one more thing is there bache uh, in this uh, topic there is one more thing one more point is there that you need to remember that uh, whenever it comes to the blood clotting na calcium ions calcium ions are also very important calcium vitamin k both of them are very important and yes you need to remember that fibrinogen fibrinogen is inactive and fibrin is active and yes a student is telling me this but uh, it is also important you can mention if from plasma clotting factors are removed it is going to form the serum like overall from blood if you will remove formed elements and clotting factors it is going to form the serum okay it is going to form the serum done done so if there is any doubt from this particular part do let me know see another reaction chart is there so damaged blood vessel they will stimulate the coagulation of platelets they are going to secrete the thrombokinase right bache so that thrombokinase that thrombokinase will form prothrombin to thrombin and then fibrinogen uh, thrombin will act on fibrinogen and fibrin will form that's all this is all about the blood clotting it's too easy trust me it's too easy so calcium ion vitamin k they are very important now answer this question bache answer few question then we'll be talking about the nodal tissue answer few question and you know clotting time can vary from person to person it is generally from 2 to 6 minutes it varies from person to person a plasma without clotting protein is serum but if they are asking blood so from blood you have to remove the uh, formed element also no for kana okay and bache who is going to subscribe our channel i want to see that number increasing you have to make a uh, make us 20k family soon you really need to okay so answer this in abo system the blood group o is characterized by yes so it is characterized by absence of both the antigen o o is like this o is like this all empty no antigen at all but both the antibodies are there in plasma this plasma protein is responsible for blood coagulation yes this plasma protein is responsible for blood coagulation which protein in plasma is responsible for blood coagulation yes quick yes so here the correct answer is here the correct answer is fibrinogen so fibrinogen is the inactive form of that protein okay okay so before ha 
which of the following blood cells play an important role in the blood clotting which of the following blood cells they play an important role in the blood clotting which of the following blood cells they play an important role in the blood clotting obviously it is very easy that is thrombocytes okay so uh, one more thing is there i just forgot to tell you that uh, see you know that in our blood we have one natural anticoagulant that is heparin okay this is the natural anti blood coagulant which is present right bachche like now i was just telling you about the platelets i was telling you about the blood clotting right if we need to make a clot here if we want to make a clot here because we don't want the blood to get wasted so obviously here we need to inactivate heparin right what we have to do heparin inactivated we need to inactivate the heparin here right so heparin is what it is the natural anti blood coagulant which is present in our blood it is the natural anti blood coagulant which is present in our blood actually what is happening bachche this heparin na this heparin see in our body blood flow is important let's say this is an intact blood vessel this is an intact blood vessel it is taking the blood to the brain let's say it is taking the blood to the brain so you know the name of the artery isn't it it is carotid artery right let's say it is the carotid artery it is taking the oxygenated blood to the brain so if there will be any clot if there will be any clot in this carotid artery so obviously the blood flow will get restricted our blood cells can our brain cells can die our brain cells can die it can result in stroke it can result in paralysis anything can happen okay anything can happen are you getting my point so this is what you need to remember so heparin in our body which is a natural anti blood coagulant in our body when the blood vessels are normal right in that case it will not allow our uh, blood to get coagulated are you getting it it will not allow the blood to get coagulated it will not allow the blood to get clotted there are you getting it this is important so whenever we need to make the clot we need to inactivate the heparin so even that pro thrombokinase enzyme na thrombokinase or pro thrombinase enzyme along with calcium it inactivates heparin right it inactivates heparin fine it inactivates heparin so this is what you need to remember as well okay okay and if uh, uh, in the body sometimes you know there is a disorder sometimes blood clot start forming in the intact blood vessel so that condition that blood clot is known as thrombus and this condition is known as thrombosis thrombosis okay ha huh. and if uh, furkana is right if such type of blood clot will form in coronary artery the artery which is supplying oxygenated blood to the heart muscles then it is the coronary artery disorder it will come under there okay okay so next is bachche nodal tissue see i am not telling you about the diagram of heart right i think i i really believe that at least you know about the heart structure do you yes do you know about the heart structure or you want me to teach that as well matlab this is literally this is what i am assuming that you know about it that we have right auricle we have right ventricle left auricle is there <laughs> left ventricle is there I think you know that much, isn't it? Okay, I'll highlight the important points here. When you talk about the see here, also we have the trick that is Lord. Here also we have the trick that is Lord. So it means that left side will have oxygenated blood, right side of the heart is going to have deoxygenated blood. So when you talk about this right auricle and the right ventricle, right? What is happening from right auricle to right ventricle? You know that blood will pass. because auricles and ventricles they do not have the common musculature right auricle the upper chamber the smaller one ventricle comparatively larger so when you talk about the auricles and ventricles here all the now when you talk about the auricles and the ventricles here in between the right auricle and right ventricle in between the left auricle and the left ventricle auriculo ventricular wells are there auriculo ventricular apertures are there auricular ventricular wells and apertures are there so when it is right side right 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 means right tick tick so tricuspid valve is there right tricuspid valve is there and when it is the left side it is going to be the bicuspid two cusps are present there bicuspid also known as mitral valve also known as mitral valve right so here it is the tricuspid valve when it is the right side here it is the bicuspid valve right also known as mitral valve also known as the mitral valve okay correct 
right correct done so from the right uh, ventricle because bachche it is taking the deoxygenated blood remember this trick right side is having the deoxygenated blood so where will it take the blood tell me where that right side of the heart will carry the blood tell me tell me tell me quickly where that right side of the heart will carry the blood right ventricle is having the oxygenated blood a deoxygenated blood rather where will it carry it obviously to the lungs right let's draw it in a better way just a minute right auricle right ventricle left auricle left ventricle so as i said the trick here is lord right so left side is going to have oxygenated right side is going to have deoxygenated so here bachche the right side will carry the blood to the lungs for the oxygenation and you know that here we have the exception the exception here is pulmonary artery do you remember this exception here is pulmonary artery the pulmonary aorta it is the pulmonary aorta which is going to carry the deoxygenated blood to the lungs because pulmonary word is associated with lungs so here the deoxygenated blood will be carried to the lungs the deoxygenated blood will be carried to the lungs the deoxygenated blood will be carried to the lungs so lung, in the lungs oxygenation will occur right in the lungs oxygenation will occur so lungs you know that from lungs with the help of pulmonary vein the blood will carry to the left auricle then from the bicuspid it will enter in the left ventricle and then from the left ventricle with the help of systemic artery or you can say that dorsal aorta right it will carry to the body parts it will carry to the body parts is that clear it will carry to the body parts so this is what you need to remember right so you know that in the case of humans we study about the two circulations one is pulmonary and another is systemic do you remember this bachche one is pulmonary another is systemic so in the systemic your heart is involved your body is involved except lungs then again heart from heart to body except lungs then back to heart okay but when it is the pulmonary from heart to lungs back to heart this this is the flow of blood right this is the blow, flow of blood are you getting it this is the flow of blood so what is going to happen in your pulmonary circulation with the help of bachche superior and inferior vena cava listen to me very carefully ha huh? listen to me very carefully with the help of superior and inferior vena cava the deoxygenated blood will be carried here to the right auricle then it will pass to the right ventricle then it will go to the lungs right and lungs will oxygenate it then again to the pulmonary vein pulmonary circulation lungs are involved now from left auricle to left ventricle then with the help of the systemic artery or dorsal aorta to the different different body parts and ah, right and again with the help of vena cava back to the right auricle so this is the systemic circulation where lungs are not involved right so this is the example of double circulation this is the example of what this is the example of double circulation now we have to understand that how will it occur right uh, uh, which muscles are involved this is what we need to discuss but uh, again i'll highlight some important points you know that it is the left ventricle which is going to pass the blood to the entire body so left ventricle is having three times thicker musculature than the right ventricle is that clear left ventricle is having three times thicker musculature in comparison to the right ventricle is that clear all of you yes is that clear yes tell me in the chat section bachcho my energy is still high i'm i'm speaking from last 5 to 6 hours right my energy is still high and you people are just chatting no please focus here right so left ventricle is three times thicker than the right ventricles and overall you know that ventricle musculature is thicker than the auricles okay
हाँ यू नीड टू वॉच दैट नो डाउट बट बट सम एनर्जी सम रिस्पॉन्सेज शुड बी देर इन द चार्ट सेक्शन ऑल्सो ना मैम आई हैव अ डाउट दस एपो प्लस बच्चे दिस इज नॉट द प्लान फिजियोलॉजी क्लास आई सून टेक प्लान फिजियोलॉजी क्लास डो मरी अबाउट दैट Anything else? Nope. Okay, then let's go. Mm hmm. Nodal tissue. Diagram is going to be bad, but still. this is what we need to study now okay this is what we need to study now we'll be talking about the morphology of the nodal tissue can you tell me in the chat section that what exactly is the nodal tissue can you tell me in the chat section that what exactly is the nodal tissue anyone anyone what is the meaning of nodal tissue what is this nodal tissue you know that our heart is musculature our heart our heart is made up of muscle right our heart is what our heart is myogenic heart even if we take our heart outside the body you know for sometimes it will keep it will keeps on beating why is it so it will keep beating why is it so what is the reason behind muscular heart it is myogenic heart it is right bachche now if you will understand the morphology of nodal tissue you will get to know about the working of the heart that is the cardiac cycle and this is what we need to understand as of now now before starting it let me highlight one more point here always remember you know the valves here now from right ventricle to left ventricle whenever will blood will pass to the next vessel na always remember at the base of these vessels we have semi lunar wells which wells do we have we have semi uh, lunar wells that is what you need to remember i forgot that uh, right now when you talk about the nodal tissue what we have one is sa node that is sino auricular node right sino auricular node one is av node that is auriculo auriculo ventricular node right it is auriculo ventricular node are you getting it then comes the bundle of his right and left auriculo ventricular bundle will come here and then comes the purkinje fibers right this is the sequence which then comes the purkinje fibers then what do we have we have the purkinje fibers right purkinje fibers now what is this sino auricular node sa node it is actually the natural pacemaker it is actually what it is the natural pacemaker actually bachche what is happening our heart is myogenic our heart is auto excitable very good bachche right right our heart is what it is myogenic our heart is ha our heart is myogenic it is auto excitable what is the word that we have here the word here is auto excitable it is auto excitable means this heart it does not need any nerve impulse for starting its wave of contraction i am not saying that that wave of contractions are not controlled by by the nervous system no no it can be regulated but when it comes to starts when it comes to start the wave of contraction it will be initiated by this muscular patch it, this modified muscular patch that is modified muscular patch and this is the sino auricular node so here in the right auricle right here in the right auricle right to the uppermost corner to uh, right to the uppermost corner towards the left uh, towards the right side we are having a modified muscular patch which is auto excitable and we used to call it as sa node sino auricular node it is the one which will initiate the wave of contraction so when it is contraction you are going to use the word systole right systole the wave of contraction will start means the action potential will generate 
what is going to happen here the action potential will generate the action potential will generate are you getting my point now which the auricles and musculature uh, the ventricles their musculature is not same just take one example there is a building the first floor the owner of first floor and the ground floor they are different right although it is a one building but still right the owner of first floor is poonam the owner of uh, ground floor is 148 iq like this okay so when you talk about this wave of contraction obviously sa node will start the wave of contraction will with the help of muscles obviously it will distribute and it is going to contract your auricles and auricles and musculatures uh, auricles and ventricles they do not have the they do not have the combined musculature their muscles are not all together same auricles this this patch is different just a minute ha huh? let's say this patch is different and their muscular patch is different something like this okay something like this are you getting it so sa node will start the wave of contraction it will result in the contraction of the auricles and slowly slowly with that this wave of contraction passes to the av node right your auricles will start contracting the auricles will start contracting the sa node will contract it will initiate the wave of contraction auricles will contract that wave of contraction will pass to the av node to the av auricular ventricular node it is also known as the pace setter bachche it is also known as the pace setter because it will delay this wave of contraction by 0.1 seconds it will allow the auricles to get empty right it will allow the auricles to get empty are you getting my point right so after this you know that what is going to happen when auricles will contract what is going to happen when the auricles will contract can you tell me what is going to happen when the auricles will contract obviously the blood will start flowing to the respective ventricles the blood will pass to the respective ventricles the blood will pass to the respective ventricles are you getting it are you getting it right so you can say that the filling of ventricles will become more right right okay now what is the next part here okay this is the first part what is the next part here now the wave of contraction will pass to this av node that is auricular ventricular node it is present at the junction of this auricular and ventricle here you are having this auricular ventricular junction it is present there so from this av node bachche here we will be having auricular vascular bundle it is all made up of muscle then this bundle will split into you know uh, left muscle bundle right muscle bundle and then these are the purkinje fibers right so with the help of these purkinje fibers even that wave of contraction will pass to the ventricles right it will pass to the ventricle so this is how the flow occurs so in the case of heart it is just contraction relaxation contraction relaxation contraction relaxation contraction systole relaxation diastole contraction systole relaxation diastole contraction systole relaxation diastole so with the help of this nodal tissue it will occur so you should know the position of nodal tissue you should know where the things are present so i have included that in the notes bachche okay okay so see av uh, sa node av node the bundle of auricular ventricle bundle then it will divide into right and left bundle then the purkinje fibers so this is the tip of the heart apex this is the base the base is broader okay that is how it is present clear bachche and you remember the covering of heart is pericardium two coverings are there the covering of heart is pericardium pericardium in the case of lungs it is pleural membrane here it is pericardium cardia word is associated here done bachche done so in the same way na cardiac cycle is also associated the working of heart is explained with the help of cardiac cycle do you remember this the working of heart is explained with the cardiac cycle so in same way you will be able to understand the cardiac cycle but as of now just write down these points then i'll explain it bachche we are about to finish this chapter then we will take a break for half an hour okay and then you guys can have rest and then we'll start the next chapters and next chapter you know that they are not so easy isn't it they are not so easy they are not so easy right none okay one point of blood means i am not getting it hadikat 
okay so see it's very simple let's say this is the heart okay let's say here we have the heart the right the right side the left the left side now you tell me whenever the wave of contraction will start here whenever it is going to contract the auricles the blood blood will pass to the ventricles so what is happening basically like normally you are sitting normally heart is placed like that there is no contraction and no relaxation so that scenario is bache joint diastole that scenario is what it is joint diastole means even your auricle is not contracting at all your ventricle is not contracting at all your auricle is not contracting at all your ventricle is not contact contracting at all so there will be the joint diastole it is for 0.4 seconds like heart is like i have to work day and night i am made up of cardiac muscles the muscles which will never undergo fatigue they will always work right plus i have the intercalated discs also so heart is like ki yaar i have to contract all the time so i should take rest as well so in the cardiac cycle in the working of heart if you will understand this bachche the lab the heartbeat topic ecg everything is going to be easy please listen to me carefully and then you people will get a break okay so heart is like if i work for 0.4 seconds i'm going to take a rest for 0.4 seconds as well so heart is placed normally neither your auricles are contracting nor your ventricles are contracting it is a state of joint diastole it is a state of joint diastole it is a state of joint diastole right now tell me one thing right tell me one thing now it is totally relaxed like relaxed and here auricular ventricular wells even they are open that type of questions used to come in your neat exam these wells they are open so obviously some blood will also pass from auricles to ventricles isn't it some blood will also pass from auricles to ventricles isn't it some blood will also pass from auricles to ventricle isn't it isn't it Vaseem sir, if you are here, if you are genuinely here, then I want a cup of tea. Yar, you can order it. See, your Vaseem sir is so bad. He didn't know. He didn't even order a cup of tea. Seriously, मतलब a good cup of tea, yar. Do you know how to use Swiggy, Zomato, and all that apps? Do something, yar. This is the team wait I'm ordering. See, I told him I think one hour ago. He's so bad. So in Hindi, for such people, we use one word, and that is conjuice. Okay, conjuice. Conjuice means miser, who's not able, who's not ready to spend even a single penny. <laughs> Now he. <laughs> no ordering ordering you keep off that josh my josh is high what about you ah wasim sir forever wasim sir is doing anything bad but still he is forever hai na hmm hmm even though he is a good man see he is not he is not he cannot even order a cup of tea for his colleague right he cannot even order so please acha in tamil also same word conjuice okay so i have learnt one word hai na it's called savings no 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 saving money for the future ha huh? he, he wants to build a taj mahal hai na hai na so he is saving my 10 or 20 rupees he, he doesn't want to order a cup of tea he just he, he he just wants to save that money hai na so after see after after class he'll be counting oh my god today i saved 20 rupees wow oh today i saved 50 rupees wow isn't it isn't it see i'll start roasting him so <laughs> let's focus here we'll start fighting otherwise let's focus here yeah so we were talking about the joint diastole right relaxed state 
doing nothing. So, still obviously blood will also flow from auricles to ventricles normally, right? Nothing is happening. Easy, easy, easy peasy situation is there. Easy peasy situation is there. Are you getting my point? Are you getting in my point? Okay. Now, th so this is what you need to remember. Now, the next is atrial systole. Atrial systole means contraction of atrial. Uh, contraction of auricle. So, obviously at that time, because we are going to contract the auricles, obviously these auricular ventricular wells, they will remain open at that time. 110% they will remain open at that time. And at that time, semi-lunar wells, which are present at the base of these systemic and dorsal aorta, they are closed. Okay, they are closed. Done, bachche. So, ventricular filling will increase. This is the NCRT statement. Ventricular filling will increase right when there is the auricular contraction. Now, the atrial contraction is just for 0.1 seconds. Why is it so? Because ventricles are just nearby to auricles. Ventricles are just nearby to auricles. Isn't it? Isn't it? Now, from the right side, from the left side, you can see blood vessels are coming although in the structure it is not like that it is not like that but still still so right ventricle here we are having what we are having the pulmonary aorta we are having the pulmonary aorta so at its space also semilunar wells is there so now but what you have to remember that after atrial systole there will be the ventricular systole there will be the contraction of ventricles and it is going to pump the blood to the next blood vessel. So, whenever the ventricular contraction will start at that time, what is going to happen? A very important question, all of you, a very important question, very important question. See, whenever the ventricular systole will start because we do not want the blood to backflow. So, at that time, at the starting of ventricular systole, listen to me very carefully. At the starting of ventricular systole, the auriculoventricular wells, that is your right and uh, your tricuspid and bicuspid valve, they will get closed. And there, their closing will produce the first heart sound that is love. It will produce the first heart sound that is love which is right which is low pitched long duration right law low pitched long duration love so i want to see that love 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 in the chat section guys this is also a pyq i am covering all the possible topics right so, whenever the ventricular systole will start, it will result in the closure of the auriculoventricular wells, right? Auriculoventricular wells will get closed. The closure will result in the formation of first heart sound that is your low pitched, long duration heart sound that is your love. Now, the blood will start flowing to the next blood vessel. So, obviously, at that time, semilunar wells are there. So, bache, by the end of ventricular systole, so, here I can mention in auricular, in ventricular systole, AV wells are closed, they are closed, right? And semilunar wells, initially they are open, but whenever the ventricular pressure will come down, whenever the, there is the ending of ventricular systole, at that time again these vessels will get closed, right? So, when the blood will pass to these vessels, or you can say that end of ventricular systole will result in the closure of semilunar wells and that will produce the second heart sound and I want to see the name in the chat section guys. Name of second heart sound, name of second heart sound, name of second heart sound. What is the name of second heart sound? Unagate me neat English. Even you have to tell what is the name of second heart sound? Exactly. As per NCRT we have to go. So, dub, 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 dub. Right? So, if it is for low pitched long duration, obviously high pitched short duration, high pitched short duration. So, any doubt, any doubt here, any doubt here. So, this is all about the contraction and the relaxation. Same thing you will study in the ECG, right? So, for the ECG, our NCRT is more than sufficient. So, we have to follow the NCRT for it. So, any other topic from this chapter that you people want in the uh, want to discuss now? Yes? That you people want to discuss now, I told you now, till 5 I will finish it. 
and then we'll start the next portion excretory locomotion chemical coordination neural control only important topics we are going to discuss like next chapter we'll start excretory production and its elimination the structure of kidney the structure of nephron if you know the nephron structure urine formation and that counter current mechanism too easy too easy it will be if you know ha huh, in locomotion and movement you have to understand muscle contraction which is very simple and easy and i'll make it very simple for all of you and then i'll give you a flow chart in which i'll tell you all about the uh bones as well then in neural control and coordination we'll be discussing the nerve impulse even i'll teach you about the eye and ear only the important parts of course brain is again theory important points then from chemical control and coordination mechanism of hormonal action right ah i'm going to teach you right now and then i'll give you the break wow my eyes are brownish but this question will not be there in your neat exam ha <laughs> ha focus here ecg so now the next is ecg very important topic again so bachche electrocardiograph even it is known as electrocardiogram but 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 see here you need to remember something when you talk about the ecg ha huh, the machine uh, 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 the machine is known as the machine is known as electrocardiograph and with the help of this machine oh with the help of this machine you people will get a kind of graph na that is electrocardiogram so here they are mentioning that you all have seen that thing in hospital and all obviously we know that so ecg is nothing it is a graphical right it is a graphical representation of electrical activity of the heart during a cardiac cycle it is the electrical it is the electrical uh, activity of the heart it is basically the representation of that electrical activity okay okay right so machine is electrocardiograph it's a pyq done bachche done bachche so to obtain a standard ecg you know that three major leads will be connected to the body even it is more than three but major leads are right the major leads are three electrical leads one to the wrist and to the left ankle and this is your homework you tell me why to wrist and to the left ankle why do we connected to it to the wrist and to the left ankle this is what you need to tell me right so we need to monitor what we need to monitor the heart activity so this type of graph you people will get right so by just looking at this graph can you can we not say that ki p and t they both are blunt they are not pointed and when you talk about q r s they are pointed they are pointed isn't it but if whenever you take the example of a wave we draw it like this positive negative positive negative so which is upper one upper one is crest na this is crest so positive if it is below that negative so your p wave positive wave q positive r uh, t positive and see q is towards the lower side negative s negative isn't it isn't it simple interpretations they are right simple interpretations there next thing that you need to remember p is showing the auricular contraction qrs is showing the ventricular contraction by the the end of t wave is showing the end of contraction so for contraction we use the word systole so let's discuss it from the ncrt so in the ecg in the peak we will check the waves we will check it from late, uh, letters p to t p to t p to are you getting it so p represents the electrical excitation means action potential means contraction means depolarization of the atria so again it's a pyq bachche so p represents what p represents what it represents the excitation of the atria excitation of the auricles means it is representing the contraction of the auricles got it then qrs depolarization of the ventricles right means contraction so for contraction depolarization systole is the word action potential has started this is what you need to remember okay so oh my god seriously we are best friends we are not we are not we are best friends i got tea for you i swear maine order ki theek hai just have a sip first no i am not going to take it first we have a sip It's too good, I swear. You're lying. मतलब I'm safe ना? Yes, you are safe. Okay, now I can have it. What's up, people? What's up? 
See, he saved his twenty rupees. Oh my God, he is going to make Taj Mahal with that twenty rupees. I did not save twenty rupees. Oh. I got it. I but but it. but I I mentioned it so many times. You don't even mention and I get it. I said okay okay. Yeah, that's there. पी लो अब चाय मैं पीऊंगी बस दो मिनट रहे हैं ये वाला टॉपिक खत्म कर देते हैं जस्ट जस्ट टू मिनट्स यू यू स्टैंड देयर नो नो जस्ट जस्ट नो नो आई आई एम कमिंग इन टू मिनट्स यू आर गिविंग अ ब्रेक हां हां हाफ एन आवर का ब्रेक है ओके सो सो सी QRS it is it is showing what it is showing the depolarization of the ventricles means the contraction of ventricles will start so ventricle contraction means your av valves closed your semilunar valve they are open right and now the t wave it's a pyq as well the t wave represents the return of ventricles from contraction to the relaxation normal state after excitation obviously it will come to the normal state that is the repolarization the word is the repolarization here so end of t wave marks the end of systole again a previous year question right it is again a previous year question okay 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 so by counting the number of qrs right bache we can check whether the heart rate is normal or not so it is a it is something very 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 important that's all so rest we will discuss after half an hour so double circulation i already told you arteries and veins ka difference is quite easy that you can learn by so, your own so so they have break for half an hour huh? yes now so we'll right meet at at 5:30 we'll restart guys we back at 5:30 sharp okay yes they have to because now the next chapters are very important. yes we back at 5:30 till then i'll have my tea oh. yes Mom, don't go, please. I'll go. Ha. Chal. Chal. Hmm. Chalo. See you. See you. See you. See you.
on hello hi everyone i'm back how are you how are you so how was the break i think it was a good break isn't it hana isn't it now i think you all are charged up and uh, can devote your 3 to 4 more hours so that uh, we can you know complete this entire syllabus yeah i am late i know actually the studio was locked so i was looking for the card so now now just now i got it just now i got it so tell me how are you everyone how are you how are you guys how are you let's finish the human physiology let's finish the human physiology right let's finish it up oh wow that's so good okay let's not waste the time now let's start the topic let's talk about the excretory products and its elimination so you know that the very first topic here is the human excretory system the diagram is very easy and here if i have to specify so i think uh, even you all know that isn't it just a minute even you all know that isn't it see see the kidney structure so when it comes to the uh, kidney even the ovary even the adrenal gland so you remember na they are having outer cortex and inner medulla isn't it they are having outer cortex and inner medulla do you know that bachche outer cortex and inner medulla is there and here we have one concavity we used to call it as hilum right here we have one concavity that we used to call it as hilum right and it is the point from where with the blood vessels will enter they will leave they will enter they will leave okay bachche okay okay and you know that when it comes to the kidney the basic structural and functional unit is what the basic structural and functional unit is what yes the basic structural and functional unit is what it is nephron it is nephron so this is what you need to revise from this particular diagram right so outer is the cortex inner is the medulla kidney is overall made up of nephrons hilum is the concavity from where the blood vessel will enter or leave and here the kidney is the word so renal artery renal vein you have to focus renal artery renal vein you pe people need to focus okay are you getting my point yes are you getting my point c so now the diagram of nephron is important and trust me if you will understand this particular diagram right everything will become very easy for you then right so if you understand the structure of nephron then counter current mechanism even firstly the urine formation the counter current mechanism everything will be easy for you then are you getting it everything will be easy for you then now just focus here bachche we need to complete the most important topics of this particular chapter as well so are you people ready tell me are you guys ready for that are you people ready for this particular structure the diagrams the important things yes and please is see <coughs> this is the time when you feel too much confused hai na you feel like ki yaar i should revise plant physiology right when you start plant physiology you will start thinking of chemistry then you will start thinking of physics right when you will practice the questions from physics when you guys practice the question from physics then you start thinking of biology so you people just jump right like uh, we have the jumping genes na that uh, junk dna we have transposons so same in that way what do you people used to do you people start from physiology human physiology then you jump to some another session then you jump to some another session then you jump to some another session right this is the i think common emotion that you all people are facing right now but see keep it keep one thing in your head right let's say you were attending this marathon you left it in between now you started attending some plant physiology marathon ya genetics marathon let's say whosoever is teaching what is going to happen you will not be able to revise even a single topic right you will not be able to revise even a single topic right that is not good for you trust me that is not good for you if you are revising human physiology revise it right then 
then go for another unit then go for another topic then go for another subject right then go for another subject right are you getting my point so as of now please these type of emotions are very 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 common but but please fight with the, such emotions okay fight with such emotions and start start focusing on one particular subject whenever you have that such kind of anxiety attacks now oh now i have to revise that i have to revise that just close your eyes ask yourself one question that if i'll do this thing i'm not going to utilize my time properly and now i have to utilize my time properly this is what you people need to do okay so keep doing that right so now focus here let's finish this topic and then we'll talk about the another topic okay now let's talk about the nephron so when it comes to the nephron as i said the structural and functional unit of the structural and functional unit of kidney now in this particular nephron let me draw it properly yeah see this part this part you know that this cup shaped this cup shaped part is what it is the woman's capsule what is it it is the woman's capsule it is also known as malphigian it is the woman's capsule right now in this woman's capsule if you will see we have the tuft of capillaries we used to call it as glomerulus what is it glomerulus so together they are forming the malpigian capsule or the renal capsule right together it is forming the malpigian capsule or the renal capsule are you getting my point are you getting my point right so now and it is the site it is the place where the urine formation the first step of urine formation glomerular filtration will occur okay it is the first step where what is going to happen it is a place where the first step of urine formation the glomerular filtration also known as ultra filtration will occur okay now next to it is next to it is pct proximal convoluted tubule pct proximal convoluted tubule what is it pct proximal convoluted tubule now this u shaped area is what bache it is the loop of henle right the part which is coming down descending limb the part which is going up it is the ascending limb right bache next to it is your dct distal convoluted tubule here it is the collecting tubule and so many collecting tubule they are opening up here in this collecting duct right they are opening up here in this collecting duct are you getting my point are you getting my point this is the basic structure of the nephron now i just told you that when it comes to the kidneys in the kidneys we have outer cortex and the inner medulla what do we have in the kidneys we have outer cortex and inner medulla right we have outer cortex and inner medulla just have a look here see that is how your nephrons are placed here that is how your nephrons are placed here so from this particular diagram what you people can understand that the loop of henle and the part of collecting duct loop of henle and the part of collecting duct where are they placed bachcha they are in the medulla they are in the medulla and this this uh, woman's capsule this proximal convoluted tubule this distal convoluted tubule they are placed in the cortex and here one another topic is the nephron having small loop of henle where the loop of henle is not so long that is known as the cortical nephron that is known as the punum cortical nephron that are making 85% of the nephrons of kidney and we have another nephrons also where this loop of henle is too large and that nephrons are juxta medullary nephrons they are making 50% of the nephrons bachche and they play role in the water reabsorption whenever there is the water scarcity whenever there is the water scarcity they are going to absorb a lot of water they play role in the counter current mechanism they play role in the counter current mechanism are you getting my point counter current mechanism so this is about the two types of nephron now now just look at it now see it is a u shaped pin like structure isn't it so when it is going down 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 like this right down like this up up like this something is descending that is why we say this is the descending limb here something is going up ascending limb clear the diagram clear yes everyone the diagram clear right so it is the descending limb it is the ascending limb it is the descending limb it is the ascending limb are you getting it descending limb ascending limb descending limb ascending limb are you getting it so thick part thin part thick part thin part this is the structure first so the structure needs to be very clear now bachche this is the tuft of capillaries this tuft of capillaries is also going to cover the further part of this nephron right 
it is not like that the blood vessels blood capillaries are just covering your glomerulus they are forming the tuft there only no 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 it is not like that right it is not like that literally it is not like that uh, then see this part this part further is going to form this peritubular capillary network and when it covers this see the u shaped structure the u shaped structure that cover that used to cover this particular loop of henle it is known as can you type the name in the chat section what is it what is it this capillary network which is covering this loop of henle we used to call it as all of you i want to see the energy in the chat section guys and 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 if you are new to our channel please subscribe our channel do subscribe our channel what we used to call it what what we used to call it exactly that is known as vasa recta that is known as vasa recta what is it it is vasa recta but you hear there is one point that i think if you people will understand then the counter current mechanism is going to be very easy see our neat exam is near to us right so we will not go in that much depth we will focus on the ncrt so here the counter current mechanism i'll explain from ncrt but for that there are some points that i think if they are clear in your head now then the topic understanding will be very easy like here i am telling you that when it comes to this nephron structure this part here is the descending limb this part here is the ascending limb this part here is the descending limb this part here is the ascending limb now see this part of vasa recta which is just adjacent to this descending limb it is known as ascending limb of vasa recta like here in the nephron arrows are going down here this is the descending limb but here it is the ascending limb it is the ascending limb now here it is the ascending limb now here it is the descending limb it is the descending limb it is the descending limb are you getting my point are you getting my point i'll draw it separately focus here because I think it is the only confusion that you people used to have most of the time. You don't understand how things are placed. See. Done. That is the diagram. So here this part is the descending limb of vasa recta this part is the ascending limb of vasa recta and 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 here it is the ascending limb of sorry this part is the descending limb of loop of henle this part is the ascending limb of loop of henle and here it is ascending limb of vasa recta and here it is descending limb of vasa recta got it got it this is the position got it this is the position now is it clear now is it clear when you talk about the loop of henle descending limb adjacent to it ascending limb ascending limb near to it descending limb is that clear is that clear yes or no is that clear sure sure this is what you need to remember now <coughs> let's talk about the yes let's talk about this oh uh, 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 just a minute now screen is also tired that from last 3 days you people are taking marathon 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 i'm not in the mood to work properly or efficiently okay okay so this is the diagram so any doubt from diagram it should not be there right it should not be there now bachche let's start the main topic and that is the urine formation okay let's start the main topic and that is the urine formation okay so be ready and if you want to note it down you guys can okay this is the structure that you need to focus okay this is the structure that you all need to focus so look at it first of all bachche when you talk about the women's capsule na in the women's capsule this inner layer right this inner layer of women's capsule when you talk about the women's capsule the inner layer of women's capsule is having specialized epithelium the outer layer outer layer is having simple epithelium but when you talk about the inner layer of the women's capsule it is having the it is having what bachche it is having the specialized epithelium can you tell me about that i'll come to that three step wala process but as of now let's discuss the structure first okay let's discuss the structure first so what are we talking we are saying inner layer of women's capsule so this 
inner layer of women's capsule this inner layer of women's capsule what that inner layer is having some specialized cell and we used to call that cells as podocytes what we used to call that cells we used to call that cell as podocytes right what is the meaning of word poda poda means feet feet so these cells are having you know some feet like feet like processes out there feet like processes out there right bache now focus on this part this is the glomerulus as i said this is the tough tough capillary what is it it is the tough tough capillary right bache tough tough capillary it is and here you will have the endothelial cells of course right and that endothelial cells are placed in such a way that they are having some some filtration pores some slit pores in between they are having some pores in between this is what you guys can say this is what you guys can say are you getting my point now bache what is the blood flow when you talk about the kidney in the kidney of course renal artery will carry the oxygenated blood here in the kidney it is a renal artery which will come now this renal artery because there are 1 million nephron in each kidney do you know that there are near about 1 million nephron in each kidney so two kidney means 2 million nephrons are there so this renal artery it is going to break and it will form the arterioles right it will form the arterioles so remember this bachche so here the part c this part ana means to come inside this part having which is which is comparatively broader the diameter here is more so this renal artery it will break into the renal or you can say that afferent arteriole what is it it is the afferent artery also arteries will break into arterioles arteries will break into arterioles arteries will break into arterioles which glomerulus is just a tuft of capillaries so many capillaries together because here the first step of urine formation will occur so that is why here too much blood supply is present right so renal artery then comes the arterioles then comes the arterioles then we have what we have the glomerulus the tuft of capillary right and now here the part see this glomerulus which is leaving the women's capsule this is known as efferent arteriole so in the diagram this part is important bachche the one which is coming which is entering in this women's capsule this is the efferent arteriole and the one which is leaving the uh, women's capsule it is the efferent arteriole right it is the efferent arteriole so renal artery then comes the renal arteriole uh, efferent arterioles glomerulus then comes the efferent arterioles bachche then comes the efferent arteriole e for exit it is quite narrow and then comes the peritubular capillaries network peritubular capillaries network and what is next can you tell me in the chat section yes everyone the energy should be very high energy should be very high guys see please focus here otherwise there is no need to attend this session you can leave the session right so glomerular then comes the efferent arterioles then come the peritubular capillaries network and you know that this network is forming this vasa recta vasa recta and then comes that vena cava and all and then the oh, sorry vasa recta and then you are having these renal veins all that venules and veins are there venules and veins are there are you getting it are you getting it yes or no yes or no is that clear this is the blood flow now here if you look at this particular part afferent arteriole glomerulus now bachche we need to focus on these layers like this layer is made up of endothelial cells that cells are having pores having gaps in between right having gaps in between what what is the word that we use for that gaps can you tell me what is the word that we use for these gaps anyone fenestrae fenestrae right and you know that this is the single layered epithelium so obviously even it is lying on the basement membrane and here the inner layer of women's capsule is also made up of podocytes and these podocytes are present in such an intricate uh, intricate manner that they are forming the slit pores they are forming the slit pores and why do we have such arrangement here because here we want to filter out the blood here we want to filter out the blood is that clear here we want to filter out the blood so can i say that ki when it comes to the filtration membrane we have three layers again when it comes to the filtration membrane we have three layers here right we have three layers here can you see that like we have the inner layer of women's capsule having podocytes 
we have the endothelial layer of that women's capsule and yes then the basement membrane present in two okay basement membrane present in two done bache basement membrane present in two any doubt now any doubt here and one more thing is here bache do you know the reason behind why is it so why such arrangement is there that efferent arteriole is broader efferent arteriole is narrower do you know that do you know that ha huh? do you know that yes or no do you know the reason behind why is it so that efferent arteriole is broader and efferent arteriole is narrower anyone anyone in the class whosoever is a need aspirant that student is going to answer it that student is going to answer it yes that student is going to answer it quick quick everyone exactly dekho because of this diameter difference na here the pressure pressure will increase right pressure will increase and we need that pressure for the filtration of blood we need that pressure for the filtration of blood right bachche so that that is going to be our next topic that is urine formation okay urine formation so when you talk about the urine formation ultimately we are just purifying the blood whatever is there in excess in blood we just need to eliminate it right we just need to eliminate it so there are three steps the very first step is glomerular filtration it is also known as ultra filtration right the very first step is glomerular filtration it is known as ultra filtration second step is tubular reabsorption it is also ha huh, second step is tubular reabsorption and the third step is tubular secretion so these are the three steps in the urine formation but it is very simple like let's say today you have decided that you are going to clean your room so first of all what will you do you'll be like now okay whatever is whatever waste is there or whatever stuff is present here and there let's let's put it aside this is what you will do let's put it inside isn't it isn't it now what is the next thing that you guys will do out of that stuff you will look for the important stuff that you need right Le let's say your 10th exams are over after the 10th exam remember that excitement now we don't need these notes just throw them out just throw them here and there we don't need these notes just throw them here and there right and then you uh, and if there is something important you will keep it otherwise you will throw it out same as the case here this is how we need to purify the blood okay this is how we need to purify the blood okay okay are you getting it right so we will purify the blood if there is after that filtration if there is anything in excess that we need in our body but still at that is present as a filtrate the nephrons are going to reabsorb it and then again to maintain the ionic balance if it, it is required so h positive k positive will be released again are you getting it it will be released again so these are the three steps in the urine formation so the filtration layer that i taught you right now it is important for the glomerular filtration so now what are the points that you need to remember here is glomerular filtration is a non selective process in this process you cannot say that that there is a proper selection ki this is the material that we need this is the material that we know, uh, that is not required no it is totally random right and it is because of few pressures so do you want to know about that pressures do you want to know about that pressures yes do you want to know about that pressures for the glomerular filtration some pressures are required do you know about it yes or no yes or no do you know about it tell me tell me quickly which pressures are important for the glomerular filtration guys be quick ha blood will be filtered but how but how ha non selective it is what else it will be from filtration layer what else three type of pressures are there very good name that pressures name that pressures very good very good x man what else guys you don't know about that how osmotic pressure is also there but don't you know about that see ve very first is obviously first of all there will be the glomerular pressure 
right the pressure which is there in the glomerulus glomerular blood pressure right glomerulus blood pressure you can also use the word gp okay yeah glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure it is glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure it is actually bache see uh, check it out in this diagram because of the diameter difference blood is flowing with the pressure and now there is a diameter difference and because of that what is going to happen here the pressure will increase a pressure will build we used to call it as glomerular hydrostatic blood pressure glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure right so this pressure is going to favors the filtration what this pressure will do it will favors the filtration and because of that obviously blood filtration will occur but we do not have just one pressure here no we do not have just one pressure here one pressure first pressure is definitely glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure but other than that there are another pressures also now just assume one thing after the filtration of blood if blood will pass here and blood is going to pass here in lumen it is obvious after the filtration of blood definitely blood will pass here in lumen right now here in this blood there will be some proteins there will be some proteins right here in this blood also some components are also there because after the filtration remember one thing uh, you can say that plasma without very large plasma protein is present here here when we talk about the filtration why do we say that ultra filtration glomerular filtration is non selective because leaving just high molecular weight plasma proteins everything will be here in the lumen leaving blood cells leaving high, uh, uh, leaving high molecular weight plasma protein everything from this plasma will be here in this lumen right here in this lumen so the very first pressure that we are talking is glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure right and it favors the filtration it favors the filtration okay what is the next pressure here next is bachche blood colloidal osmotic pressure can you tell me anything about that blood colloidal osmotic pressure can you tell me anything about that now you know that if blood will flow here blood is also having some proteins but some of the proteins will resist the filtration na some of the proteins will not allow the filtration to occur are you getting my point some of the proteins will not allow see first of all blood is flowing here because of pressure difference because of diameter difference there is a pressure that is glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure it is going to favors the filtration then comes the blood colloidal osmotic pressure and one is capsular hydrostatic pressure one is capsular hydrostatic pressure so these are the three pressure that will build here or out of that three pressure only this pressure favors the filtration only this pressure favors filtration just remember this point okay just remember this point so here this blood colloidal osmotic pressure now as i said filtration has been done here again the blood is flowing now here in this blood also some proteins are there that proteins are going to resist the filtration bachche that proteins are going to resist the filtration what that proteins will do that proteins will resist the filtration they will not allow the blood to filter properly that is blood colloidal osmotic pressure next is bachche capsular hydrostatic pressure capsular hydrostatic pressure now some filtrate is also present here it will also resist the filtration right so what you have to remember only glomerular blood hydrostatic pressure is favoring the filtration these two pressure they resist filtration they resist filtration right they are going to stop the filtration so all in all all in all we will be having some effective filtration pressure or net effective filtration pressure we'll be having what we'll be having net effective filtration pressure or effective filtration pressure and that is near about 10 mm of hg or 15 mm of hg 10 to 15 mm of hg are you getting my point 10 to 15 mm of hg are you getting my point so here you have the effective filtration pressure got it bachche got it so all in all we can say that for glomerular filtration there is a pressure effective filtration pressure near about 10 mm of hg or 15 mm of hg ha 10 to 20 you can keep bachche rhythm done done the first step clear so all the essential things just imagine the glucose the essential ions all are present in this lumen so don't you think that we need to reabsorb it don't you think that we need to reabsorb it so next reabsorption is going to occur in the next part that is your pct proximal convoluted tubule right so can you tell me what type of epithelium is there in pct bachche what type of epithelium is there in pct see this is a diagram that we all are discussing right now what type of epithelium is there 
we are talking about the urine formation of three steps are there glomerular filtration i told you can you tell me what type of epithelium is there in the pct yes what type of epithelium is there in the pct anyone in the class guys now focus here it is the cuboidal brush bordered epithelium it is the cuboidal brush bordered epithelium it's a pyq right it's a pyq okay it's a pyq so what is going to happen the first step i said as i said glomerular filtration the second is the tubular reabsorption so from this proximal convoluted tubule from the pct maximum absorption will be there 70 to 90% electrolytes will be reabsorbed right so water glucose amino acid everything important will be reabsorbed either actively or passively either actively or passively then is the tubular secretion as i said just to maintain the ionic balance again h positive k positive bicarbonate whatever is required it will be released again in that filtrate so the very first point that you need to remember is ki here after the filtration you cannot say that that we have formed the urine no it is just the filtrate or glomerular filtrate right it is just the glomerular filtrate it is just the glomerular filter because urine will form later urine will form later are you getting my point urine will form later right bachche so question can come from this part from this diagram but before uh, studying this diagram let's talk about this part okay let's talk about this part so pct very important mcq is ki pct is lined by bachche it is lined by simple cuboidal brush bordered epithelium it's a pyq and maybe it will be a cyq right maybe it will be a cyq that is coming here question ya current year question are you getting it guys see today we have a target okay the very first target is ki likes should be more than 2000 so still still right we need to focus there second thing is that ki today i want that we should be 16k subscriber family okay we should be 16k we want to be the 16k subscriber family so for that of course we need your support we are expecting your support okay so if you are new to our channel do subscribe this channel do subscribe this channel okay formed elements are the part of filtrate or retentate but see here it doesn't matter formed elements are just the blood cells they should not be there in the blood it is abnormal if rbcs will be there in blood they will not get filter out of course okay okay so number of likes should be more number of subscribers should be more today so now this is the one question that you need to remember so as i said from this pct see what is the beauty of this brush bordered epithelium what is the beauty of such type of cells what is the beauty of such type of cells bachche with the help of these cells maximum absorption will occur right so pct is lined with simple brush bordered epithelium it is lined with simple brush bordered epithelium and 70 to 80% of the electrolytes will be reabsorbed here so this is what you need to keep in your head okay bachche right so your glucose amino acid even actively they will be reabsorbed even actively by the use of atp they will be reabsorbed because presence of glucose in urine is abnormal if glucose is there in urine it indicates glycosuria right and it it indicates diabetes mellitus it indicates diabetes mellitus so glucose should not be there in urine it is abnormal it it indicates that the metabolism is not proper it indicates the condition glycosuria it indicates the diabetes mellitus are you getting it diabetes mellitus okay so pct also helps in maintaining ph and ionic balance i told you because along with reabsorption whenever required h positive and k positive or bicarbonate will be released now come to the henle's loop very 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 important it is bachche from the henle's loop another important question definitely bachche this year question will come from this part see it is impermeable to electrolytes it is impermeable to electrolytes means to ions but it is permeable to water right it is impermeable to electrolytes but it is permeable to water 
right in the ncrt entire length is mentioned but majorly from the thin part of the descending limb we used to consider that right from the thin part of the descending limb we used to consider that so it is impermeable to water it is impermeable to electrolytes got it bache now here see this part this is the thin part of ascending limb this is the thick part of ascending limb now bache from thin part this side the entire side of this ascending limb it is permeable to electrolytes but impermeable to water it is permeable to electrolytes but it is impermeable to water this is something very important right this is something very important so now just check just understand this part see if filtrate is coming down filtrate is coming down filtrate is coming down and if this side is permeable to water obviously water will come out being permeable means water can enter or leave but here just consider one thing that water is coming out so obviously when this filtrate will go down when this filtrate will go down obviously the filtrate that will reach here it will become hypertonic yes or no the filtrate will become hypertonic because the amount of water is less but the filtrate is more amount of water is less filtrate is more amount of water is less filtrate is more yes or no yes or no bachche quickly tell me yes or no bachche ha huh? yes or no of course of course right now from this side when you talk about the thin limb nacl even the urea urea can even enter also some amount of urea even get enter nacl will come out now water will not come out right here nacl will come out passively here nacl will come out passively and when you talk about this thick part right when you talk about this thick part nacl will also come actively here right sodium electrolytes will also come actively here so what am i trying to say that from this particular portion ultimately electrolytes will come out they will be there in this medullary fluid right they will be there in this medullary fluid are you getting my point right bachche so obviously when electrolytes will come out and when the filtrate will go up it will become hypotonic see we have two ways either you can score good marks either you can score full house in the neat exam 720 out of 720 or you can pray or you can expect that no one should score full house are you getting my point there are two ways na there are two approaches you can be optimist you can be pessimist yeah you can say that one is can be the negative approach another can be the positive approach one approach is you have decided you are going to score you are going to score full house in the neat exam just imagine it once just imagine it once you are scoring the full house in the neat exam in uh, in the neat examination 720 out of 720 imagine it once hai na imagine it once just imagine right so another approach can be ki others should not score good marks others should not score good marks right so same as the case here from this side water is coming down that is why filtrate is becoming hypertonic now when it will go up electrolyte is coming out now just imagine you have a concentrated solution from that in that concentrated solution if you cannot put the water at least you can remove the electrolyte same is the thing that we are doing here same is the thing that we we are doing here so obviously when this filtrate will go up it will become hypotonic and then it will pass to the then it will pass to the dct so from this particular paragraph of ncrt yes question can come and i already told you what type of question can come so reabsorption is minimum in its ascending limb so this region plays a significant role in maintenance of high osmolarity okay okay this region this loop of henle will maintain the osmolarity and remember that it is the nacl and urea that helps in maintaining osmolarity that helps in maintaining the osmolarity of the medullary fluid is that clear bachche is that clear so descending limb as i said is permeable to water and impermeable to electrolytes right so this concentrates the filtrate as it moves down so ascending limb is impermeable to water but allows the transport of electrolyte so it will make it hypotonic so any doubt here bachche tell me any doubt here now when you talk about the distal convoluted tubule dct here the word is conditional reabsorption means whenever required right whenever required are you getting it whenever required the word here is what the word here is conditional reabsorption right conditional reabsorption whenever required there will be the absorption of the sodium 
there will be the absorption of the sodium and water right and it will be under the influence of the hormone aldosterone you can put it a note here right it is under the influence of the hormone aldosterone are you getting it under the influence of the hormone aldosterone right bache so dct can even absorb bicarbonates and selective secretion of h positive and k positive will be there from collecting duct again the water will be reabsorbed whenever required and from this collecting duct some amount of urea will also be reabsorbed okay some amount of urea will also be reabsorbed okay right so just have a look here so see this bicarbonate is coming down uh, coming out nacl water nutrients even some amount of h h positive will be added even ammonia will be added right right and here from this part you can see the water will be reabsorbed and some amount of urea will be added in the medullary fluid and here some amount of urea will also enter right so this is what you people need to remember is it clear tell me in the chat section bachcha is it clear because after this counter current mechanism and then regulation of kidney function very important very important now you know na we are in that pace we can finish it asap we can finish it asap but but obviously show some energy guys show some energy show some energy bachche quick done okay ready so any doubt here in this diagram any specific doubt anything that you want to know from this particular part anything sure 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 so guys some energy in the chat section quick quick any trick for the but a reabsorption of iron is there reabsorption of amino acid reabsorption of your see chloride water urea in their case was always passive glucose and amino acid activities this is what you need to remember for these two activities okay done done okay so the next topic is the counter current mechanism next topic is the counter current mechanism it is all about the osmolarity see if i need to take the water if i want to take some water from the from a solution let's say here i have a solution this solution is lined with this solution with is lined with a semi permeable membrane here also i have a solution so if i want to take out water from this solution na so it is mandatory that here in the surrounding the solute should be more don't you think so don't you think so if i need to take out water from this particular solution so obviously it is mandatory that surrounding should be hypertonic surrounding should have more solute yes or no surrounding should have more solute surrounding should be hypertonic isn't it bachche obviously it is important right obviously it is important right so now in the counter current mechanism what exactly is the scenario if you want to if you are doing this topic for the first time right right if you see listen to me if you want right if you want to understand this topic and if you are studying this for the first time the important point for counter current mechanism that you need to remember is first the juxta medullary nephrons are going to play role here the juxta medullary nephrons having you know long loop of henle having the vasa recta they are going to play the role here secondly counter current mechanism it is there in the case of birds in the case of mammals where we need to you know absorb more water where more water needs to be absorbed right where more water needs to be absorbed are you getting my point are you getting my point more water needs to be absorbed this is the important thing so this is a mechanism in the advanced vertebrate so that for it is for the terrestrial adaptation so that they can reabsorb more water more water more water this point clear bachcha this point clear now the another point that you need to remember is when you talk about the when you talk about the descending limb of loop of henle and ascending limb of loop of henle right it is permeable to water it is permeable to electrolyte this is what you need to remember okay and the third point according to me the third point that you should remember is this this particular part the diagram and the structure present here okay the diagram 
and the structure present here and it is C. C. This is the descending limb of loop of Henle. This is the ascending limb of Vasa recta. So, tell me these three points are clear. Yes, these three points are clear. Tell me quickly in the chat section guys. Tell me quickly in the chat section. Tell me quickly in the chat section. Huh? Huh? Yes, these three points are clear to you. Now, here in counter current mechanism, what is going to happen? There are few points that, uh, huh? See, here you have the cortex, here you have the medulla, right? So, in the cortex, the osmolarity, the solute concentration is 300 m osmol per liter, right? When you go down, 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 when you reach here somewhere in deep inside the inner mod, uh, medulla, it is going to be m osmol, uh, 1200 m osmol per liter. And when again that, when again that filtrate, when it will come out, again it will reach somewhere near about 300 m osmol and even lower than that. Right. So, it is all about osmolarity. It is all about osmolarity. In the kidneys, with the help of NaCl and urea, osmolarity, that is solute concentration, it is maintained in such a way, it is maintained in such a way that we can withdraw more and more water out of that nephron. Right. So, that we can withdraw more and more water out of that nephron. Are you getting my point? So, that we can withdraw more and more water out of that nephron. This is what we need to understand as of now. Right. So, firstly, let us take the example of, yes, firstly, of course, let us take the example of the same. Right. Let us take the example. Now, you know that this descending limb is covered with the this uh, loop of Henle is covered with the Vasa recta. Vasa recta is nothing but it is the blood capillary. Water, uh, Vasa recta is nothing, it is the blood capillary. Vasa recta is having pr no problem with anyone. Vasa recta is like, if I will get water, I will take water. If I will get electrolytes, I will take electrolytes. If I will get water, I will take water. If I will get electrolytes, I will uh, get electrolytes. So, here it is in the surrounding, you are having the medullary fluid. What do you have here? You are having the medullary fluid. Now, what you people need to understand here, see, from this side, water is coming water is coming, water is coming. See, this is my way to remember it. This is my way to remember it. First of all, just revise it in this way. Just remember it in this way. Then I will tell you the logic behind. Right? Then I will tell you the logic behind. So, please listen to me very carefully. So, from this particular descending limb of loop of Henle, water is coming out. That water will be taken by this. This ascending limb. Right? First of all, uh, my bad. First of all, I will tell you what exactly is the meaning of counter current. We are studying the counter current mechanism. I told you it is a mechanism in the birds and mammals so that they can conserve more water. Counter current means opposite flow. Just say here in this descending limb of loop of Henle, water is coming down. Here in this ascending limb of loop of Henle, water is uh, filtrate is going up. So, this mechanism, the flow is in opposite direction. We use the word counter current. Now, when you look at the Vasa recta again here, the blood is coming down here, the blood is going up. So, they both are again, the direction of flow is opposite. And even if you compare these two close, close vessels, again, right, if you compare this Vasa recta and descending limb, again, you will see the blood flow, uh, the flow uh, is in opposite direction. The flow is in opposite direction. This is the mean of, uh, this is the meaning of counter current. Now, what you have to remember, from this part, water is coming out. From this part, water is coming out in fluid. In the surrounding, we are having the ascending limb of Vasa recta. It will take up that water. It will take up that water. This is what you need to remember. Now, from this side, this side, NaCl is coming out. That NaCl will be carried away by this descending limb. It will carry the NaCl from this part. And even this NaCl will be released again here. That is the story. Means it is simply like you are picking up something. Uh, let's say you are picking us picking something from this side. You are dropping it to another side. But ultimately, it will remain in this common portion. Like say, let's say I am in this room, right? I am picking up this bag from this side, and now I am keeping it here. Okay, I am keeping it here. Ultimately, the bag is in the room only, na? 
बैग इज इन द रूम ओनली आई एम नॉट थ्रोइंग इट आउट साइड राइट वसीम इज वसीम सर इज नॉट स्टैंडिंग आउट साइड अदरवाइज आई वुड हैव ओके आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट सो दिस इज द पॉइंट राइट नाउ आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट दिस इज द पॉइंट राइट नाउ सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग हियर वॉटर इज कमिंग आउट दैट वॉटर विल बी टेकन अप बाई दिस ब्लड कैपिलरी राइट राइट From this side, NaCl is coming out. That NaCl will be taken out by this blood capillary. So whenever this blood capillary will take out the NaCl, it will again. This blood capillary is taking out the NaCl from this side, and it is dropping it again to the this side, right? So this is the flow only. Trust me, this is the flow only. Trust me, literally this is the flow. Now just imagine. Filtrate is coming out here. Filtrate is coming out here. Water will come out from this filtrate. From here, from this filtrate, NaCl is coming out. Now NaCl will be picked up by the blood capillary. NaCl is not present here. It is picked up by blood capillary, and blood capillary will again drop it here. Okay. Now the point here is, if you see NaCl is coming out from filtrate, again that NaCl will be dropped here. If water is coming out from filtrate, that water will pass here into the blood capillaries. Water will be reabsorbed ultimately. So ultimately, the movement of NaCl is urea, and urea is going on. So for this particular neat year exam, if you will remember this fundana, trust me, you will be able to solve the question. I'll tell you how from the NCERT. Simply for this particular topic, we are going for the NCERT only. okay so mammals have the ability to produce a concentrated urine like see the filtrate that we form and the urine that we form see urine is four times urine is four times more concentrated than filtrate If urine is four times more concentrated than filtrate that is what you people need to remember when you talk about this filtrate its osmolarity is 300 m osmol per liter but when the urine will be passed out its osmolarity is going to be 1200 m osmol per liter so obviously it is four times right it is four times more concentrated than the filtrate isn't it isn't it so mammals they have the ability to produce a concentrated urine the henle's loop and wasser ecta play a role i told you so flow of the filtrate is in opposite direction i told you that right bachche so proximity means closeness closeness between the henle's and wasser ecta as well as the counter current is help in maintaining this osmolarity so towards the outer cortex osmolarity is 300 m osmol per liter and when you talk about the inner medulla it is 1200 m osmol per liter so up to this part any doubt tell me up to this part any doubt If there is any doubt up to this part, do let me know. Any doubt up to this part? Yes. Any doubt till this part? Sure, sure. So, as I said, gradient is mainly caused by NaCl and urea. Again, a PYQ. Again, a V. M or small per liter it is. Okay, so NaCl is transported by ascending limb of Henle's loop, which is exchanged with the descending limb of Wasser recta. Any doubt here? Any doubt here? This diagram. Uh oh. This diagram is explaining NaCl will be passed out by the ascending limb of loop of Henle, and uh, and it will be picked up by the descending limb of this Wasser recta. The same line is written here. right the nacl is transported by ascending limb of loop of henle which is exchanged with the descending limb of wasser recta tell me any doubt n any doubt any doubt then nacl is returned to the interstitium by ascending portion of wasser recta similarly small amount of urea enter the thin segment of ascending limb of loop of henle right so ultimately there is the movement of urea only there is a movement of urea we need to maintain the osmolarity of the uh, interstitial fluid because we want to take out more and more more and more water from the filtrate water will only come out when the surrounding will be concentrated so if in the surrounding like you know that if the ascending limb of wasser recta is putting out nacl again in the medullary fluid so it will take water from the filtrate it will take water from the 
filtrate the water which is there in the descending limb it will be taken out so it is just all this setup is just to take out more and more water that water will again be passed in this again be passed in the blood capillary and then it will come in the circulation are you getting my point so this is how it works right so this is how it works so if there is any other doubt from this particular part do let me know only that simple diagram it is the key trust me only that simple diagram is the key as of now if you know if you are not able to understand the detail that now how is it possible see sometimes it is complicated also we are not able to understand that how things are happening but trust me i will tell you but whenever we'll start this topic in detail but as of now you are need 2023 aspirant just focus here right as of now just focus here done bachche done so that is the point only okay okay so next topic that we need to study from this particular part is the regulation of kidney function what we need to study from this particular part the regulation of kidney function so what do you know about it anything that you people know from this portion anything that you people know from this portion yes 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 anything sure sure okay done now now i think you all know one thing that the dct the nephrons 1 million nephrons are present right 1 million nephrons are present in each kidney so obviously they are highly coiled structure highly coiled structure which are present so when you talk about when you talk about these nephron you know one thing na jaise we have the juxta glomerular apparatus how many of you are well aware of it juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus right juxta glomerular apparatus when you talk about the juxta glomerular apparatus we have the juxta glomerular cells also known as granular cells right we have the juxta glomerular cells also known as uh, granular cell the another thing that we have here is yes one is the juxta glomerular cell another is the macula densa right let's go as per ncrt another is the macular densa we have one thing here in the kidneys that is the juxta glomerular apparatus juxta glomerular apparatus is having juxta glomerular cells also known as granular cells and the macular densa and the macular densa actually what is happening bachche you know that we need to filter out the blood in the kidneys we need to filter out the blood in the kidney so there should be blood pressure there should be a proper pressure so we used to call it as glomerular and there should be a proper pressure glomerular filter pressure and that is going to determine the glomerular filtration rate that is going to determine the glomerular filtration rate right that is going to determine what that is going to determine the glomerular filtration rate that is gfr so what exactly is the gfr can you tell me in the chat section what exactly is the gfr can you tell me in the chat section what exactly is the gfr can you tell me in the chat section are an academy neat english keep up the fire on chat are they cannot are their energy is very low they cannot study that much they don't know when when they'll become doctor na they have to study that big 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 books their energy is too low literally they their energy is too low Huh? Hey, now your energy is too low, isn't it? Your energy is too low, isn't it? I can see that. I can feel that. You people are running out of energy. My energy is still very high. just a minute
ओके हाँ सो ग्लोमेरुलर फिल्ट्रेशन रेट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ ब्लड फिल्टर्ड बाय किडनी इन वन मिनट एंड दैट यू नो दैट इज 125 ट्वेंटी पर मिनट What is it? That is 125 ml per minute. And when you talk about the day, it is 1800 or 1.8 liter per day. How much it is? It is glomerular filtration rate is 125 ml per minute. And what about the day? Per day it is not. No, it is not 125 milliliter per day. No, it is 125 milliliter per minute. And what about a day? What about a day, guys? What about a day? Tell me what about a day? One eighty liter per day, right? So one twenty ml per minute and one twenty eight, one eighty liter per day, one twenty five ml per minute and one eighty liter per day, right? Right? Exactly. Is it one eighty liter or one point eight liter? Ha, oh. oh. ha. Ha. Per minute, if it is one. 125 ml. Then what is going to happen? But yeah, how can you even multiply 24? 24 hours. Here we are talking about the minute. You you really need to revise the things. Okay. So when you talk about the GFR, GFR is 125 ml per it uh, per minute, right? Now whenever the GFR is low, see, whenever the blood pressure is low, it is going to affect the glomerular filtration rate. right glomerular filtration pressure will be low and the glomerular filtration rate will also be less glomerular filtration rate will also be less so whenever the gfr is less na whenever the gfr is less this glomerular this juxta glomerular apparatus it gets activated do you know that whenever the gfr is low at that time this juxta glomerular apparatus it gets right it gets activated now what is going to happen here there are we are having two cells granular cells and macular densa granular cells are present here in arteriolars right these are the granular cells obviously produce some granules the granules basically renin will be produced right basically what is going to happen here here the renin will be produced r e n i n single n renin single n because kidney is already having one n kidney is already having one n right kidney is already having one end so here it is the renin single end renin right so renin and what is the role of macula densa actually macula macula densa is present here these are the specialized cell whenever the distal convoluted tubule just imagine in your nephron d dct is coiled in such a way that dct is touching these arterioles so the point at where the dct is touching these arterioles the cells will become modified right the cells will become modified they will become modified they will become kind of columnar this is the macula densa actually they will they are act like the receptors right they act like the receptor so in neat exam what question can come in neat exam they can ask you renin renin is released by granular uh, granular uh, granular cells and when will renin be released when gfr is low when gfr is low right when gfr is low is that clear is that clear now that renin renin will do what can you tell me how that renin is going to help can you tell me anyone in the class can you tell me how that renin is going to help okay we'll discuss this but up to this part if there is any doubt please feel free to ask okay feel free to ask oh i didn't add it from ncert it's okay we'll discuss that and after that we'll practice so many questions okay what is the role of this renin here ha huh? what is the role of this renin here pressure will in ha huh, it is going to increase the pressure it is going to increase the gfr but how the point here is how how will it do that ha huh? how will it do that so that we will learn in the case of ras mechanism okay ras mechanism so what is this ras mechanism bachche it is renin angiotensin aldosterone system what is it it is renin angiotensin aldosterone system what is it it is ras mechanism now as i said when the gfr is low when the gfr is low the granular cells are going to release the renin 
the granular cells are going to release the renin. Now, bache, in our blood, there is a protein. That protein is known as angiotensinogen. In our blood, there is a protein. That protein is angiotensinogen. So, angiotensinogen is present in plasma, but it is synthesized in liver. Even it is a PYQ. It is present in plasma, but synthesized by liver. Present in plasma, but it is synthesized by liver. What? Angiotensinogen. Now, the renin is going to act on this angiotensinogen. And what will you get here? You will get angiotensin. You will get angiotensin because this is the inactive form. You will get the active form angiotensin. Now, this angiotensin 1, it will be converted to angiotensin 2. Where? In the lungs. Lungs are having the enzymes. In the lungs, we are having this complex which is going to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 which is going to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And let me tell you, this angiotensin 2, it even acts on the PCT, it even increases the absorption, right? Even it increases the absorption, let me tell you, right? It constricts that part also. Now, this angiotensin 2 is going to act on your adrenal gland, the cap of kidney. It is going to act on that adrenal gland, the cap of kidney. And in adrenal gland, it will act on adrenal cortex. And in response to that, adrenal cortex will release the aldosterone. And that aldosterone, you know that it will act on DCT, it will act on CT and it will increase the water absorption. So, water absorption will be increased, fluid volume will increase, ultimately blood pressure will increase. Right? Ultimately, blood pressure will increase. So, this is what you need to remember, the RAS mechanism. So, everything is related here. Everything is related here. So, see, angiotensin, here it is written incorrectly. Just a minute. It should be angiotensinogen because that is the inactive form. So, renin will act on it, angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2. So, that angiotensin 2, aldosterone, right? So, that is going to cause the conditional reabsorption, blood volume will be increased. Along with that, angiotensin 2 also helps in the role of antidiuretic hormone that is also known as vasopressin. Do you know about vasopressin? Antidiuretic. It prevents diuresis. It prevents excess of urination. Okay, bache? Right, bache? Is it clear or not? So, you can see here. Right? So, see, this is the best diagram. Liver is making this, renin is acting on it, angiotensin 2 will form. So, ultimately, aldosterone will be released, conditional reabsorption of sodium and water will be there, body fluid volume will increase and that body fluid volume uh, will increase the GFR and everything will come at its balance. Okay? Okay? And more, one more thing is there, bache. Now, heart. Heart used to release ANF. That is atrial natriuretic factor. That is atrial natriuretic factor. What is it? Atrial natriuretic factor. This hormone acts like a check on RAS mechanism. It acts like a check on RAS mechanism. It is, it will act like a vasodilator, right? It is, it will act like a vasodilator. It will maintain the blood pressure. It will not let it increase. It will not let it increase. Is that clear? The ANF right ENFs. So, this is all about the regulation of kidney function as well. So, when it comes to ADH that is vasopressin, that vasopressin is going to do what? It prevent diuresis. Okay, so wherever there is a, the water scarcity in the body, excessive urination is prevented by ADH and if there is a hyposecretion of ADS, ADH diabetes insipidus can occur. Right? Right? Diabetes insipidus can occur. Now, answer this question, bache. Chloride ions are reabsorbed from glomerular filtrate in urinary pharestibules by? Yes, by. Tell me. Quick, bache. What should be the correct answer here? What should be the correct answer here? Oh? 
all of you please answer it please answer it yes and the target for likes it is 2k plus so do it okay so chloride ions are reabsorbed from glomerular filtrate always it will be done passively right always when it comes to the chloride ion when it comes to the water when it comes to the urea always passively right always passively done bache the next which of the following statement is correct which of the following statement is correct tell me which of the following statement is correct Which statement is correct here? The descending limb of loop of Henle is impermeable to water. That is permeable to water. The ascending limb of loop of Henle is permeable to water. Impermeable to water. The descending limb of loop of Henle is permeable to electrolytes. No. So ascending limb of loop of Henle is impermeable to water. Yes. Right. So this is the correct answer. Right. right so the next 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 question salts are reabsorbed from glomerular by how the salts will be reabsorbed we need to reabsorb the salts how the salts will be reabsorbed by glomerular yes of course here the correct answer is what it is mineralocorticoid actually the aldosterone is the example of mineralocorticoid right aldosterone is the example of mineralocorticoid clear so next in human kidney the filtration pressure is about noise the filtration pressure is about in the human kidney is the filtration pressure is about the filtration pressure is about 10 to 20 mm of hg so obviously a is the correct answer right bachche so the next chapter is locomotion and movement locomotion and movement so so are you excited to start this chapter are you excited to start this chapter ha huh? sure sure okay so now answer the question which one is the only movable bone of skull which one is the only movable bone of skull which one is the only movable bone of skull answer it then i'll start which one is the only movable bone of skull guys be quick now your charts are late and do share the video bachche do share with your friends those who want to revise the locomotion and movement neural control and coordination and chemical control and coordination so two minutes break na you just got a break ha huh? mendable yes exactly it is mendable right it is mendable right okay so now tell me which bones they make the pectoral girdle in general i'm asking you the question right in general i'm asking you the question till then you all can subscribe our channel you all can like our video and you all can share it as well हा पिक्चर इज लुकिंग लाइक एवोल्यूशन अरे यू ऑलरेडी गॉट अ ब्रेक न नंबर ऑफ लाइफ व्यूअर शुड बी मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड सी इन द मॉर्निंग नाइन हंड्रेड प्लस स्टूडेंट्स वर देयर आई डोंट नो वॉट आर दे डूइंग हाँ देर इज अ लैग इन चैट सी वन आई कैन फील दैट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द पेक्टोरल गर्डल पेक्टोरल गर्डल इज मेड अप ऑफ विच बोन्स दैट इज क्लेविकल एंड स्कैप्यूला क्लेविकल एंड स्कैप्यूला येस clavicle and scapula okay how many bones are making the cranium answer it how many bones are making the cranium how many bones are making the cranium there are eight bones there are eight bones okay there are eight bones prem i just told you there is no trick required please do not spam okay 
okay sure are you sure everyone are you sure okay let's let's continue now let's discuss the topic so in the locomotion and movement you know that movement obviously muscles are going to play role in the movement but when the word is movement what is the word the word what is the word the word is movement any type of movement like uh, in our body to you know different different types of movements are there ciliary movement is there even in the case of sperms flagellar movement is there even see uh, amoeboid movements are there your wbcs they move in such a way and in general if i mention it so see if i'm blinking my eyes example of movement i'm moving my hands like this example of movement the another word here is locomotion locomotion lo l location so whenever any movement which see any movement which results in the change of location any movement which results in the change of location is considered as locomotion right so in general movements are there even you know that in our uh, digestive system we studied that there will be the movement uh, there will be the peristalsis there will be the rhythmic contraction and relaxation rhythmic contraction and relaxation isn't it isn't it isn't it so obviously they are also uh, the muscles are moving na they are also muscles are moving but any movement by which there is a change in location that is referred to as locomotion so can i say that that locomotion is also all the locomotions are movement but all the movements are not locomotion can i say so that all the lo uh, locomotions are movements but all the movements are not locomotion can i say so yes everyone can i say so yes or no ha huh? ha huh? all the movements are all the locomotion are movement locomotion means change in location it is also a movement but all the movements are not resulting in changing our location so that is why all the movements are not locomotion clear clear so here the very first thing that we need to start is the muscle okay after muscles we'll talk about the skeletal system but first of all let's talk about the muscle so three type of muscles are there the difference is important the cardiac the smooth the skeletal muscle is there so here it is the smooth which is involuntary it is the cardiac which is involuntary cardiac is the word so you know that cardiac muscles they are associated with the heart they are the muscles which will work day and night they never undergo fatigue in the cardiac muscle the question important from examination point of view is this intercalated disc cardiac muscles are the one where you will find the intercalated disc cardiac muscle is the one where you are going to find the intercalated disc right what will you find there intercalated disc so intercalated disc is nothing see in the cardiac muscles they are branched they work together as a unit so at points they are fused like gap junctions we used to have na so at points they are fused they are making the intercalated discs at that point right they are making the intercalated discs at that point right they are making the intercalated discs at that point are you getting it are you getting it so this is what you need to remember in the case of cardiac muscle so they do not get fatigue they are involuntary so if they are involuntary obviously they are even under the control of cns central nervous system and autonomic nervous system abundant blood supply is provided to them right bachche yes they are also striated but intercalated discs point is the most important point then comes the smooth muscle then comes the smooth muscle so smooth muscles you know that if they are non striated that is why they are smooth they are fusy form they are uninucleated right they are uninucleated right they are spindle shaped they line the hollow organs of the body right bachche they uh, the smooth muscles right slowly slowly they will undergo fatigue they will they they doesn't go fatigue they, they, they do not fatigue very quickly they they gets fatigue very rarely okay okay again they are also involuntary now when it comes to the skeletal muscle in the skeletal muscle again this intercalated disc is absent that we know striations are there some lines are there and these are the muscles which will undergo fatigue very 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 easily okay these are the muscles which will undergo fatigue very quickly okay very quickly immediately you know na in this case of skeletal muscle we talk about the lactic acid accumulation right suddenly that uh, fermentation starts when we do excess of exercise you know na muscle cramps that we feel why fatigue fatigue 
why is it taking place because our muscles are not used to do that much of work they are not they are doing excessive work and they are not getting energy so at that time what will they do the pyruvate that will not go for the Krebs cycle. Pyruvate will go for the lactic acid formation and the lactic acid will be accumulated in the case of skeletal muscle. So, these are the muscles which will undergo fatigue very easily. These are the muscles which will undergo fatigue very easily. Got it, bache? So, skeletal muscles are the one, as I said, associated with the skeletal component, striated they are, voluntary they are, right? Voluntary they are, we can control it with our will. So, they are striated, striation, some lines are there, we will discuss that. Visceral muscles, I told you, bache, they are located in the inner walls of hollow visceral organ, MCQ. The question was there in NEET 2021, right? So, they are present in elementary canal, the reproductive tract, they do not have any striations, they are smooth, that is why smooth muscles. Okay, bache? okay, done. So, this is what you need to remember. So, now what we have to discuss, we need to discuss the skeletal muscle. We will talk about its ultra structure. We will talk about sarcomere. We will talk about the muscle contraction, the mechanism of muscle contraction. Ready? Ready, bachyo? Are you ready for that? Yes. Are you ready for that? Tell me quickly, are you ready for that? Be quick, be quick. Done? Okay, so let's take the example of the ultra structure of muscle. So, see, we have the muscles, right? So, when you talk about the muscle, in the muscles, we have in the muscles, what do we have? In the muscles, we have the muscle bundles. Muscles are made up of so many muscle bundles. They are made up of what? They are made up of so many muscle bundles. Now, what is the another term that we use for these muscle bundles? Just what is the another term that we use for these muscle bundles? We also call them as fascicles. We also call them as fascicles. What we used to call it? Fascicle. Just say, let's take the example of uh, this particular pen, right? Let's say we have more than two or three pens. There are so many bundles. There are so many bundles together. They are making the muscle. So many bundles together, they are making the muscle. And we are calling the each bundle as muscle bundle, the fascicle. And all that muscle bundles are connected together by the sheath of connective tissue. And that connective tissue sheath is known as fascia. That connective tissue sheath is known as fascia. So, what is this fascia? It is the connective tissue. What is this fascia? It is the connective tissue. So, so many fascia together, they are going to form the muscle bundle. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Now, when you look at each muscle bundle, what will you get in that muscle bundle? Overall clear, na? Muscles are made up of so many muscle bundles. We use the word fascicles for that muscle bundle. That muscle bundles are connected together by fascia. Fascia is the connective tissue. Fascia is the connective tissue. Got it right, bache? You got it? Now, when you talk about these muscle bundles, these muscle bundles are further heavy. They are further made up of muscle fiber. Right? They are further made up of muscle fiber. Now, here, let's take the example of... Let's take the example of muscle bundles now. Now, muscle bundle. So, what am I saying? What is present in the muscles? Huh, what is present in these muscles? Muscle fiber. The anatomical unit of muscles. The anatomical unit of muscles. Have a look. Right? These are the muscle bundles which are present there. And in these muscle bundles, you are having parallel myofibrils. Just focus here. Huh? So, this is the muscle bundle. Inside it, you have muscle fiber. And in this muscle fiber, you are having these parallel array of strands, which is known as myofibrils, which is known as myofibrils. So, watch when you talk about this muscle fiber, always remember, see, let's say this is a muscle fiber, just take, its outer covering is known as sarcolemma, right, sarcolemma, at places this sarcolemma is invaginated. It is forming the T-shaped tubules, bache. Here, you are having the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Sarcoplasmic reticulum, the storehouse of calcium. What is it? It is the storehouse of calcium. What is it? 
it is the store house of calcium okay okay store house of calcium it is so when you talk about the muscle fiber the covering of muscle fiber is sarcolemma sarcolem uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum the store house of calcium is present and this store house of calcium is required for the this store house of calcium is required for the mechanism of muscle contraction and when you look at the cytoplasm of these muscle fiber you will see some parallel array right of proteins and we call them as myofibrils right we call them as myofibrils and these myofibrils right these myofibrils see these myofibrils are having alternate dark and light bands by which we used to say there are striations in the right by which we used to say there are striations striations in the muscles these myofibrils are having that dark and light band right right these myofibrils are having that dark and light bands now we have to talk about these dark and light bands right okay then we'll talk ahead so a band dark band a band uh, a a light light i band it is it is i band so now we have to discuss the structure of sarcomere if the structure of sarcomere is clear then the muscle contraction the mechanism will be clear to you all okay the mechanism will be clear to you all kavya ma'am one small suggestion okay bachche okay bachche shrinivasan now there is no need to spam please focus here done bachche okay is that clear right the structure here so now let's talk about the sarcomere the structure is important bachche okay so these are the dark and the light bands which are present in the muscles dark and the light band so see the dark band as i said a band means anisotropic a a dark arc so in ncert although it is written ki in the dark band only myosin is there but no along with myosin even the actin is there so myosin is the thick myofilament actin tin this is how you have to remember actin tin thin actin thin actin thin okay okay right so dark band myosin and actin both are there but in ncert only myosin is mentioned but overall you know the story here okay bachche so another band is the i band so that i band is having what this is having the i i light light thin so it will contain thin myofilament it will contain actin now bachche what is the important point here ha huh. what is the important point here now as i said right right thank you so much roni bachche now as i said that in the on the myofibril alternate dark and light band are there so now in these alternate dark and light bands we are having some basic units of contraction see if anatomical unit of muscle is asked this is muscle fiber but if basic unit of contraction is asked it is basic unit of contraction is asked if they are asking the basic unit of contraction the answer is bachche guys be quick what should be the answer if they are asking the basic unit of contraction then what should be the answer what should be the answer sarcomere exactly so in the sarcomere what do you have see sarcomere is basically sarcomere is basically two half i band and one a band it is two half i band and one a band what sarcomere the basic unit of contraction actually what is happening in the in the i band if you will see this is the i band bachche i band is bisected by this z line right i band is bisected by this z line this z line which is made up of elastic fiber right i band is bisected by the z line so this z line is basically made up of this z line is basically made up of made up of elastic fibers so 
so the portion in between these z lines in these two successive z line it is the sarcomere so it contains two half i bands like here you can see i band here you can see i band and one a band right and one a band so it will contain two half i band and one a band two half i band and one a band got it got it and now here in this particular portion see if you will see the dark if you will see the dark band here na bacche so can you notice that some in some part only myosin is there and at the end myosin and actin they are overlapping can you see here in central part only myosin is there and here actin and myosin they are overlapping actin and myosin they are overlapping so bacche the part where only myosin is present it is h zone right the part where only myosin is present it is the h zone the part where only myosin is present it is the h zone right bachche so overall it is the dark band and the part where only myosin is present it is the h zone and in between there will be a central line m line thin membranous line it is it is m line right it will hold all that myosin together it will hold all that myosin together are you getting my point so here in the dark band c only myosin containing region h zone henson zone and the part where actin and myosin is overlapping that is also the part of the dark band and these myosin are attached to this part by bache by this titan protein that's all so the structure of sarcomere clear question can come from this part question can come from this part now in the muscle contraction what is going to happen very simple it is ha the diagram clear the diagram of sarcomere clear bache the next thing will be clear to you if you will understand this diagram see first of all when you talk about the myosin 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 right thick myofilament it is what is it it is the thick myofilament what is it it is the thick myofilament now this myosin is formed by the polymerization of meromyosin this myosin is formed by the polymerization of meromyosin many meromyosin will polymerize they will form the myosin so here in this myosin this part this tail region is the light meromyosin bachche and this head region and cross arm together they are making the heavy meromyosin this is important right when you talk about the myosin it is also it is also the thick myofilament it is formed by the polymerization of meromyosin so can i not say that that meromyosins are the monomers meromyosins are the monomers meromyosins will polymerize they are going to form the myosin thick filament they are going to form the myosin thick filament isn't it so in the myosin thick filament bachche this part the tail region is lmm light meromyosin and here head and cross arm is the heavy meromyosin head and cross arm is the heavy meromyosin now the type of question that used to come in the paper see in the head region in this globular head there will be the two sites where the actin will bind and here in this globular head we will be having the atp binding site so what do you have to remember here bachche that this globular head is a is an atps this globular head is an atps it can hydrolyze atp this globular head is an atps it can hydrolyze atp it can hydrolyze atp right it can hydrolyze atp but in the light meromyosin there is no such thing up to this part all clear there is no such thing this part is important if you want to understand the sliding filament theory you really need to focus there right you really need to focus there right next point is actin bachche actin is making thin myofilament but it is not just the actin it is not just the actin actually what is happening we have monomers we have g actins right we have monomers we have globular actins these globular actins they will polymerize right they will polymerize they will polymerize with the help of even the magnesium ion is also there right even with the help of magnesium ions these globular actin they will polymerize and they are going to form so many g actins together they are going to form the f actin that is filamentous actin okay that is filamentous actin so it is also pyq that out of the following which one is the monomer which one is the polymer so g actin globular actin which will polymerize with the help of magnesium ions this is going to form the filamentous actin so actually what is going to happen 
see these actin filaments they will spirally coil like this these actin filament they will spirally coil like this two actin filaments they are going to coil see helically they will arrange themselves like this and these actin filaments they will have the space where right they will have the sites where, where myosin head can join two parts clear two parts clear we are talking about the actin we are talking about the actin what were we uh, what were we talking we were talking about the actin so i told you globular actin will polymerize it will form f actin it will form filamentous actin right which is which is obviously polymerized now this this filamentous actin at sites at points it is having the it is having the regions where myosin head can bind where myosin head can bind right this is what you need to remember now when you talk about this actin this actin right same way this actin is helically coiled this actin is overlapped by one uh, one more protein like here you are having two actin filaments na so these two actin filaments are further coiled they are further coiled and they are coiled with the yes they are further coiled they are coiled with the tropomyosin they are coiled with the tropomyosin they are coiled with the tropomyosin and at places you will see one more protein and that is known as troponin so can i say that that when it comes to the thin myofilament it is having the actin along with that it is having the tropomyosin and it is having the troponin right it is having the troponin which is a trimeric protein can i say so it is having the troponin which is the trimeric protein can i say so yes bachche can i say so yes or no yes or no quick ha huh? obviously obviously now now the another important point is when you talk about the troponin in the troponin it's a trimeric protein in the troponin there is a trick that is tick there is a trick that is trick tick there is a trick that is tick what is the trick yeah type it in the chat section what is the trick trick is tick what is the trick trick is tick what is the trick the trick is tick right tick so what is this tick troponin t troponin i troponin c so troponin t is the one which will bind to tropomyosin i told you na troponin is a trimeric protein troponin is a trimeric protein it is made up of three polypeptide chains like this so it is tick so t here is t here tropomyosin i here inhibitory c here calcium right c here calcium so ultimately what is happening troponin t is joined to tropomyosin troponin c will join with calcium troponin i is inhibitory it will keep tropomyosin over the actin in such a way that it cannot that actin cannot bind with the myosin head that actin cannot bind with the myosin head done bachche done that actin cannot bind with the myosin head is that clear is that clear so tell me the structure clear the structure of this part clear because structure is the important thing structure is the important thing here if it is clear then tell me we can start the mechanism of muscle contraction if it is clear then tell me the mechanism of muscle contraction we need to start and trust me you are going to love that chapter you are going to love that topic mm see locomotion and movement will take another 40 45 minutes to finish it 45 minutes will be too much matlab in 30 minutes we'll finish it we'll go to the neural control and coordination then comes the next chapter okay what is not clear the structure of uh, contractile protein is clear na hai na okay
just a minute. Hmm. None? None? Tick means troponin is a trimeric protein. It is made up of three polypeptide chains. That is what you can say. And troponin T, troponin I, troponin C. Like as of now, I am saying, na, I am drawing it like this. Na. Like this, na. troponin T, troponin I, troponin C. Troponin T, troponin I, troponin C. Right, like this. Okay. So, whatever I taught you, it is mentioned here in NCRT that each actin filament, right, each actin filament is made up of two F actins helically bound to each other. Each F actin is a polymer of monomeric. Everything is mentioned here. Okay, we have discussed it. And when you talk about the myosin filament, as I said, it is also a polymerized protein. Monomeric unit is myosin here. Right, bache. So, the former being heavy myosin. The later being light myosin, so heavy myosin in the heavy myosin part. See this line. The head and the short arm project outwards at regular distance and angle from each other from the space surface of a polymerized myosin. Okay, let me explain. So basically, meaning of this line is like let's say this is the thick filament that we have. Let's say this is the thick filament that we have, okay, this myosin filament. So, this myosin filament is also made up of, you know, myosins. So, at points, at regular intervals, at, a, at an angle, you know, that, that, that head and cross arm part is like this, that head, right, and the cross arm part is like this. Can you see this? Like this. Myosin head is like this. Right, myosin head is like this. So, this is the thick filament, myosin made up of myosin. So, at points that globular head and cross arm will radiate at an equal angle or at an equal interval like this. Got it? Got it? That's all. So, ultimately, now we have to discuss the mechanism of muscle contraction. What we have to discuss? We have to discuss the mechanism of muscle contraction. What we have to discuss? We have to discuss the mechanism of muscle contraction. Right? The mechanism of muscle contraction. This is what we need to discuss. Right? So, if you know that mechanism of muscle contraction is best explained with the help of sliding filament theory and question used to come from the sliding filament theory. The question used to come from this sliding filament theory. So many questions used to come from this sliding filament theory. Sliding filaments. Flim filaments will slide over each other. Right? Filaments will slide over each other. Let me quote one example. Like I don't know. So one NCRT is here. Right? Like let's say this is the myosin. This is the this is the this is the actin. This is the myosin. So actin will slide over myosin. Actin will slide over myosin. Right, actin will slide over myosin. So, now just imagine, like see this is myosin, these are the actin. So, actin is going to slide over myosin. So, that is why we used to call it as sliding filament theory which best explains the mechanism of muscle contraction and this is what we need to understand. Right, this is what we need to understand. So, now just look at it, bache. look at it. See, I will I'll mention few points. The question will come from that points only, that I am sure. Done? Done? And as I said, at some distance, these short heads will be like this. These cross heads will be like this. Now, what is going to happen? Already you know that over this actin filament at places, no doubt it is even covered with the tropomyosin, but at places it is having troponin. At places it is having troponin, yes or no? At places it is having troponin, yes or no? Yes or no? Piyush, ma'am, please, bataiye na shadi karogi. Bache, Piyush, itne bure din nahi aaya hai. Aise spammers ke saath shadi karni bade. Thik hai, ab yahaan par focus kar bache. Let's not waste our time. Okay? So, so what is going to happen? You know that signal will come. 
obviously signal will come obviously so you know one thing this is the neuron ending right this is the neuron ending remember exon terminal ends of exon the terminal arborizations are you getting my point terminal ends of exon the terminal arborizations and here we have the muscle here here some you know t tubules are there the inveginations of the sarcolemma okay hmm and here you will have that uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum okay now listen to me what is going to happen okay listen to me what is going to happen here basically when that nerve neuron signal will come when the motor signal will come now see bachche this is the nerve ending and here you have the muscle here you have the muscle we used to call this junction as neuromuscular junction we used to call this junction as neuromuscular junction it is also known as motor end plate or motor end whatever you want to call it right it is also known as motor end plate or motor end whatever you want to call it so whenever the signal will come so here from the synaptic vesicle the neurotransmitter will be released here let's say it it is acetylcholine it is acetylcholine it will be released it is going to pass the message to the muscles here it is going to pass the message to the muscles here so obviously you know that what is going to happen what is going to happen the action potential will be generated in the muscle yes or no the action potential will be generated in the muscle yes or no the depolarization in the muscles will occur yes or no guys spam it in the chat section i want to see the energy yaar quick it is the neuromuscular junction also known as motor end plate the signal is coming the synaptic vesicle will fuse the neurotransmitters will be released it is going to uh, it is going to stimulate the next neuron here right it is going to stimulate the the muscles here right so basically the action potential will be generated basically the depolarization will start the movement of ions will start yes or no quickly in the chat section quick guys quick 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 speed up of course it is it is going to start isn't it now see see from this t tubules this neurotransmitter will pass the signal here you have the sarcoplasmic reticulum it will start releasing the calcium ion and we want more and more calcium here in the sarcoplasmic in the sarcoplasm if we want muscles to get contracted are you getting my point if we want muscles to get contracted then what what we need here ha very good himanshi so calcium will be released here right calcium will be released here now this calcium will bind with the troponin and if i'll be very specific it will bind with the troponin c this calcium is going to bind with the troponin so it will bind with the troponin c c for calcium the movement the troponin the movement the troponin binds to the calcium ion what is going to happen it will slide a bit it will move a bit it will move it in it will move in such a way that it is like like let's say like let's say this is the actin it is the tropomyosin okay and here i have the troponin okay this is the actin sorry this is the ha this is the actin this is the tropomyosin and here i have the troponin here i have the troponin the moment calcium ion will come out the moment calcium ion will come out calcium ion will bind with this troponin it will slide the troponin along with that tropomyosin will also get slide uh, will right it first of all the calcium will bind to this troponin the moment the troponin and calcium binds troponin will slide a bit and even it will move tropomyosin even it will move tropomyosin what will it do even it will move tropomyosin now what is going to happen this actin it is having the sites it is having the sites sites for what it is having the site for the binding to the myosin head right that site will get exposed that site will get exposed are you getting my point that site will get exposed so the calcium will bind over this troponin c it will slide a bit it will move the tropomyosin so the slide uh, so the sites over the actin filament where myosin head can join they will get exposed this is the thing that we want this is a thing that we want are you getting it 
आर यू गेटिंग इट बच्चे प्लीज फोकस हियर प्लीज फोकस हियर ओके ओके नाउ वॉट इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप नाउ द ए टी पी हाइड्रोलिस इज रिक्वायर्ड नाउ कम टू दिस पार्ट नाइन इट विल ब्रेक इट इन टू ए डी पी एंड पी एनर्जी विल बी जनरेटेड दिस एनर्जी विल हेल्प दिस एक्टिन एंड माइस इन माइंडिंग दिस इज गोइंग टू राइट दिस इज गोइंग टू स्पॉन्सर दिस एक्टिन एंड माइस इन माइंडिंग सो वेन एवर दिस ए डी पी एंड दिस फॉस्फिट वेन एवर दे विल रिमेन अटैच टू दिस माइस इन हेड ना एक्टिन whenever they will get uh, whenever they remain attached to this myosin head na this cross bridge will form this cross this cross bridge will form and this cross bridge is going to move the actin filament towards the center this cross bridge will move actin filament towards the center towards the center right towards the center guys am i audible now now right so it is the atp hydrolysis which helps in the formation of cross bridge so what is this cross bridge when the head of the myosin is attached to this actin it is the cross bridge right it is the cross bridge okay thank you so much guys thank you so much for 16k subscriber family for making us the 16k subscriber family so fire emoji in the chat section right fire emoji in the chat section we are 16k family yes we are 16k family so let's make it 17 in today's session only what say ha na let's make it 17 in today's session only 617k of course okay done right so it is the key word key point here that here the when will the cross bridge form when the at with the help of energy of this phosphorylation right of this dephosphorylation of course done bachche done 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 now one more important point bachche when ever the atp joins here again now obviously energy is utilized the actin the the actin filaments will slide over towards the center towards the m line towards the h zone right towards the h zone we are going to slide it so just imagine there are two two hooks which are going to bind uh, bind to a road upside and then they are going to move it towards the center towards the center towards the center are you getting my point are you getting my point so ultimately this is the sliding so calcium ions obviously important right the atp hydrolysis obviously it is important and the key the one more point that you need to keep in your head is when to this myosin head atp joins cross bridge break right cross bridge is going to break when again the atp join because uh, firstly we need to break the atp it should be atp adp plus pi then the, again the energy will be liberated that energy will help this myosin head to bind to the actin so it works like that so whenever the atp is bonded to this globular head cross bridge break it's a pyq and many times student get confused right many times student get confused here right so this is how this muscle contraction will be done now there are few points that i think if you people revise then ha huh, then then there will be no problem in any of the mcq do you know during muscle contraction what happened do you know what happened during muscle contraction yes do you know what happened during muscle contraction monisha you can check the video later right let's not waste the time let's speed let's speed up what say focus here bachche so during muscle contraction the h zone disappears right during muscle contraction the h zone it disappears there will be no h zone there will be no place where only myosin is there because actin is going to slide over the myosin so h zone will disappears h zone will disappear length of a band remain same length of a band remain same but length of i band decreases right length of i band decreases are you getting it length of a band remain same length of i band decreases h zone disappear h zone disappear and but length of myofilaments will remain same i'll tell you what is the meaning of this length of myofilament 
remains same. These are the main points. These are the main pointers. Okay, but the H zone will disappear completely because there will be no separate place in the dark uh, dark band where only myosin is there and it is not overlapped by the actin. First point. Second is that length of A band remains same. Means if A band was present in such a in in that much space, it will remain like that. Now, what is the what is the what is the meaning of length of I band decreases? Just imagine I bands I filaments were placed like this. Hmm. Just imagine, see just a minute, huh? I bands were placed like this, it should not leak, huh? I bands were pla like, placed like this, now we are sliding them, we are sliding them, so when we will slide, it will move towards the center, so initially it was placed like that and now it will move towards the center, so obviously we can say now that length of I band is getting decreased. Right, length of I band will, no, length of A band will remain same, but the length of I band will decrease. Can we say so? Can we say so? Of course we can. Isn't it? Of course we can. Henna, henna, length of A band will remain same, but the length of I band will decrease and that is going to disappear, the H zone. The because of that H zone will disappear. Right, because of that H zone will disappear. Got it? Got it? But overall length of myofilament is not going to change. Like I will quote one example. Let us say initially one, one chair were, huh. so let us say in a room four chairs are there, right? They are placed at a distance. One chair is at one corner, another chair is at another corner like this. Now you are, you are bringing them closer, you are putting them closer. You are putting all the four chairs closer. So obviously the distance between the chairs, it will be reduced, but the dimensions of chair, they will not change, right? Dimension of cha uh, the chair, they will not change. So this is what you need to keep in your head. That overall length of myofilament will remain same. If A band is for 5 centimeter, I band is for 5 centimeter, they will remain 5 center, 5 centimeter. But actually earlier, I filaments were placed here. Now we are moving it like this. So, 5 centimeter will remain 5 centimeter. It's just that overall I band, its length will get decreased. So, these are the points that you need to revise. That's all. It's more than sufficient. So, obviously, huh, how can I forget? Length of sarcomere to definitely decrease. Na? And because of that, there will be the decrease in the length of uh, myofibril. Done? Done? Okay? Okay? So, this is all about the muscle contractions. So, are you ready to solve few questions based on that? Are you ready to solve some questions based on that? So, this is all about the muscle contraction, the most important topic indeed. Huh, from this particular chapter, I am not going to teach you the joints wala topic because that is purely theory based. Just read it by yourself. Revise the thing. I band will get shortened. This is what I told you right now. Okay, so answer this question. All of you, just answer this question. Be quick. Answer this question, all of you. Answer, answer, answer. Quick. Quick. Wow, what happens during muscle contraction in humans? Actin filament shorten. Overall filament length will not shorten, obviously. Sarcomere will shorten, so it is not the answer. A band remains the same, yes. A, H and I band shorten, no. So, C, you will get question from that particular points only. So, definitely here the correct answer is C. Now, the next question. In muscle contraction, which of the following are involved? In muscle contraction, which of the following are involved? In muscle contraction, which of the following are involved? We are talking about the muscle contraction here. So, obviously, the calcium ion and the magnesium ion. The calcium ion and the magnesium ion. And in the muscles, you know, na, sarcoplasm is rich with the potassium. Sarcoplasm is rich with the potassium. 
ओके नेक्स्ट 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 व्हाट इज द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल प्रोटीन ऑफ मसल अगेन इजी कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल प्रोटीन विच विल अंडरगो कॉन्ट्रैक्शन विच विल अंडरगो कॉन्ट्रैक्शन सो टेल मी व्हाट इज द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल प्रोटीन ऑफ मसल्स व्हाट इज द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल प्रोटीन ऑफ मसल्स व्हाट इज द कॉन्ट्रेक्टाइल प्रोटीन ऑफ मसल विच विल अंडरगो कॉन्ट्रैक्शन obviously it is the uh oh it is the actin right it is not myosin because actually it is the actin will will which will undergo contraction so always remember although your ha huh, it is the contractile protein it will get contracted right next what happens during the contraction of muscles yes what happens during the contraction of muscles what happens during the muscle contraction and after that we will revise the skeletal system then the neural okay so we are about to finish it in 2 hours hena in 2 hours we'll finish it so answer it what happens during the contraction of muscles what happens during the contraction of muscles actin filament is going to slide over the myosin you are right what uh yes so now we will talk about the human skeleton so before that if there is any doubt do let me know bachche before that if there is any 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 doubt do let me know now our screen uh, now our screen is crying yes any doubt any doubt any doubt so are you liking the session seriously are you loving it no are you liking the session no bachche i band because i band is going to slide over the myosin so obviously the length will get reduced acha energy So guys show some motivation your target is 2k plus likes till the end okay okay ah today i'm happy i'm enjoying this session because i'm able to teach i'm not pretending to teach i'm teaching basically i'm teaching basically calcium and magnesium both used to play the role but majorly it is calcium magnesium i told you na a polymerization of actin magnesium is required and even the energy when it comes to the energy the from atp we are getting the energy at that time also magnesium ion is used calcium is used even creatine phosphate is used for the muscle contraction energy so magnesium is also used thank you so much cupcake kesi much in the case of cramps obviously the vigorous movement of muscles are there vigorous movement of muscles are there okay varsha you got the answer of your question thank you so much bachche ha it's just almost done matlab it's a, it it is going to be a good lecture i have completed the most important topics and i was not teaching you like matlab i'm teaching you in a better way that i know now now let's not waste time let's focus here so now it's the time for another cup of tea so let's see who's going to come hsp sir or wazim sir hai na chalo so now let's not waste the time let's talk about the human skeletal system so how many bones are there in our skeletal system how many bones are there in our skeletal system ah this i know many of you find it difficult but this human skeletal system is trust me it is easy trust me it is easy two hundred six bones are there right Two hundred six bones are there. So we have the axial skeleton. We have the appendicular skeleton. So first of all, we divide the skeleton in these two. There is the axial skeleton. There is the appendicular skeleton. There is the axial skeleton. There is the appendicular skeleton. So when you talk about the axial skeleton, total eighty bones are there. So remaining one twenty six bones are present here. 
remaining 126 bones are present here. So what do you have to do? You just need to revise this particular topic with me. Okay. Okay. Axial and appendicular. So, array, array. see this is the axial skeleton. This part, uh, this part is the axial skeleton, the skull, the vertebral column, the sternum, the ribs, the gird, uh, huh, the sternum, the ribs, not the girdles. When you talk about the axial skeleton, 80 when you talk about the axial skeleton, total 80 bones are there. So, we have the skull here, right? We have the skull here. We have the vertebral column. The rib cage is present there, but the sternum is present there. Getting my point? The sternum is present there. Now, I'll tell you one more point here, right? And uh, yes, when it comes to the appendicular, just imagine a doll. Just imagine a doll. We used to have the dolls, now from uh, the dolls from the dolls in which we can just remove the arms and legs, right? The dolls in which we can just remove the arms and legs. So, imagine a Barbie doll and you are just removing the arms and legs. Whatever is remaining, axial skeleton and whatever you have that arms and legs, right? That four limbs, that hind limbs plus the girdles, plus the girdles. They are making the appendicular skeleton. They are making the appendicular skeleton, right? They are making what? They are making the appendicular skeleton, right, bache? Right. So, axial skeleton is having total 80 bones. So, in axial skeleton, as I said, skull will be there. Skull will be there. Vertebral column will be there. Sternum will be there. And the rib. Ribs are there. Now, which in the NCRT, if you read the NCRT carefully, in the NCRT for skulls, for skull, uh, 22 bones are mentioned. Na? 20, so I'll add one thing here. Usually, when I used to teach, I always mention that skull is having 29 bones. You must be thinking how? Because in NCRT, they have mentioned that 22 bones are there in skull. But in the next line, they have also mentioned that there are 6 ear ossicles also. There are 6 ear ossicles also. So, right, there are 6 ear ossicles also, which are also the part of skull. And there, and along with that, one hyoid bone is also there. One hyoid bone is also there. Are you getting my point? So, overall, I mentioned 29 bones, right? In the NCRT, they have mentioned it in this way. 22 skull, 6 ear ossicle, 1 hyoid bone. So, skull can be righted. Cranium, 8 bones. Facial bones, 14 in number. Ear ossicle, 3 ear ossicles, right? 3 ear ossicles in each ear. So, total 6. Malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes. Remember, right? Remember, and one tongue bone is there, the hyoid bone. It is going to support the tongue, the only bone which is not articulating with any other bone. Hyoid bone is the one which is not articulating with any other bone. It is just attached to the bones with the help of ligaments, right? It is just attached to the bones with the help of ligaments. Are you getting my point? Then comes the vertebral column. So, vertebral column after fusion. You know that now vertebrae we have after fusion 26 vertebrae are there but before fusion it used to be 33. After fusion it is 26 but before fusion it used to be 33. So here we are also having one trick. Come to lunch stay calm. Right? Vertebral column they can ask you in the paper. Come to lunch stay calm. All of you just type this trick in the chat box. Come to lunch, stay calm. Means cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, coccyx. Come to lunch, stay calm. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, coccyx. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccyx. Cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, coccyx. Vertebral column. So, I'm, I will tell you only important points here. So, before fusion, vertebral column used to be 33. Vertebrae used to be there. After fusion, it is 26. After fusion, it is 26. Right after fusion, it is 26. So, come to lunch, stay calm. This is the trick. So, it is C T L S C. C T L S C. So, type it in the chat section. C T L S C. C T L S C. All of you just type it. C T L S C. So, 7, 12, 5. Cerecrum is also 5, but they are fused. Cocaix is also 4, they are fused. So, total 1 here, total 1 here. Okay? Okay? So, 
come to lunch stay calm vertebral column after fusion 26 before fusion 23 so 7 cervical uh, vertebrate t 12 thoracic l lumbar 5 when you talk about the sacrum 5 again but they are fused so after fusion they are making one so cocaix also four but after fusion it is making one so total 26 total 26 so up to this part all clear up to this part all clear yes everyone up to this part all clear guys speed up speed up quickly i want to see it in the chat section the response quick 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 your target for likes 2k plus and do you do we have any new student here do we have any new student here yes any new student here no or yes if it is a yes then please subscribe our channel and then please subscribe our channel Ah, uh, Dega, now I am telling you to speed up. You people are so slow here. Yeah? You are not even reverting your energy so less. Speed up. Okay. So, CDLSC 712554, 712554, 712-554. This is what you need to repeat today. Okay. Now, sternum, you know that flat bone it is. It is also known as the breast bone, bache. It is the one to which the ribs are going to articulate. Of Right. The ribs are going to articulate. Then comes the ribs. So, when you talk about the ribs, 12 pairs are present. Right. 12 pairs are present. We will talk about it also. This is the axial skeleton. Now, let us talk about the appendicular skeleton. So, in the appendicular skeleton, you know that we have the girdles. Total 2 girdles are present. 2 pectoral girdles. 1 ha, pelvic girdle. How many girdles do, do we have? Shoulder girdle, pectoral, hip girdle, pelvic. Shoulder girdle, pectoral, hip girdle, pelvic. So, pectoral girdle, 4 bones are there. Pelvic girdle, two bones are there. Pectoral girdle, four bones are there. Pelvic girdle, two bones are there. And along with that, we have the limbs, bachche. four limbs and hind limbs are there that we are going to discuss now. So, so 120 bones means 20 bones in each limb we have. Sorry, 60 bones in each. 60, 60, 120. No, no, means 30, 30 bones in each limb. 30, 30, 30, 30. 30, 30, 60, 60, 120, 120 plus 6, 126. Huh. My math is fine. Okay. Okay. Now, let us revise it. So, skull, bache, the only point that you need to remember is in the, sorry, skull, you know the bones, right? So, cranium is having 8 bones. The brain box is having 8 bones. Right, the brain box is having eight bones, although for uh, frontal, parietal, temporal, but we will not go in that depth. Right, we will not go in that depth. Facial bones are 14 in number. So, ear ossicle, this point is important. So, ear ossicle, the bones which are present in middle ear. Remember this, ear ossicles, the bones which are present in middle ear. The bones which are present in middle ear. Remember, so the trick here is miss. The trick here is miss. Malus incus stapes. Malus incus tapes. So, each ear is having three ear ossicles. So, in totality, ha, I to, in totality, they will be six. They will be six. Are, I told you, 30, 30, 30, 30, 120 it is. So, each limb is having 30, 30 bones. Now, focus here. So, the trick here for ear ossicle is malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes. Miss it is. Malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes. Type it in the chat section, guys. Type it in the chat section. Malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes. So, malus incus tapes, malus incus tapes. So, another trick is miss has h a s miss has h a s so it's hammer shaped it's anvil it's stirrup it's stirrup it is hammer anvil stirrup hammer anvil stirrup hammer anvil stirrup got it it is about the shape so ear ossicle total six in number three ear ossicles are present in each ear done bache hyoid bone i told you U-shaped bone it is, it is going to support the bone, the bone which is not articulating with any other bone. Okay? Okay? In the question, they are not going to ask you the confusing question, but yes, you have to follow the NCRD statement. Okay? So, go for the 22. Done? Now, vertebral column, I already told you, and in the vertebral 
column you know na earlier we used to have quadrupedal locomotion because of this curve in the vertebral column we got this straight posture direct posture the uh, bipedal locomotion so here it's c t l s c 7 12 5 5 4 so 5 and 4 is it is fused so after fusion they are just making one bone only okay okay bachche so this is what we need to remember here okay the next part here another important topic is rib cage uh, sorry ribs so in ribs the total 12 pairs are there so total 12 pairs means bachche total 24 ribs are there so when you talk about the ribs even they are flat but they are bicephalic do you know the meaning of bicephalic do you know the meaning of bicephalic yes bachche yes bachche do you know the meaning of bicephalic Do you know the meaning of bicephalic? Bi means two, cephal. Cephal word is related to the head. Actually, what is happening? Just look at this diagram. This is the sternum, the breast bone. Right? See, the first rib. See how are they articulating? Just look at it. So, basically, what is happening, bache, here in these uh, ribs, when you talk about the dorsal side, see, dorsally, they are articulating with the vertebral column. Ventrally, they are articulating with the sternum. Then here we have the ribs. Here we have the ribs. So, what is happening actually on the dorsal side, these ribs are having two points for the articulation. Articulation means attachment to another bone. Right. So, towards the dorsal side, this bone is having two points, two sides for the articulation. Right. Ear ossicle, six bones are there. Now, when did I mention for 14? 14 is for the face, facial. Okay. Okay. So, bicephalic it is. Now, as I said, 12 pairs are there. So, out of that true pair, one is false and one is floating. So, first 7 pair, 1, 2, 7, true, 8th, 9th and 10th, false, 11th and 12th pair, it is floating, it is floating. So, what is the meaning of that? See, bachche, just look at it. First 7 pairs are directly articulating, they are directly attached to the sternum, they are directly attached to the sternum, isn't it? Okay, so if you are new to our channel, you have to subscribe our channel as well, right? So, first 7 first seven pairs are what they are the true pairs they are directly attached to the sternum here even dorsally they are attached to the vertebral column even ventrally they are attached to the sternum dorsally to the vertebral column ventrally to the sternum so we even call them as vertebro sternal ribs vertebro sternal ribs right now when you talk about the eighth ninth and tenth pair it is not directly attached to the sternum Right, with the help of the cartilage, with the help of that costal cartilage, it is attached to the seventh pair and then that seventh pair is attached to the sternum. So, it is not directly articulating with the sternum. No doubt it is attached to the vertebral column, but it is not directly articulating with the sternum. It is at, with the help of cartilage, it is attached to the seventh pair only. So, we even call it as vertebrochondral pair of ribs, vertebrochondral pair of ribs, right. Then comes the floating, floating is 11th and 12th, just attached to the vertebral column, not at all attached to the, not at all attached to the sternum. So, these are the floating pair of ribs, so they are protecting our kidneys, they are protecting our kidneys, kidneys which are retroperitoneal, they are protecting our kidneys. So, up to this part all clear, question used to come from this part, so this is important, done. This is important. Still, if there is any doubt, do let me know, guys. Now, okay. So, girdles. In the girdles, as I said, pectoral girdle is there, shoulder girdle, then comes the pelvic. Pelvic girdle is made up of two bones, pectoral is made up of four bones and we have two pectoral girdles basically. So, two bones are clavicle, collarbone. and scapula the shoulder blade the scapula the shoulder blade the shoulder blade right so just look at the arrangement this beauty bone the girls used to flaunt it now right when we do a lot of exercise this this beauty bone it become it becomes prominent so this is the collarbone the beauty bone here this one clavicle 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 and this bone here towards its dorsal side it is attached it is articulating with the scapula the shoulder blade right the shoulder blade are you getting it are you getting it so with the help of acromion process they are articulating with each other 
with the help of acromion process the beauty bone exactly it is the beauty bone are you people are laughing but it is actually the beauty bone here so one clavicle scapula clavicle scapula clavicle scap no bache 148 iq no need okay okay so both of them acromion process is there with the help of that it is articulating and one more thing you know that the humerus now this is the girdle to this girdle you can see the four limb is attached so in the four limb as i said total how many bones are there 30 in 30 you know that humerus one one radius ulna right then comes the carpals five in number or seven in number metacarpals carpals are what five in number or seven in number then comes the phalanges so phalanges are in totality they are two the formula is 2 3 3 3 so 14 14 right so 14 here and when it comes to the carpals what are they seven no no exactly they are eight and five here so eight 9 10 11 16 done 30 done it is yes so humerus 1 radius and ulna 1 carpals 8 metacarpals 5 phalanges 14 so what is the phalanger formula thumb 2 3 3 3 3 2 3 3 3 3 2 3 3 3 3 2 3 3 3 okay 2 3 3 3 3 2 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 okay done 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 and what you have to remember this humerus which is a part of appendicular skeleton it is articulating here with this pectoral girdle and do you know that what is present here the glenoid cavity it is the glenoid cavity in the scapula where it is articulating again pyq it is right again pyq it is now when you talk about the pelvic girdle actually this pelvic girdle is made up of two bones right and this pelvic two bones are known as coxal bones we also call it as innominates we also call it as innominates we also call it as innominates innominates right coxal bones so each bone is made up of three bones like ilium ischium pubis so ilium ischium pubis they will get fused and they are going to form each coxal bone this is important again so pelvic girdle the hip girdle right made up of coxal bone two coxal bones they are innominates so coxal bone is formed by the fusion of ilium ischium and pubis so here if you remember the pubic symphysis is there and even here this pectoral girdle is articulating with the vertebral column so this is the difference that you can tell pectoral girdle is not at all articulating with the vertebral column pectoral girdle is not at all articulating with the vertebral column even the scapula here is attached then with the help of muscles and ligaments but when you talk about the pelvic girdle <coughs> it is articulating with the vertebral column so this is about the girdles and about the fore limb right and when you talk about the hind limb see this ilium ischium pubis right ilium ischium pubis right ilium ischium pubis so here you can see the femur the strongest and the longest bone right and here the tibia and fibula the tibia shin bone tibia fibula right tibia and fibula is there so question can be asked bachche tibia is the thick thick one fibula is thin okay and here na one knee cap patella is there which is also considered as sesamoid bone right it is even considered as sesamoid bone so this is the extra thing that you need to remember in the case of in the case of knees here we are having the patella the knee cap patella the knee cap patella the knee cap right patella the knee cap okay 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 so ilium ischium pubis is there this is the femur femur will articulate with the pelvic girdle and here you have the cavity acetabulum so with the help of acetabulum this femur is articulating this femur is articulating with this pelvic girdle this femur is articulating with this pelvic girdle so tibia thick fibula is thin okay so here bachche instead of carpal tarsals are there metatarsal phalanges so here tarsals are seven in number 
metatarsals are 5 and phalanges are again 14. So, this is the difference only. Like we have humerus 1, radio fibula, radio ulna 1, 1, 2, 8, 5, 14 and it is very easy. See here we have the metacarpals now. So, we have 5 fingers. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Repeat it here. Repeat it quick, quick, quick. Guys, be quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Are do it. Right? So, metacarpals, carpals, 8, 5, phalanges, 14. So, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3. 2, 3, 3, 3, 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Done? Done? Okay? Okay? So, here, if here we are adding the kneecap, the patella, which is a sesamoid bone. So, here the tarsals are 7. Rest everything is same. And, bache, there is one more thing that is known as knee joint. Do you know that? Patella is the kneecap. But, we have one more thing that is known as knee joint. So, knee joint is made up of. See, femur, patella, tibia. Right? So, knee joint is having, knee joint is made up of these three. Femur, patella and tibia. Femur, patella and tibia. Femur, patella and tibia. Is that clear? Is that clear? And how to remember that? How to remember that? How can you remember this? How? How? See, in the knee joint, patella will definitely be there. Femur will also be there. So, sometimes we get confused whether it is tibia or femur. Uh, no offense here, Sim seriously. So, this is how I remember ki F, femur, female. So, one female cannot stay with another female. So, here we will not get something starting from F. It should be tibia only. It should be tibia only. It should be tibia only. Clear, bache? It should be tibia only. So, this is my trick. Ilium ischium pubis is fused frozen. When they will get fused, they will form one coxal bone. The another name for coxal bone is innominate. Another name for coxal bone is innominate. Okay. So, that is all. This is about this, uh, the vertebral column. And you know that first vertebra is atlas, second is axis. So, it is the atlas which will join with the condyles, which will join with the occipital condyles. So, in our case, two condyles are there. So, our skull is dicondylic. Our skull is dicondylic, right? So, the first vertebra atlas, second vertebra is axis. So, this is also a PYQ. So, here you can see, bache, the bicephalic ribs. Here you can see sacrum and cocaix posteriorly they are present. See, see pelvic girdle is going to join with that. So, that is all. This is what you need to remember. Eyes are placed in orbits. Here you can see cheekbone, zygomatic and all. Okay, ma'am, tired too. No, I am not tired. You tell me. Okay. Okay, now answer this. See, joints is totally a very... Uh, 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 sorry. Ribs are cartilaginous bones. Okay. So, joint... Well, a topic is very easy. I think you all can answer it. And now my screen is not working properly. So, that is why, you know, slides are moving. Right. So, which of the following is false about the human skull? Hyoid is not included in C. It is dicondylic, yes. It is dicondylic, yes. It includes 6 ear ossicles, yes. It includes 14 facial bones, yes. So, hyoid bone is also included in the skull bones. In the NCRT, they always try to confuse it. So, that is why they put it in this way. Ki 22 bones are there in skull. And then, if you will read that NCRT line, so then they have mentioned 6 ear ossicles and 1 hyoid bone is also there. Okay? Okay? Now, which is the part of the pectoral girdle? Which is the part of the pectoral girdle? Which one here is the part of the pectoral girdle? Tell me quickly. Ha, skin is tired. I am fine. Quick, quick, quick.
run just a minute. Done. So, which is the part of the pectoral girdle? So, obviously, glenoid, glenoid cavity. Okay. Next, what is the incorrect pair out of the falling? What is the incorrect pair out of the falling? Incorrect pair out of the falling. Hinge, you know, na hinge in the laptops also we used to have that hinge. So, where do you find this? Where do you find this? This is very easy to understand. So, I think it is not there in this, isn't it? So, I just check the first option. See, freely movable, synovial joints we have here. So, hinge means something like that, this one fold, that flap like structure. So, here you find it, in the knees you find it, but here it is completely ball and socket types. Okay, so obviously here the incorrect pair is this. Pivot joint is there in the thumb also. And ha, pivot joint is there, uh, the saddle joint is there in the thumb. Pivot is there in the atlas axis. Okay, gliding joint between the carpals, saddle is between the carpals and metacarpals of the thumb. None, bache. So, joints wala topic is your homework. You need to revise this. So, uh, before neural control and coordination, is that okay? We will go for chemical control and coordination. Is that okay? But atlas is the first vertebra, axis is the second vertebra. Atlas is going to articulate, going to join with the skull, with the occipital bone, with the occipital bone, that is all. And in the cranium, sphenoid is the butterfly shaped bone. So, you want break, seriously. Do you want break? And TK, we can keep one, yes, we can take a break. Even you people will feel energetic. So, TK, we will have break from 8.15 to 8.45, break time, then we will resume and we will finish these two chapters, okay, we will finish these two chapters, so you can enjoy your dinner break. Ha, I have already given you that, no? After that two hours, two more hours I need. Hey na, two more hours till 11, 11 will be free. Ha, he is not going to order anything.
everyone hello what's up hi guys hello am i perfectly audible and visible to you hi kiddos am i perfectly audible and visible to you so how's the session you liked it ha huh? how's the session you liked it we have completed i think almost all the topics we have completed and uh, it's just that you just need to read yeah you just need to revise the things from the ncert or you can just just read summary and then all the revision will be done isn't it isn't it so quickly yaar quickly just like the video just just hit the subscribe button and share the video with others as well see last two chapters are pending and from these two chapters i'm just going to pick up the most important topics only right and uh, i'm going to pick up most important topics only so obviously the session will go for another 1 hour or 1 and 1/2 hour so live viewer should be more than 500 what say right and you know what i didn't get, even get the food your so called wazim sir even hsp sir and even your capto right they are not here so after your class i'll get my meals so the live viewer should be more so kindly share the video and tell your friends right tell your friends that we are going to revise the top two important chapters neural control and coordination and chemical control and integration right so can we start guys can we start i want to see the energy in the chat section all of you i want to see the energy in the chat section all of you quick 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 all of you all of you all of you and uh, should we go for the neural control and coordination first or should we go for the chemical control and integration what do you want what do you want guys ma'am ma'am sapitingla did you eat what is the meaning of that what is the meaning of that okay chalo let's not waste time okay we'll start with the neural control and coordination and here you can see the flow chart you know that when you talk about the nervous system very 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 important system of course because it is going to control everything it is going to control everything 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 okay so when you talk about the nervous system you know that we have the central nervous system having brain and spinal cord although the question is very easy but still it was a pyq right and then we have the peripheral nervous system like see the central part the brain the spinal spinal cord is there the brain the spinal cord is there the brain the spinal cord is there and from that part what is going to happen the nerves will emerge the peripheral nervous system so in the peripheral nervous system autonomic and the somatic nervous system is there autonomic and the somatic nervous system is there autonomic and the somatic nervous system is there so automatic uh, autonomic will include all the what involuntary involuntary autonomic nervous system is what it is involuntary it is going to control the involuntary activities the activities which we cannot control with our own will right with our own will and then comes the smooth then sorry then comes the somatic nervous system so s for somatic s for skeletal so it is associated with the skeletal system right it is associated with the skeletal system right right so in the skeletal system you know that it is voluntary we can control it with our own will so here i can say autonomic nervous system involuntary it is like the activities which we cannot control with our uh, will that comes under this nervous system and somatic the skeletal part so any doubt here guys any doubt here so in the somatic all that sensory and motor that i'll explain later and here in autonomic nervous system you have the parasympathetic and the sympathetic so bachche from this part the question can come see parasympathetic and sympathetic parasympathetic is with rest and digest right it is associated with the rest and digest and when you talk about the sympathetic nervous system it is associated with the uh, flight and fight okay it is associated with what it is associated with the flight and fight like i'll quote one example here uh let's take the example of eyes mm, okay let's take the example of uh, let's take one example let's say you are in a situation where you are quite scared right just imagine you are having your neat exam tomorrow all of sudden just imagine it once all of sudden something happened and nt announced that your paper is going to be on 1st of may 
just imagine your paper is going to be on 1st of may and ta announced something like that now on 1st of may you people are having the exam so what is going to happen obviously the heartbeat will increase the fear the heartbeat will increase the sweating right things like that will occur yes or no things like that will occur yes or no so in that situation obviously the body's nervous system is going to control everything right so for that situations we have that para, uh, we have that sympathetic nerve fiber the rest the uh, the fight and flight right the fight and flight are you getting my point the fight and flight are you getting it yes so this is how it controls so a uh, question used to come from this part increase in heartbeat yes it's a very famous question see now my screen is not even working increase in heartbeat right increase in heartbeat so whenever we we face such situation where uh, we get scared obviously our heartbeat increases so it is controlled by your sympathetic nerve fibers it is controlled by sympathetic nerve fibers increase in heartbeat and uh, sweating uh even the pilo erection that is goosebumps and 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 yes sympathetic nerve fibers sympathetic nerve fibers are going to control that right sympathetic nerve fibers are going to control that and uh, when it comes to uh, the decreasing heartbeat parasympathetic nerve fiber is there for the digestion rest and digest uh, your parasympathetic nerve fiber will play the role okay okay done 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 done, done. so that type of question used to come in the neat exam okay so now we have to start the nerve impulse conduction but before that can we go for a trick ha huh? can we go for a trick can we go for a trick yes everyone yes yeah, show some energy in the chat box now you are done with your dinner yes do you want one more trick it is not that important it is just for fun okay only one question can come from this part otherwise no right so what is the trick here the trick is upta also known as utta fagvasha repeat it the trick is utta fagvasha fagvasha yes the trick is utta fagvasha repeat it with me the trick is utta fagvasha utta fagvasha repeat repeat you know now we have the 12 pairs of cranial nerves right do you know that we have the 12 pairs of cranial nerves so with the help of this trick you guys can remember the name of that cranial nerves i'm not saying you have to remember right this trick is just for fun then we'll talk about the nerve impulse conduction so what is it utta fagvasha repeat it utta fagvasha what is it utta fagvasha utta fagvasha so another part is all up ak all means all factory the first nerve then comes the optic then comes the oculomotor right the next is your pathetic okay the trigeminal trochlear abducens right facial auditory glossopharyngeal right vagus spinal accessory also known as accessory and then comes the hypoglossal right then comes the hypoglossal so this is the upta fagvasha this is the upta fagvasha so do you remember the name of these 12 pairs of cranial nerves ha huh? do you remember the name of these 12 pairs of cr cranial nerves all apak pathetic also known as ha pathetic trigeminal trochlear abducens facial auditory glossopharyngeal vagus spinal accessory and hypoglossal so this trick is just for fun okay this trick is ha the nerve name is pathetic this trick is just for fun okay so that is your homework you will check which nerves are the motor nerves which are mixed and which are sensory that is your homework you have to check it and you have to tell me the answer in the comment section okay you have to tell me the answer in the comment section so it is upta fagvasha okay it is what it is upta fagvasha so bachche another important point for this chapter is see you have to remember ambika sharma that's my name na ambika sharma so a stands for afferent s stands for sensory 
So, efferent nerve fibers are sensory in function and then comes the motor, motor will be efferent. Okay, the motor will be efferent. So, efferent sensory motor efferent, efferent sensory motor efferent, efferent sensory motor efferent. So, efferent nerve fibers, bache. efferent nerve fibers, sensory, which will carry the information to the brain, which will carry the information to the right, which will carry the information to the brain. And when you talk about the motor neurons, bache, they will carry the processed result from brain to the target organ, from brain to the target organ from brain to the target organ is that okay clear clear right so this is your homework you have to check which one is motor which one is mixed which one is sensory and efferent sensory ambika sharma a s m e motor efferent motor efferent motor efferent okay only one way of the three athletes oh thiru i cannot remember this for me it works upta fagwesh upta fagwesh clear bachche Clear, bache? So, that is your homework and this is a something basic. Now, come to the neuron structure because after that, right, you will be, ha, firstly, we have to understand the neuron structure and then we will talk about the conduction of nerve impulse. And majority of students, they face problem in conduction of nerve impulse, although the topic is quite easy, okay, although the topic is quite easy. Now, bache, when you talk about the neurons, right, the longest cell, you know, na, it is the longest cell of the human body isn't it? It is the longest cell of the human body which is meant for the nerve conduction which will carry the information, isn't it? Which is going to carry the information. So, it is the basic structural and functional unit of nervous system, okay? It is the basic structural and functional unit of nervous system. What is it? It is the basic structural and functional unit of nervous system. So, but here you just need to remember few things just wait a minute see when you talk about the neurons right so many neurons together they are going to you know when they will be covered with the uh, uh, connective tissue sheath then they will form the uh, they will form that uh, nerve fibers then so many nerves fiber together they form the nerves okay many neurons together they will form that nerve fibers many nerve fibers together they are going to form the nerves so when we talk about the neuron the longest cell of the human body you know that it used to be there in the g naught phase remember this thing it used to be there in the g naught phase it just divides only at only in the embryonic stages it is going to divide right only in the embryonic stages it is going to divide what the neuron right what the neuron right bache so when you talk about this longest cell it looks like a tree and this is basically a multipolar neuron it is not mandatory that all the neurons are going to be multipolar we have the example of unipolar neurons as well we have the example of pseudo unipolar neurons as well we have the example of bipolar neurons as well no i said 12 pairs guy three okay Okay, so now when you look at these uh, uh, neurons, so you know that here in the center we have the cell body. Here in the center, what do we have? We have the cell body. So this cell body is also known as cyton. It is also known as soma. It is also known as perigaryon, right? It is also known as perigaryon. And from the cell body, these branches, the dendrites are going to originate, right? The dendrites are going to originate. So here, bache, there is one very important point. See. Can you see this, that from the cell body, this funnel type structure is arising. This is basically known as exon hillock. What is it? It is basically known as exon hillock. What is it? It is basically known as exon hillock. What is it? It is basically known as exon hillock. It is the most sensitive area of neuron. It is the most sensitive area of neuron. Here you will find many, 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 many ion channels. Right, it is the most sensitive area of the uh, most sensitive area of the neuron. You will find many ionic channels here. Right, right. No, it's not like that, guy. Three, please check it clear, uh, carefully, please. Okay, right. So this is it. Now, when you talk about the cell body, the important point that you need to remember here is NCRT is in the NCRT also it is written, bache. Here you will find obviously all the organelles and here you are going to find the nasals granule. This is something very important, right? In the, in the cell body and even in the dendrites, bache. this is important that you need to understand. In the cell body, even in the dendrites, write down. In the cell body, even in the dendrites, you are having the nasal granules that are basically the aggregation of rough endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosome. 
right so nasal granule is what it is the aggregation of the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the ribosome so we can say it clearly that it is meant for the protein formation it is meant for the protein formation so this is something very important see this this structure is exon it is having exon uh, exoplasm so in the exon nasal granule nasals granules they are absent right nasal granules they are absent are you getting my point nasal granule they are absent in the exon they are absent in the exon this is what you people need to remember guys i don't know why do you focus on unnecessary 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 acha okay my my bad so upta are ठीक ठीक आई रिपीटेड दिस ओके आई रिपीटेड दिस इट इज पी टी ए ओनली इट इज पी टी ए ओनली हियर दे आर हैविंग द सेम नेम देन फागवश रेस्ट इज सेम ओके रेस्ट इज सेम डन 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 ओके सो पैथेटिक इन स्ट्रॉशलियर इज सेम ट्राइजेमिनल देन एब्ड्यूसेंस देन फेशियल ओके ओके सो जस्ट रेक्टिफाई दिस डन so what were we doing we were talking about the neuron okay so uh, yes in the exon nasal granules are absent so in the ncrt they simply mention that nasal granules are present only in the cell body and dendrites they didn't mention that it is absent in the it is absent in the exoplasm but you have to remember it okay you have to remember it so whenever we talk about this exoplasm nasal granules they are absent nasal granules they are absent right now bachche see exons are of two type right exons are of two type it is when it is not covered with the sheath when it is not covered with the medullary sheath then we call it as non medullary nerve fiber or non medullary exon right if it is covered with the sheath right if it is covered with the sheath then we used to call it as medullary or myelinated medullary or myelinated nerve fiber so myelin is nothing myelin is acting like an insulating layer it will not let the impulse go here and there okay it will not allow the impulse go here and there so it is the medullary nerve fiber or medullary exon and this one is the non medullary nerve fiber or the exon right bachche so here when you talk about the neurons of the central ha huh, here we are having the shown cells which cells are there we are having the shown cells here and they form the myelin sheath right they form the myelin sheath the shown cells here they form the myelin sheath right now you have to answer one question of mine in the non medullary exon shown cells are present or not in the non medullary exon shown cells are present or not this is what you need to answer right now in the non medullary in the non medullary now uh, medullary nerve fiber or non myelinated nerve fiber shown cells are absent or not yes tell me shown cells are absent or not this is important bachche in the non medullary exon shown cells are present right shown cells they are present they are present but they will not form medullary sheath this is important but they will not form medullary sheath okay they will not form medullary sheath this is important it's a pyq it is important it's a pyq and moreover bachche these shown cells they will form the myelin sheath even in the neurons of pns but we have another cells that are oligodendrocytes right we have another cells that are oligodendrocytes they form myelin sheath in the neurons of cns right in the neurons of cns okay in the neurons of cns got it got it in the neurons of cns they are going to form the myelin sheath clear right now if you will see 
there is a gap in between this uh, wrapping now Let, let's say this is a pen i'm covering only this portion of pen then this then this so there is a gap in between so this is known as nodes of renware right nodes of renware so here we will find the what here we are going to find that channels ion channels so in such type of neuron there will be the jumping of the nerve impulse from this point to this this point to this and we call it as saltate and uh, saltatory conduction which is quite fast okay it is the saltatory conduction and it is very fast and when you talk about the uh, exons having uh, the non myelinated exon your non medullary exon in their case there will be the nerve impulse conduction we will study it under the topic ionic theory right nerve impulse conduction will be studied under the topic ionic theory got it right right so now we have to start this particular topic ionic theory so up to this part if there is any doubt do let me know up to this part if there is any doubt do let me know and see bachche here you can see the neurons they are present like this now one after another one after another they are forming a kind of channel okay they are forming a kind of channel so just look at it see these are the exon endings these are the exon endings these are the terminal arborization so you guys can see here this is the next neuron so the junction so here it is the synapse here it is the synapse so what is this synapse presynaptic neuron next neuron post synaptic neuron nerve endings of one neuron dendrites of another in between there is a space we used to call it as synaptic cleft right we used to call the space as synaptic cleft now presynaptic membrane post synaptic membrane and the synaptic cleft together these three things they form the synapse and you know that here the neurotransmitters will be released the message will pass to the next neuron and that is how the impulse will be conducted right 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 that is how the nerve impulse will be conducted is that clear yes is that clear sure sure done bachche so now let's talk about this nerve impulse conduction part okay see bachche let's talk about this nerve impulse conduction let's talk about mechanism of hormonal action right if you are not uh, if you are okay then we can continue the session otherwise these two topics are the most important topics let's revise it because i and here is quite easy you just need to read it okay you are uh, you just need to read it so rest is your choice just two topics let's discuss this nerve impulse conduction and let's talk about the mechanism of hormonal action okay okay and bachche oligodendrocytes they are also the cells which are present in nervous system listen to me very carefully let's are it's just nine you're feeling sleepy seriously ah oh, no no just nine acha can we continue till 10 so see so these two topics are the important one you should understand them you should listen to me carefully these two topics are the important one and i have mentioned these two topics in that top 60 video top 60 topics wala video okay yesterday i posted one video na the top 60 topics of biology that you should definitely do so these two topics are mentioned there also so let's not waste time let's discuss that what say okay okay done so one student was asking now what are oligodendrocytes see bachche in the brain brain is uh, sorry in the nervous system it is not just made up of neuron in the nervous system along with neurons some other cells are also there right like we have the glial cells okay we have the glial cells right so other cells are also present so microglial cells the phagocytotic cells of our nervous system ependymal cells are also there oligodendrocytes astrocytes are also there astrocytes meant for meant for packaging the neuron for the protection oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system they form oligodendrocytes form the myelin sheath right they form the myelin sheath right they form the myelin sheath are you getting it are you getting it okay done bachche so these are uh, these are the cells which are present in the which are present in the nervous system okay so uh, neurons are there and you can say that more than 50% is of glial cells even known as neuroglial cells okay 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 we'll talk about the eye and ear also right now focus here now bachche we are going to talk about the nerve impulse conduction it is explained with the help of ionic theory actually what is happening see when a neuron is not picking up any stimulus we are saying it is resting we are saying it is resting and at that time the potential will be 
minus 70 MB. Minus 70 MB. Actually, when you talk about the, uh, like in the case of muscles, we talk about the contraction. Same in the case of neurons. When you talk about the membranes of these neurons, they have the property. These neuron cells are having the property of electrical excitability and conductivity. Right? Like in the case of muscles, there is a property, na? Uh, um, excitability is there, extensibility is there, elasticity is there. That is what we discuss in the case of muscles. Now we are talking about the neurons here. So when you talk about, uh, when you talk about the neurons, they are the cells which are going to transmit the information. They will transmit the impulse. They are the cells which are having the property of, uh, the cells having the property of electrical excitability and conductivity, excitability and conductivity, excitability and conductivity. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? So, now when a nerve, uh, when a neuron, it is not picking up any information, it is in a resting state, then the membrane potential is going to be minus 70 MV. Actually, what is happening within the neuron, the ionic concentration is different. Outside the neuron, the ionic concentration is different. Within the neuron, the ionic concentration is different. Outside the neuron, the ionic concentration is different. Listen to me carefully. Within the neuron, there will be large sized negatively charged protein large sized negatively charged proteins there will be large sized negatively charged proteins and moreover potassium concentration is too much within the neuron right the concentration of potassium is too much right and now when you compare it with the outside see intracellular fluid is having more potassium when you compare it with the outside potassium is comparatively less and the sodium concentration is comparatively high but these points are important literally these points are important see i am saying that outside the neuron the potassium concentration is comparatively less and the sodium concentration is more second point is that within the neuron within this intracellular fluid the concentration of potassium is more and the concentration of sodium is less the concentration of sodium is less plus inside what is there the negatively charged proteins are present they are high molecular weight negatively charged protein outside also we are having some negatively charged ion like chloride and all but they are playing no role in the nerve impulse conduction right they are playing no role in the nerve impulse conduction they are playing no role in the nerve impulse conduction this is what you have to remember right right this is what you have to remember here right but now even these negatively charged protein they cannot cross the plasma membrane so whenever a neuron is resting inside is negative outside is positive right outside is positive this is the case of bache resting membrane in the resting membrane when you check the uh, potential na when you check the potential difference, as I said, it is minus 70 MV. This is the ionic difference which will be created. I'll tell you how, but this is the case. And when a membrane is resting, we use the word, it is polarized. Polar, it is polarized. Polarization has been done. It is polarized. So, these words are clear to you or not. Right? These words are clear to you or not. Tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Quick. Tell me. Clear? clear the very first point is outside the neuron the potassium concentration is less sodium concentration is more even chloride is there but it, it is playing no role in the nerve impulse conduction inside the neuron potassium concentration is high negatively charged proteins are there sodium is comparatively less second point is that when the membrane is resting inside is negative outside is positive i told you the reason right although it should be the first point yes right i told you the reason as well clear bache i told you the reason as well clear clear now why see there is one point in the ncrt that when a neuron is resting when a neuron is resting right when a neuron is resting its membrane is its membrane is more permeable to sodium in comparison more permeable to potassium in comparison to sodium do you know about it in comparison to sodium isn't it when a neuron is in the resting stage its membrane is more permeable to potassium in comparison to the sodium right this is a very famous line but why is it so see actually the distribution of all this is because of some ion channels which are present 
right there are different different type of ion channels even you talk about the mechanical ion channels even to you talk about the voltage gated ion channels there are so many ion channels but as of now what we have to study we need to uh, read the topics we need to discuss it as per the as per the ncrt because uh, neat exam is there na so that is why so now listen to me so here when you talk about the neuron membrane we are having different different type of ion channels out of that one is potassium ion channels or you you even call them as leaky potassium ion channels we are even having the sodium we are even having the sodium ion channels we are even having the voltage gated ion channels voltage gated ion channels for sodium and potassium voltage gated ion channels for sodium and potassium and along with that sodium potassium atps pump is also there right sodium potassium atps pump is also there are you getting it sodium potassium atps pump is also there right bachche right bachche so just imagine this is a membrane now i am saying that ki ki in the resting stage your neuron is more permeable to potassium in comparison to sodium do you know what is the reason behind because in the case of this neuron we are having more potassium ion channels we are having more leaky potassium ion channels right the um, the concentration of potassium leaky channel is more the concentration of potassium leaky channel is more are you getting it are you getting it now the nerve impulse this neuron is not conducting the nerve impulse so obviously if potassium is more inside and we have more leaky channels inside so obviously more potassium will go outside yes or no yes or no leaky potassium channel means the potassium channels by the channels by which potassium will flow as per the concentration gradient what do you understand by the leaky channels leaky potassium channels leaky sodium channels leaky channels are the one by which a particular ion will flow as per the concentration gradient <coughs> as per the concentration gradient so if we have more leaky channels anika kartik if we have more leaky channels more potassium leaky channels and we know it already that we have more potassium inside so obviously more potassium will move from inside to outside yes or no more potassium will move from inside to outside yes or no this is the first point right right now we are discussing why in a why in a polarized neuron inside is negative outside is positive inside is negative outside is positive this is what i'm telling you right right this is what i'm telling you so i am saying that because of the presence of more leaky channels on this neuron more leaky channels on this membrane so more potassium is going outside and in comparison to that very less sodium is coming inside right let's say if 10 potassium just one example random example 10 potassiums are going inside the three sodiums are coming inside like this so can we not say that that this this can be one reason that outside is more positive because we are sending more positive charge outside and moreover inside is having heavily charged negative ion uh, negative proteins right so inside is negative one reason second reason is bachche the sodium potassium atps pump it also helps in maintaining this uh resting potassium sodium potassium atp es pump do you know about the sodium potassium atp es pump yes do you know about the sodium potassium atp es pump do you know about the sodium potassium atp es pump it is atp es so obviously against the concentration gradient it will take out the things hai na against the concentration gradient it will take out the thing things actually what is happening here in this pump bachche it is that there is a trick no kiya in kin 2 there is a trick no kiya kin 2 no kiya kin 2 no kiya kin 2 no kiya means n sodium o outside k potassium i inside a atp so with the help of atp potassium will be moved outside and sodium will come in sodium will come in this is the point secondly here k2 k k again as i said k means potassium in means inside two means two potassium this is basically the trick 
टू पोटेशियम सो अल्टीमेटली वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन थ्री सोडियम वे विल थ्रो आउटसाइड टू पोटेशियम विल कम इन थ्री पोटे थ्री सोडियम वे विल सेंड आउटसाइड एंड द टू पोटेशियम आर गोइंग टू कम सो इट इज अगेंस्ट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ग्रेडियंट इज इंट इट इट इज अगेंस्ट द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ग्रेडियंट इज इंट इट ऑलरेडी इन साइड वी हैव मोर पोटेशियम एंड आउटसाइड वी हैव लेस पोटेशियम बट स्टिल राइट वी आर थ्रोइंग द पोटेशियम इन साइड राइट right and here inside we have less sodium and outside we have more still we are throwing it out and even two potassium will come in and three potassium three sodium will go out so obviously a difference will be created so that is why because of these because of this reason yeah because of you can say that all these reasons inside is negative outside of the membrane is positive right right so this condition is the polarization this condition is the polarization clear this condition is the polarization clear clear done done now whenever we'll get any nerve impulse then what will happen see now whenever there will be any nerve impulse right any nerve impulse so nerve impulse will be generated when there is the influx of sodium whenever we will get any of the nerve impulse there will be the influx of sodium influx means entry of sodium will be there right entry of sodium will be there and yes it is a pyq it is a pyq are you getting my point so sodium will enter here so when sodium will start moving inside when the sodium will start moving inside when excess of sodium will come inside then what is going to happen the voltage inside will change inside will become positive outside will become negative and this is the time when we say the action potential has generated and this is the depolarization this is the depolarization so more positive will start coming inside and the less negative uh, the more positive will start coming inside and because of that what is going to happen bachche the voltage gated ion channels will open what is going to happen because of that voltage gated ion channels they will open so now voltage gated ion channels for the sodium they will open more sodium will start coming inside more sodium will start coming inside more sodium will start coming inside isn't it isn't it right isn't it isn't it so inside will become positive outside will become negative as i said this condition is what this is the depolarization this is the depolarization now you know the movement of current isn't it it is from plus to minus it is from plus to minus so bachche whenever there is the an action potential only at that time the polarity of membrane will change at that time only it will become more permeable for sodium right it will become more permeable for sodium are you getting my point it will become more permeable of for sodium inside will become positive outside negative inside positive outside negative are you getting my point but this is for just fraction of sec seconds membrane is more loyal for the potassium so immediately na reversibility of the polarity priya darshini it will also occur right so you know that current will move from current moves from positive to plus to minus so here from a to b it will move so basically the plus charge the, so the basically it will travel plus to minus plus to minus right so immediately immediately what is going to happen the, again the polarity will get reverse now at b point inside will become positive outside will become negative inside will become positive outside will become negative and here right at a point again the membrane polarity will change again the membrane polarity will change so this is basically going to take place whenever there is the conduction of nerve impulse so the points that you need to remember is at the time of depolarization which ion channels uh, at the time of depolarization what will happen sodium influx sodium voltage gated ion channels will open leaky channels ha uh, sodium voltage gated ion channels will open leaky channels they will stop a bit you can say that and uh, that's all and then after that when the potential will travel from a to b so inside will at a point again inside will become negative outside will be become positive so that is how it flows that is how it works okay up to this part all clear so that is how the nerve impulse will be conducted so how are we going to revise it let me tell you we will read it from the ncert okay okay because line to line ncert is important for this particular topic so we are going to read it from the ncert we are going to read it from the ncert okay so neurons you know that excitable cells yes they are 
because their membranes are in po polarized state. Polarized state means inside negative, outside positive. Okay. So different type of ion channels are present on the neural membrane. I told you about the ion channels. They are selectively permeable to different ions. Any doubt here in this line? Any doubt here in this line? So when a neuron, when a neuron is not conducting any impulse, when it is in the resting state, so it is more permeable to potassium and impermeable to sodium. Now you know the reason behind. Now you know the reason behind, isn't it? You people know the reason behind. Similarly, membrane is impermeable to negatively charged protein. So inside is more negative, outside is more positive. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? Clear, bache? So this point is also important. Exon contains high concentration of potassium, negatively charged protein and low concentration of sodium. Clear, bache? Clear, bache? And outside, exon will have low concentration of potassium, high concentration of sodium. So right after the class, read it properly. Read it properly from the NCRT and trust me, you will find this topic very easy. You are going to find this topic very easy. Done, bache? Done, bache? And further, these ionic gradients how will they maintain with the help of sodium potassium pump so i gave you the trick for that nokia kintu right nokia kintu that is the trick nokia kintu that is the trick clear bache clear bache right so that is the reason outside is positive inside is negative and the resting potential is maintained here which is minus 70 mv now bache how that mechanism of nerve impulse will start when a stimulus is applied to a site on the polarized membrane right membrane will become permeable to sodium that is what i told you membrane will become permeable to sodium this leads to the rapid uh, influx of sodium sodium will start coming inside so polarity will get reversed inside will become positive outside will become negative inside will become positive outside will become negative so the outer surface become negatively charged inside will become positively charged so the membrane will be depolarized action potential has generated it will be near about plus 20 mv done bachche done this is the nerve impulse so the exon membrane has a positive charge at site b on the outer negative on the inner so as a result current will flow bache from site a to site b on outer surface also current will flow so again the repolarization will be there again the repolarization will be there so the sequence will be repeated along the length of the axon and consequently the impulse is conducted so rise in the stimulus induced permeability of sodium is extremely short lived again condition will come back to the same that's all right that's all so this is all about the nerve impulse conduction right bache right bache so what the brain i have added this right for the quick revision you people can follow that the question used to come from the hypothalamus so many times right so it acts like a thermoregulator it acts like a uh, hemostatic control center and moreover the two he cerebral hemisphere they are connected together by a track of nerve fiber that is known as corpus callosum it is another pyq that is connected by the corpus callosum corpus callosum got it corpus callosum and medulla oblongata is having the cardiac center the respiratory rhythm center so that's what you need to revise okay so answer this question then we'll go ahead answer this question everyone all of you just answer this question quick guys be quick Yes, so today the subscriber should be, subscribers should increase, bache. Answer this question, be quick. Quick, quick, quick. Exactly, so it is the hypothalamus, the thermoregulator. It is the hypothalamus, the thermoregulator. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Now my screen is like I am tired. I cannot move. Hai na? So, baki bache, this is the spinal cord. So, you know that in the case of brain, in the case of brain, the cortex is having the grey matter, but inside is having the white matter. But here the story is different. 
in the spinal cord this h shaped area is the gray matter and the outside there is the white matter so here we are just talking about the reflex section the reflex arc so remember in the reflex section in the reflex arc in the reflex section in the reflex arc in the reflex section and the in the reflex arc brain is not involved the the spinal cord is involved what is involved there the spinal cord is involved so this is just the knee jerk reflex right so here you can see in the spinal cord dorsal root ganglion is there right so when it is the sensory afferent pathway it is from this target of a uh, uh, target organ it is just carrying the impulse to the spinal cord here there are some interneurons which are acting like a you know kind of connection here the relay neurons they are and here you have the motor neuron which will carry the processed information again so in the reflex action reflex arc the brain is not involved the spinal cord is there right so one more homework is there bachche you will tell me in the next section uh, next class or in the comment section which one is unconditioned and conditioned reflex you will tell me about it okay so this question can be asked in paper that dorsal root ganglions they are present in spinal cord this is what you need to remember right this is what you need to remember so you know that it is very quick okay okay that's all and uh, acha you people were asking for this topic na eye and ear okay fine i'll revise it <sighs> i'll revise it but your energy should be high see you people are requesting na you people are requesting na ma'am i and ear i and ear i and ear so quickly 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 energy should be and today you have to promise me hashtag we'll solve 100 pyqs of human physio that is what you need to promise and you have to type it in the comment section today you have to promise this thing to me then only i'll continue with this i and ear wala topic then only i'll continue with this i and ear wala topic that hashtag #100 pyq solved hashtag #100 pyq solved right that is what you need to do guys speed up speed up speed up Hashtag hundred PYQ solved. <clears throat> Done. Okay. So when you talk about the eye, you know that sensory structure it is. With the help of that, we are able to see the objects, right? You know it very well. So when you talk about the eye, it is having the three layers. It's a ball-like structure having the three layers. The outermost is. The outermost is. Yes, bache. The outermost is fibrous coat. Or fibrous tunic. The middle one is vascular coat. We even call it as uvula. Ah, uh, hi. The inner one is neurosensory coat, and it is basically the retina. It is basically the retina. So when you talk about the fibrous coat, obviously it is the outermost layer. It is meant for protection, bache. So here we are having what? right the see if i have to draw the diagram i'm going to draw it like this so right this portion is known as anyone this portion is known as we have two parts here na what do we have here in this fibrous coat there are two parts there are two parts this what do we have we have the sclera we have the sclera and the cornea isn't it the sclera and the cornea so when you look at your eyes when you this white part this white part which is which is visible it is the sclera right it is the sclera and here we have the cornea so cornea you know that cornea is transparent although it is thick but it is transparent so it is the only part of the body which will directly take oxygen from the surrounding it is not having any blood vessels it is not having any blood vessel that is why cornea transplant is also very easy right it is not having any blood vessel so here the majority of the part is sclera the eye white that we see it is sclera and here the curved part is the cornea and bachche cornea is also covered with a layer that is known as conjunctivitis that is known as conjunctivitis that is known as conjunctivitis and even in the eye bachche at the junction of sclera and cornea right at the junction of sclera and cornea there is a canal and that is known as canal of schwem there is a canal and that is known as canal of schwem so canal of schwem is meant for draining the aqueous humor right in the eye the eye is a taut structure na it's a taut structure it is having the fluid inside so anterior portion is having 
the aqueous humor and here just behind the lens here you are having vitreous humor right vitreous humor so vitreous humor will form only once in the lifetime it is jelly like and here it will keep on forming and you know it will it gets drain into the lymph via this canal of schwem so it drains the aqueous humor and if this uh, canal of schwem if it gets blocked then that glaucoma can occur right that gl glaucoma can occur okay okay glaucoma can occur right if it gets blocked so this is about the fibrous coat and when you talk about the vascular coat there are three part which is choroid the posterior two third part then you have the ciliary body and then you have the iris then you have the iris so just a minute let me draw it actually my screen is not working effectively now see let me draw it so as i said this portion is clara this is the cornea here the curved for the refraction of light this layer right this is the choroid the posterior two third bache which is highly vascularized the posterior two third which is highly vascularized right this part is what it is posterior two third and this portion is highly vascularized it is having the abundant blood supply and it is the part by which even the uh, the retina will also get the nourishment okay bache it is the part by which the even the retina will also get the nourishment okay retina will also get the nourishment so this this choroid is present at posterior two third part then it will get condensed it will form the ciliary body here right it is it is going to form what it is going to form the ciliary body here and next to ciliary body this pigmented part is iris we all are having different different eye colors na it is because of the it is because of the melanin pigment so this colored portion of our eyes it is iris the colored portion of our eyes it is iris and the aperture here by which the light will enter bache this is the pupil right this is the pupil now here to this iris see here you will have that lens biconvex lens so this lens is attached to the ciliary body by suspensory ligament here this lens is attached to the ciliary body with the help of the suspensory ligament right this lens is attached to the ciliary body with the help of what with the help of suspensory ligament so this suspensory ligament is also known as zonula of zin it is also known as zonula of zin it is also known as zonula of zin so lens is fixed to the to the ciliary body with the help of the suspensory ligament the ciliary body is also having the ciliary process bache and that ciliary process used to form the fluids here so to the to this anterior part you will be having the aqueous humor to this posterior part you will be having the vitreous humor and because of these humors because of these fluid the our eye is a taut structure right it is a ball like structure okay it's a ball like structure right bache right bache so this suspensory ligament attached to the ciliary body and the ciliary process here we have the iris muscles also right bache right generally you know that I, uh, muscles are mesodermal in origin right generally you know that uh, muscles are mesodermal in origin muscles are mesodermal in origin muscles are yes all of you mesodermal in origin but iris muscles they are ectodermal in origin the muscles of iris they are ectodermal in origin this is the exception iris muscles are ectodermal in origin this is the exception otherwise muscles are mesodermal in origin right otherwise mes muscles are mesodermal in origin okay are you getting it are you getting it so rest you know that when we go to the bright light right the pupil will get constricted constriction of pupil which no fiber is there which no fiber is there parasympathetic and when there is the Uh, dim light our eyes the dilation of pupil sympathetic nerve fiber is there sympathetic nerve fiber is there are you getting it are you getting and here these ciliary muscles they will help in you know changing the position of this lens sometimes it become thick and thin that depends upon uh, the position of the object distant or close nearby i am not going to uh, discuss that in detail that you have to study by your own okay then comes the retina the innermost layer now bache when you talk about the retina right this 
see only only this fibrous coat is the continuous layer only it is a complete layer which is forming a ball like structure even if you will talk about this vascular coat the uvea see even it is not complete here we are having an aperture even this retina is not complete retina the pigment part the sensory part will cover this portion up to this portion only right it is ora serrata it is ora serrata the next part is just the pigmented epithelium it is not at all sensory in the case of retina here you are having pigmented epithelium over that you will have sensory epithelium but that sensory epithelium is not covering the entire ball like structure that sensory epithelium is just present up to the certain part only right so when you talk about the sensory part of this retina we have the cell layers so again from outside to inside this is what we need to know from outside to inside this is what we need to know right outside is the photoreceptor cells the rods and cones which will get excited middle one bipolar cells remember this bipolar cells so bipolar cells are present in the retina in the olfactory epithelium also and innermost is the ganglion cells right ganglion cells so the axon of these axon of these neurons they will together they will form the optic nerve uh, they will form the optic nerve so the part at which the optic nerve leave or enter the eye it is known as the blind spot right no rods and cones cells are there so here you can see the sequence so photoreceptor cells that is your rods and cones but we are having more rod cells and less cone cells rod cell cells will give vision in dim light cone cells will give vision in color light okay color right in the bright light right in the bright light okay bachche okay so rod cell their number is more cone cell their number is comparatively less rod cells are having the pigment that is rhodopsin that is rhodopsin also known as visual purple and in the case of cone cells the pigment is idopsin right and the pigment here is idopsin got it the pigment here is idopsin clear clear nan so the sequence of layer should be important here so bachche ultimately what is going to happen see eyes are eyes like this na eyes like this the light will come from that pupil so the innermost the innermost cell the inner uh, ha huh, the innermost cell is the ganglion cell then comes the bipolar then comes the photoreceptor so what is the sequence of path of light it is a question it's a previous year question what is the sequence of path of light so here the uh, the ganglion cell then bipolar cell then comes the photoreceptor cell so if they ask you about the sequence of light how will it pass then obviously firstly right firstly it is going to be ganglion then bipolar then photoreceptor cell and which cells will get excited because of that light that are the photoreceptor cells which cells will get excited because of the light that are the photoreceptor cells this is what you need to remember okay so vitreous humor jelly like aqueous humor is uh, you know watery watery fluid so these are few points that i think you all should revise baki rhodopsin is a derivative of vitamin a retinal plus opsin part is there opsin is proteinaceous part retinal is the derivative of again the vitamin a so that you should revise so here you can see the eyes the position as well the diagram as well so here you can see bachche see the pupil the light will enter from this part that is how it is present right bachche so this is the vitreous humor inside portion is the aqueous humor right so retina is not even covering the entire ball like structure so you can see this point the point where the optic nerve is leaving so it is the blind spot no rod cell no cone cells are present here no image formation will be there and here you are having the yellow spot as well and we used to call it as macula lutea we used to call it as macula lutea and it is having the conical depression bachche right that is phobia centralis and that conical depression is having maximum cone cells okay that conical depression is having maximum cone, cone cells right that uh, conical that conical depression is having maximum cone cells so the image formation will be best there pw is best pw is best then why are you wasting your time here ha huh? then why are you wasting your time here oh that is what you learn from a best platform oh shame shame chalo now focus here done bachche okay so answer this question the rest you need to read it from the ncert only macula lutea is the yellow spot and it is having the conical depression 
that conical depression okay that conical depression is having the maximum cone cells okay so in phobia the phobia is the center of the visual feed in a mammalian eye where 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 yes where tell me quickly guys quick 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 and if you are new to our channel do subscribe our channel exactly so phobia centralis is having the high density of the cones but no roads are present there no roads are present there right okay so in the case of ear again i'm not going to teach you this in depth let me tell you something very honestly right after this we'll be discussing the the mechanism of hormonal action that's all then we'll end the session okay so please listen to me very carefully you know that in the case of mammals we are having the external ear right it is having this pinna and then comes this external auditory canal we even use the word meters for it right external auditory meters now here you have the tympanic membrane also known as eardrum tympanic membrane also known as eardrum this particular portion is making the external ear here you know that small hairs are also there wax gland we used to call it as ceruminous glands are present right ceruminous glands are present here are you getting it now this part is the middle ear now middle ear is connected to the to the throat to the pharynx and this tube is the eustachian tube by which it is connected so there is a pyq from this part but check this eustachian tube right this eustachian tube it opens up in nasopharynx right it basically balances the pressure outside and inside of the cell it basically balances the pressure outside and inside of the cell so it is a pyq this middle this middle ear is having this cavity the middle cavity here it is having the eustachian tube so this eustachian tube is connecting it to the thorax to the pharynx and this eustachian tube it opens up in the nasopharynx right it opens up in the nasopharynx so here in the middle ear right see this is the eardrum tympanic membrane and here you are having the ear ossicles and these ear ossicles are present in the same sequence this ear ossicles are present in the same sequence it is malus incus stapes it is malus incus stapes malus incus stapes that is miss that is miss right malus incus stapes malus incus stapes right so stapes is the smallest ear ossicle stapes is the smallest ear ossicle stapes is what it is the smallest ear ossicle and next here here you will be having the oval window and next here is the inner ear and we used to call it as the labyrinth as well right we even call it as we, we even call it as the labyrinth as well right inner ear labyrinth inner ear labyrinth it is dan bachche see this inner ear labyrinth so in the inner ear you have the bony labyrinth and even membranous labyrinth is also there bony labyrinth and membranous labyrinth is also there right so when you talk about this membranous labyrinth inner ear is also known as labyrinth na so membranous labyrinth will be, uh, will be having this coiled cochlea and the semicircular canals the semicircular canals are you getting it even the semicircular canals so what do you need to remember here bachche see how do how can you remember it see just just look at this diagram uh let's take the example of a pen okay let's take the example of a pen let's take the example of a pen in a pen we used to have refill this is a pen this pen is having the refill now let's say this outermost covering this is the bony labyrinth and here this outer body of the pen is bony labyrinth here this inner refill its outer covering is the membranous labyrinth right what is it it is the membranous labyrinth it is the membranous labyrinth now in this membranous labyrinth we are having the ink here we are having the ink here yes or no we are having the ink here consider this ink as endolymph because in the ear we are having the fluid na 
consider this ink as endolymph so this ink is covered this refill is surrounded here by a perilymph this refill is surrounded here by a perilymph are you getting my point you have to imagine a pen the pen is having the ink the pen is having a refill refill is having the ink the refill the refill covering consider it as the membranous labyrinth within this membranous labyrinth we are having the ink that is endolymph now this now this membranous labyrinth is surrounded by a fluid also that is perilymph that is perilymph now i have decided i will take a cross section of it now i have decided i will take a cross section of it so if i'll take a cross section of it what type of cross section will i get what type of cross section will i get i'll get something like this i'll get something like this so here endolymph here perilymph here endolymph here perilymph am i right here endolymph here perilymph now we know that in the ear it is the coiled structure it is the cochlea the coiled structure so i am going to take its cross section i am going to take its cross section matlab even if you you want to draw it like this you can i am going to draw it in this way i am going to draw it in this way right so here can i not say that because earlier i told you here you are going to have perilymph i told you how so can we not say that here also we are having perilymph here also we are having perilymph and here you are having the endolymph can we say so yes or no can we say so yes or no can we say so yes or no yes or no of course of course so the another important point that you need to remember here is another trick it is vmt what is the trick here it is vmt what is the trick here vmt vmt means scala vestibuli scala it's vmt m for media it's scala tympani it's scala tympani vestibuli media tympani vestibuli media tympani repeated everyone vestibuli media tympani vestibuli media tympani vestibuli media tympani isn't it isn't it isn't it so can i not say that in the vestibular scala vestibuli we are having perilymph in the scala tympani we are having perilymph and here in the scala media we are having endolymph yes we can say so so that is the diagram that used to come in your neat paper and now just look at this media isn't it looking like a roof it's like a roof it's like a roof it's like a roof so r for roof r for raisner's membrane r for roof r for raisner's membrane right here it is the base like floor so it is the basilar membrane so this is my trick that is how i remember this topic this diagram that is how i remember it so first of all vmt scala vestibuli media tympani here it is consider it as the roof of this media so raisner's membrane consider it as the base of the media basilar membrane okay and you know that here you will you guys will have the organ of cotti which is actually meant for the hearing organ of cotti which actually plays the role in the hearing and over it here you will be having dieter cell hair cells having stereocilia and over it you will be having the tectorial membrane over it you will be having the tectorial membrane and when you people talk about that semicircular canal they are basically going to maintain that uh, balance orientation done diagram clear diagram clear be quick guys be quick i need to go home as well so be quick done bachche so this is the Uh, this is the difficult diagram we have we have discussed it okay with the help of trick so over this over this organ of cotti you will be having the tectorial membrane tectorial membrane over this organ of cotti so rest you have to study it by your own right you have to study it by your own done bachche so next is the chemical control and coordination obviously here we are talking about the endocrine glands so the topic that i want to discuss is the mechanism of hormone action because it will come in your paper this is a cell this is the nucleus but say you know that not everything can cross the cell membrane not everything can cross the cell membrane isn't it isn't it not everything can cross the cell membrane yes or no yes or no 
So you know that here we have the cell membrane, the plasma membrane, which is made up of phospholipid bilayer. So we know that it is phospholipid bilayer. So lipid soluble things can still cross, but otherwise all the things cannot cross this plasma membrane. So for that we are having some receptors, we are having some carrier proteins, right? We are having some receptors. And if you talk about this, you know that over the surface of plasma membrane we see many receptors also made up of protein. So here when we talk about the mechanism of hormone action we have two things. One the hormones that will bind to the cell surface receptor or you can say that plasma membrane receptor and one in which hormones they are going to bind to the intracellular receptor that is your nuclear receptor. Intracellular receptor that is your nuclear receptor that is your nuclear receptor right bache now the hormones that can directly cross the plasma membrane are your steroidal hormone isn't it steroids the sex hormones the androgens they can directly cross right they can directly cross the plasma membrane so if they can cross the plasma membrane their receptors are present within the nucleus intracellular receptors and some hormones right like protein hormones their receptors are present here on the cell surface right bache so if their see their receptors are present over the cell surface now let's take one example let's take one example sandhya you are not allowed to go somewhere you are not allowed to go somewhere you are uh, let's say you can only go to the there is one office you are not allowed there because you are not the employee there so you can talk to the guard ki this is the message that I want to convey to this and that person right you know that right you know that isn't it isn't it this is what we used to do same is the case here now my hormone cannot enter within a cell it cannot enter within a cell so so it cannot enter within a cell so it has to generate some some messengers inside that can convey what he wants to say that can convey what he wants to say so the hormone here will be considered as first messenger and in response to this binding when this hormone when it binds to this receptor whatever chemicals will form inside the cell to convey the thing that this hormone wants to say we used to call it as second messenger we used to call it as second messenger. So can I say that the second messengers will only form in the case of hormones whose receptor are present on the cell surface? Can I not say that? Can I not say that? Yes or no? Yes or no? Hey na, I can say that na, ki if a hormone is having the receptors which are present on the cell surface that that hormone cannot enter within the cell by itself so it is going to generate the second messenger we have one more category of hormones that can directly cross the plasma membrane so obviously if they can directly cross the plasma membrane they do not need the second messenger this is the type of question that used to come in the neat exam okay now the diagrams obviously that are very much helpful for this I don't think oh diagrams are not there so these are the diagrams that you people need to focus so see like follicle stimulating hormone which is a protein hormone it cannot cross the plasma membrane so its receptor are present on cell surface so we can even call such hormones as first messenger we even call the hormones as first messenger so see when this first messenger is binding with this receptor we are taking the example of ovarian cell membrane response will be generated actually it is forming the second messenger so the example of second messenger it can come in the paper so you have cyclic amp you have calcium even you have cyclic gmp even you have ip3 inositol triphosphate these are the examples of second messengers only but this is not extra thing the question can come from this part okay so cyclic amp cyclic gmp calcium ions i ip3 inositol triphosphate dag diacylglycerol diacylglycerol these are the list of the second messenger right so these second messenger will cause biochemical response then physiological response right but so you have to remember the example examples are given here so which hormones are having intracellular receptor your steroid hormones even your idothyronins even your idothyronins done but next is the yeah they steroidal hormone sex hormone it is it can directly cross the plasma membrane 
it can directly form the complex within the nucleus hormone receptor complex and see this is how it is all going to alter this okay this is how it is going to alter it so this is all about the chemical control and coordination the hormone part is quite easy i think you all can revise it by your own so but it is a kind of quick revision from my side for the topic human physiology right so we have covered the maximum topics i guess yes so i think today we have covered the i we have covered the maximum topics isn't it so you just need to check the session you can check out the pdf and even you can read the summary of all the seven chapters right you can even read the summary of all the chapters right so whatever topics we have covered we uh, we covered it from the basic level and uh, all the pyqs i have already told you so what you have to do that hashtag 100 questions solved hashtag 100 questions solved right right and uh, you have to check which hormones are having um, intracellular receptor which hormones are having cell membrane receptor so that is going to be your homework so now if you guys are having doubt feel free to ask we'll try uh, we'll share the pdf we'll share the pdf motivation the only motivation if if i see i have a I have a good career still i'm working so hard right i'm working for my students because you people trust me and even i'm working for myself if any educator is saying na that they are just working for you no it's not a it's it's not a fact right we are working for ourselves as well so uh, still see i have that enthusiasm i have that motivation i'm working so hard so you have just started it yaar you have just started your journey you should have that motivation isn't it you should have that motivation isn't it yes priya darshini a ah, thousand pyqs if you are going to solve then i'll be the happiest person but today i want to see the comments as well right right now 300 plus students are watching this session so please please it will just take few seconds do comment in the comment section do comment in the comment section right and we want more and more subscriber uh, because uh, you know we want to guide the need 2024 2025 aspirants as well so it's a humble request do subscribe our channel and please recommend this channel to your juniors to your classmates to your friends okay okay no i'm from uh, i'm from himachal pradesh i used to live in chandigarh but these days i'm in bangalore wazim sir is not here even uh, capto sir your hsp sir they are not here done so i want to see all that things in the comment section today okay so 